managed to save a draw. Those two players, the leading players, are followed by a pack of four. Uh, Shahriyar Mamejarov, Veselin Topalov, Vladimir Kravnik and Peter Svidler are all on 50%. It's clear that none of them has lost ambitions to win the tournament and it will be very interesting to see in the coming days who will manage to handle uh, the pressure of the tournament best. We will start with a game, with a leader's game. Uh, Vishyanand is black against uh, Peter Svidler. And while Vishy, well, all the experts are noting that Vishy has done very, very well so far. Uh, Svidla's uh, tournament has been a little bit up and down, wouldn't you say, Peter? Very much so. I think Svidla, well, he's played some excellent games, he pl and he's been excellent prepared, or he has won some games, but he's always been some kind of uh, fraction of the game that's done very well for him. For instance, his preparation was excellent against Aronian, but he decided to gamble, uh, and not very cleverly, and lost. Uh, he played a good game against Topalov, but was quite badly prepared there. And mm -hmm. uh, well, there have been wild swings in Switler's game, and it's going to be interesting uh, today. Will he continue sort of the strategy of just going sort of uh, all in in every game and really yeah. gambling against the leader, or has he actually decided, okay, it's time to calm down a bit? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe also being wide with Vichy has some kind of calming effect because Vichy has played very solidly in this tournament. And well, yes. I think, for instance. Um, uh, the world champion, he's uh, sort of, well, the one that, that beat him in, in last year's match, Magnus Carlsen, has said he's quite uh, impressed with uh, Anand's mm -hmm. play so far in this tournament. So that's going to be an interesting game today to follow. But I think quite, quite some interesting games, actually. Well, for instance, uh, Kayakin against Aronian, I think, also mm -hmm. will be a very interesting uh, match in the sense that this could be Kayakin's, I would say... Last chance. Last chance, almost. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. I think if he makes a draw today, um, he will still have some chances. But at least if he wants to send to a signal that's also, well, I'm quite ambitious. I want to get back to, to 50%. Mm -hmm. Then today's game with Aronian is a chance. And also he's white. And Aronian has actually been vulnerable against 1e4. So I would really expect that uh, today we will see Kayaking putting pressure as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, Kramnik is white with Mamad Yarov. Um, Kramnik had uh, generally, I think, tournament to a reasonable extent as he wanted to have it but then he, he suddenly lost to Topalov and yeah. then it's clear that sort of he's been forced out of uh, well the, the planned course and I think well a win for him today is if not essential at least very important for his uh, tournament strategy mm -hmm. and for his optimism so that's going to be well it is true he's not uh, too far yet from from the leader no. and he is within striking distance but of course it's important also to well to get some points against someone. For sure. We, we, if we remember back to London and, and last year's candidates tournament, I think Kramnik had 50% after the first part of the tournament mm -hmm. and was probably uh, trailing Magnus Carlsen by even, it could actually be one and a half point if I remember correctly. So it's not like this situation is uh, in any way hopeless. It's actually considerably better than last time where he got uh, right. so, so close in the end. But yeah. I think even so, I think this is a key game for Kramnik. Uh, the white pieces is really where he's sort of putting a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. and uh, he's actually been suffering with the black pieces in this tournament. So That's I think true. that I think we will see him very dedicated there. Yeah. One game we haven't mentioned. This is Andraikin white with Topalov. Actually, I think that's going to be a lot of fun as well, mm -hmm. because Andraikin has basically played fresh and uh, optimistic chess here. Not very successfully, but he's been doing that. And Topalov, well, he just beat Kramnik, and he's back to 50%. And I think he really sees black against uh, Andraikin. This could be my chance. And, mm -hmm. well, I think... Uh, well, he, has, he must have regained his optimism, Topalov, I mean, after, after the mm -hmm. previous game, which was, uh, well... This yeah. win was was very important for him. For sure, uh, from from the levels. yeah yeah, but also from simply uh, the tournament standing uh, mm -hmm. level. So uh, it's clear that this game could also be uh, yeah. very exciting. I mm -hmm. would think so. I would think that Andraikin Topalov and Kramnik Mamadiarov, we are definitely going to see quite a lot of fighting because all the players involved there uh, has incentives to sort of improve their standings. I think you can argue that Svitla Anand. There could be that both players actually want to slow down things a bit, that Switler thinks, okay, this is uh, getting out of control, and today is not not the day, and I think Anand with Black might say, well, why don't I keep my lead? I have a crucial game against Aronian coming up tomorrow, yeah. and I think Kayakin against Aronian, maybe Aronian thinks that 
things are going quite okay and um, kayaking well he's going to put a lot of pressure but it's not so easy mm -hmm. so but I think at least two games but could even have four games with a lot of fighting but okay Switzerland has opened with one e4 and well remember against Kramnik he played c4 because the, he didn't want to face the Berlin and it seems to me that's exactly what he's going to face very very yes, soon it, here. It, it is very likely let's yes. see yeah. Vichy played uh, the Berlin against Andrejkin and, and it was an anti-Berlin line. Yeah. And he got, a, I mean, a very healthy position. We seem to have a slight <laughs> issue with the clock here. Okay. <laughs> it works the, now, yeah. it seems. In, 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 in Kramnik against Mohamed Yarov. Okay. Kramnik played D4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just as expected. Yeah. Basically. Very much expect us to get a Berlin. And yeah, we have a Berlin here. And, uh, and an anti-Berlin. Yeah, yes. D4. Or D3 has been played. Yeah, Anand has been playing this quite a lot. I think we, we debated uh, in an earlier round that Anand is really a huge um, night off player in the Sicilian. But these days you don't get to play it a lot. And recently he's been playing a lot of Berlin and I think especially for the match against Carlsen he must obviously have done a lot of work on the Berlin. And I think we're going to see some of it here. Actually the system Switler played with White here. This is what Anand played, I think, in game five. No, that could be game six against Carlsen. And there mm -hmm. Carlsen played the move six rook e8 and won uh, a, a very long ending. But Anand has played the move six d6 instead and now knight bd2, knight e7. I think mm -hmm. this is exactly the line that uh, Andreikin had with White against Switler. So mm -hmm. let's That's see. Right. Yes. And so far Berlin has done quite well in this yeah, tournament we as expected. Yeah, Anand actually got a moderate edge against um, Kayakin uh, the last game, mm -hmm. but it still ended up in, in, in a very early <laughs> sort of, no, well, rather early draw. No, the game was actually played out fully, but not too much happened, uh, mm -hmm. I would still say. So That's yes, true. the Berlin did fantastic in the World Championship match in 2013. I think in the candidates last year did well. Um, uh, yeah, remind me, was there a tournament <laughs> where the Berlin <laughs> no, did, did really. that? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> You have a point there. I, I simply don't remember, actually. Yeah, but it's interesting that against Kravnik, Swidler chose C4, mm. apparently trying to avoid the Berlin. But today he goes for E4. Do you think that could mean that, well, he's less ambitious today? I think it's sort of, uh, well, they say different folks, different strokes, in the sense that he thinks, well, Kravnik, it's very good to get an open fight with that the sort of, let theory matter less, let me just get to get to play chess. He thinks that Kramnik is extremely well prepared. I think he also respects Anand's preparation a lot, but probably he thinks that some kind of, uh, well, let's call it freestyling contest against Anand. Well, that could actually be quite to uh, Anand's advantage. Generally, in recent years, I think Anand has suffered from getting a lot of not very interesting positions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, to sort of force Anand into an interesting position generally has not been seen as a, a good strategy. I understand things hasn't gone too well for Anand recently, and that could have changed to some extent. But uh, no, but in this tournament so you can see that uh, he gets very playable position gets, uh, in uh, every game, and he gets uh, points as well. So, <laughs> of course, um, yes, yeah. yeah. So, so this seems uh, to really favor him, uh, not not yeah, sort of. I think before the tournament, I think sort of players basically saw Anand as a good chance to actually do something positive against him. And, uh, well, that works to Anand's advantage. Of course, it could also mean that he would get very much into to trouble. But, um, yeah. no, I think somehow this has worked well for him. But actually, he started thinking here after the move, Rugi won. This is, this is a bit surprising. It how's, <laughs> uh, how's the personal score, um, uh, Swidler against uh, Vichy? I think Vichy is on a plus score. Yeah, that, 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 is, that that's, is for that's sure. That's my recollection. And as I think well. there will be a, a quite a number of draws between them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was Switzerland. Sorry, <laughs> I was Anand second for for quite a number of years, and uh, I think well he had a couple of of very important wins against Switzerland and a lot of draws. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember any losses. That could definitely be selective memory, but um, I don't think Switzerland has a lot of wins against Anand. Uh, no, but no, it doesn't seem so. Mm -hmm. So, I think also they have a, well, they have a very sort of friendly attitude toward each other. Not necessarily on the board, but definitely off the board. Outside, I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had quite some pleasant uh, dinners with the two of them, and they are, well, they're a good company, and they, they enjoy each other, has a similar kind of humor and interest. So, well, let's see. C6 by Anand. Actually, it seems to me this is not the only anti-Berlin we have today. If I'm correct, I think also 
the game between Kayakin and uh, Aronian is, is a anti-Berlin. So we could even see sort of two games, at least for the beginning, following the, the exactly same uh, mm -hmm. track. C6, bishop a4 was played now, mm -hmm. right? This has been played in... This hasn't been played so many times, <laughs> actually. This has been played, for, for instance, in a, a very recent Blitz game in Warsaw, uh, where Duda, a Polish player, played against uh, Sargisian, uh, one of the strongest Armenian players, yeah, and uh, a long-term uh, second, probably, yeah, or second, helper. Second of, or uh, sort of teammate of, of Aronian. Um, mm -hmm. I think, well, the Armenians are known for working together, and, well, we just assume that Sargisian is Aronian's second, but... I mean, Aronian, uh, sorry, Sagishan would also be playing some of the opening ideas. So I think they are, mm -hmm. well, generally also simply working t together. It's um, just a collaboration that probably uh, is very beneficial so. for both. Okay. Vichy has played the bishop back to, to b6. It seems he doesn't want to play the move knight g6 immediately for some reason. There's probably some kind of subtle point behind it and well so bishop b6 it looks like a prophylactic move against d4 yeah it, it doesn't stop it but well he you just moves saying the bishop. that let's say in this position would he play the move knight g6 you would expect something like d4 immediately it is an option it's, uh it's i am definitely yeah. not a berlin player <laughs> i'm not no. an e4 player so i let's say I'm not an expert here, but bishop b6 mm -hmm. looks very uh, reasonable. And we have, well, at least uh, pawn structure-wise, we have a, uh, well, almost... Um, oh, well, it's, I think <laughs> it's it doesn't get more symmetric yeah, than exactly, this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. We have, uh, well, the, the knights are differently placed, but mm -hmm. else it's a very symmetrical position. Yeah. It is, and, well, I think here, at times, white would try d4, and there will even be moments where black would try d5 at some point mm -hmm. but that's what the struggle is about who will get control of the center and will you be able to sort of undermine t the center if the other player is going forward well, well this is the concept that the knight will go to g6 where it protects e5 maybe even the bishop will go to c7 and you can push through d5 and similarly maybe white will put the knight from f1 to g3 or at times it will go to c4 but right now Knight c4, bishop c7 would actually threaten b5. And also knight c4 takes b6. It's the pair of bishops, and at times this will be a pleasant position for white, but it could also be completely okay for black. I think this looks like a very reasonable position. Yeah. But also, is if, it, if it's any worse than the other options that has been shown against the Berlin uh, so far in this tournament, I wouldn't especially think so. It's just incredibly tough uh, getting advantage against the Berlin. Well, even just getting to play uh, a normal game. We can see the move 4d3 has been the most popular move against uh, the Berlin in this tournament. And if we remember back to 2000 when Kramnik used the Berlin to beat Kasparov, well, Kasparov was always playing this ending and he didn't even get close to it. And somehow with 4d3, at least you get to, to play some kind of chess. Mm -hmm. Should we move to, to let's say, Karyak and Aronian just let to check out the other Let's do uh, that. I Berlin. think there will be... Well, they're going to play, play here for, for quite a while. So let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry if you think you're seeing the same position again, but <laughs> it is that. To a certain extent, here, right? Well, Aronian played the move Rugi 8, where Wishy has just played the move D6. Mm -hmm. Rugi 8 is what... Carlsen played in, in, in game six in, in Chennai against uh, Anand and well, Carlsen went on to win this famous very long and rather equal ending. But I actually forgot what Anand did in that game. Maybe he did the move knight bd2. Knight bd2, I would guess. But I think mm -hmm. Anand played the move bishop g5 rather quickly. So that I actually don't remember exactly. But here knight bd2 happened. And after a6 he has taken and played the move knight to c4. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah, it's overly aggressive in any way. But as we've spoken in the Berlin, these days you're looking for, for rather small advantages. And Kayagin has played himself Berlin, I think, at least twice in this tournament with black. So it's obvious that he's well prepared here. Also, if we remember in this position after free bishop b5, so far in this tournament, Aronin has played a6 and went for the marshal. So this is maybe to a certain extent his plan B. And uh, I would guess... Well, Kayakin is moderately happy. Yeah, since Marshall didn't work too well for Aronian yeah. in, in those games. Well, there is a threat of the pawn on e5 right now. 
So I would expect that either you want to play bishop g6, knight d7 to prevent uh, sort of him taking the pawn, or you could also consider playing bishop g4. But I would think after bishop g4, he's just going to reply h3, and as bishop h5, g4 most likely is quite unpleasant. We, we would get a position like this, and it could be slightly better for white. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit interesting, but the move knight d7, it also seems moderately clumsy to me. But I think well, you that's what, uh, for instance, uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer has played um, in uh, the end of uh, last year. And well, he's Hammer is a huge expert. Yes, he's a opening. huge expert of Berlin. Well, he course. was the one that uh, I think Magnus Carlsen specifically praised Hammer for helping him to uh, block Anand's 1e4 in the match. And uh, well, this this game you are about to, to tell us about, I think, happened after the match. So that could yeah, even be part of the that preparation. Was, yeah, that was in December of 2013. So. Uh, here, uh, Hammer played knight d7. Mm -hmm. And after queen c2, bishop d6. Okay. He simply put the bishop back. Well, yeah, bishop. It looks slightly better for for it white. It looks to a bit me well, in, in a, 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 way, a bit passive in a way. Did he play uh, d4 now? He didn't. No, he played bishop g5. Uh, Benjamin Bock was was mm -hmm. white. Uh, he played bishop g5 here, mm -hmm. and after f6, he put the bishop back to e3. And maybe now c5 by black. No, uh, Hammer played queen e7. Okay. And after knight fd2, he played uh, c5. And eventually he went on to win this game. Okay, well, White is, of course, doing... He has a healthy position here. Mm -hmm. Maybe White would take on d6 and play f4. But uh, probably you're right. This is this is quite an, an equal pos position. And uh, well, Looks Hammer like went on to win a, a, a very nice game there. So it's a bit surprising that uh, Aronian is already starting to think here, but probably, well, he did not prepare the Berlin mainly for this tournament. It's obvious that he wanted to play the Marshal, but the results, well, the loss against Anand and also the not too pleasant position against Topalov simply has forced him in another direction. There was too many things to repair. Also, we shouldn't forget that yesterday was a free day. Well, it yeah. wasn't a free day for, for probably for the seconds and, uh, no, and maybe no. even for there the... No, no. There was no play. No play, but, but uh, it's not unlikely that, well, they could sort of fix some of the opening problems. Yeah. Um, and that uh, this, uh, let's say, this... On, uh, on the other today? hand, Kayakin has an impressive team, uh, the, the former world so. champion Kasim Djanov, the present European champion M Motelyov, okay. and uh, well, even himself as a working force, and giving them a very clear target, like uh, playing the marshal. Maybe Aronian thought that is simply not the, the right strategy, mm -hmm. I, I would think. Yeah, that sounds, uh, well, that sounds very reasonable too. Mm -hmm. We saw Topalov walking around in the picture. Should we have a look at uh, what Definitely. he's been doing? Because mm -hmm. It seems quite likely that he has managed to surprise his uh, opponent since he... Mm -hmm. So Andrekin started with... Uh, one knight of three. One knight of three. Mm -hmm. I think against Anand he played one e4 and against Kramnik one d4. Yeah, maybe he decided just to try <laughs> Sounds like all the main moves. <laughs> maybe he even had one, uh, a further game where he played one c4. But yes. Uh, well, he's, he's uh, true to himself. Yeah. He's universal, a, quite a universal player and he's, mm -hmm. uh, well, not especially um, sort of stuck in one opening no. at all. He's just trying to do different things. But knight f3, he played, Topalov played d5. I think if I remember correctly, Topalov has played the Slav before in this tournament. Mm -hmm. And now Andraiken played d4. Maybe knight f3 was some kind of anti Grunfeld. It's hard to yeah. come up with an. Uh, knight I mean, knight f3, d5, if you mm -hmm. play d4, why not 1d4? I would assume that has something to do with the Grunfeld. And Topalov has played some Grunfeld, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, well, knight of three is discourages Grunfeld against quite some players. So but that, now I, I started talking about that Topalov has prepared the Slav for this tournament. But after c4 here, he could have played the Slav, but he played e6 instead. Yeah. Maybe his idea is that after knight c3, in this position, he wants to play, well, either c6 and play a semi-Slav, or even take on c4 like Kramnik did earlier in the tournament. Yeah, well... Well, well this move order with, I mean, this position, Topalov had with... Black against both Anand and Kramnik in their World Championship matches. And I think neither of the two, despite having numerous chances, played the move 4-knight c3 in this position. 
Maybe they were afraid of DTEK C4. Well, they, or I think they were just happy with playing 4G3 in the Catalan. Actually, Topala had a very bad score in these matches against the Catalan. But and Reichen played none of these two moves. He actually played the move 4 Bishop G5. Mm -hmm. I think even you, you yourself have played that. Yeah, right? um, but I recall. I think he beat uh, Kramnik last year in this. Um, was it in the Russian Super Final? It could have been in one okay. of the games that he won against Kramnik. I think this was precisely the move order that mm -hmm. was that was used. Uh, I will check it. Uh, it's a bit sort of special. Out of curiosity, but well, the point. One of the points is if you go DC four, you can play five knight C three, and you will get back to the Vienna. But you also have the extra option of playing queen a4 check in this position. And there it could be more useful having the bishop on g5 than the knight on c3. Quite often with the knight on c3, black will reply c6 and b5. And the knight could be a bit misplaced. Mm -hmm. It could be better on, on d2. So queen a4 check could be one of the points. Yeah, there is also bishop e7, which is a very s sort of solid classical move. And here, for instance, I think, well, Ivanchuk has played e3. And maybe you have played e3 as well, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the idea would be something like after castle, you play queen c2 instead of knight c3. And for instance, if they play this popular knight e4 variation, you can take, take, and now play the bishop to d3, and there's nothing to take on c3. So this could be one of the, the small points. There is some definite points about playing four bishop g5, but there's also some definite downside. And one of them is, is that after the move h6, I think bishop h4 now is just seen as a quite unsound gambit. I'm not completely sure why. Maybe it's taking on c4, although queen a4 check is still uh, quite, quite reasonable. Can't see a recall. No, uh, I'm not too sure either to some extent. Maybe you give a check maybe first. Maybe bishop b4 check. Maybe bishop um, b4 mm -hmm. check is seen as quite good. And if knight c3, you can definitely take the pawn. And if knight bd2, probably you will take the pawn once again. Mm -hmm. I think this is supposed to be the point. So. Normally in this position you would take on f6 and then take back with the queen. And now That's knight, what happened. Knight b to d2. Uh, yeah, this is exactly what Andrekin did uh, last year in Dortmund against Kramnik. Uh, okay. So this this position he has, well, looked at before. And it was that game continued with g6, queen b3. Mm -hmm. And then taking on c4, taking on c4, and this, well, it became some sort of um, very similar to. Um, well, the I think Mos the Slav, Mos uh, the Moscow, Moscow, Moscow mm -hmm. variation, exactly. yes. yes. And, and there he won a nice game against Kramnik. Mm -hmm. uh, but g6, uh, well, but definitely is not the only Compared option. to the Moscow, having the knight on d2 instead of on c3, it has some advantage in the sense that you will have well more easy pressure in the c, c line, I would say. Yes. That, that I, I, I think... Well, generally, it's a nice way for white to avoid uh, going into the most uh, If I remember correctly, lines. then... The move 6 knight bd2, I think it was played by Aronian back in the World Championship in Mexico in 2007. This was part of his preparation. And I think some player played the move g5 against it, if, if I'm not uh, mi oh, mi mistaken. That's true. I that has happened. If it was <laughs> but I forgot also. Aronian oh, this is against, easy to check. against Gelfand, for instance. Um, and g5, there is some, I really hope it's this position <laughs> before I praise it too much, but there is some logic to it. It even reminds uh, me of some lines in the Trompovsky where also, well, it would be like bishop g5, e6, and then e4, h6, takes, takes. And not just playing g6, but playing g5 very aggressively grabbing, grabbing some space. And, uh, well, I would say, yeah, simply it grabs some space and you will put the bishop on g7 next anyway and the only problem is that maybe you are weakening some squares and a white knight on h5 could be quite annoying but it's hard to get there and maybe black would even play g4 and, and h5 later i really think that this was played uh, in a game there and i think even even black was was quite successful or maybe it was the reverse that ronald played it with black and it didn't work out to, uh, too well but i think that's the situation there but are we missing one game? I think so, actually. We should, yes, we should we have are. a look at, again at Kramnik against Mamiyarov. Well, let's just round it off. Topalov has played the move bishop e7 here. And he seemed to be... Th and that made Adrank and Reichen think for, for quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, bishop e7 is just a, a very sensible move. Well, he has a choice now. He can play g3, he can play e3. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be most likely... Well, he even can play e4, e4 exists. Yes. I would assume that something like this is 
the why he doesn't really want to do it. I think, yeah. So probably e4 is not a, a great move, but well, g3 looks normal. Mm -hmm. You can even consider, would it be time to play rook c1 to f maybe... To provoke c6. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I think, yeah, simply Andraikin is... Uh, well, trying to figure out what would be the most exact way. Mm -hmm. But this is typical Andraikin. He gets into very interesting positions very early on in the games. And one can argue that's because he's not very well prepared. But I think he's actually aiming specifically for, for that. He's trying to get both players out of book and uh, simply rely on his chess skills there. So far, maybe not overly successfully, but very but entertaining. He's, uh, well, also he's playing the strongest players of yeah, the yeah. world, so no, it's, I, I, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a bit hard to judge him out. But let's have a look at the, the player in the picture here. This is Mahmoud Yarov, who seems to be thinking very hard. Yeah, the opening here has been, well, just as expected, that it will be a, an interesting opening clash, and so it has been. So Kramnik started with d4, and we got the Ragosin. Kramnik took on d5 in this position and played bishop g5. At some point, I think a lot of players were playing the move bishop g5 immediately, but there, black has the extra option of, of h6, and if you play bishop h4 now, after taking on c4, I think we get back to the position we discussed uh, in the Topalov, uh, in that Reichen Topalov game. So Kramnik is taking on d5 first and then playing bishop g5. And now after h6, you can put the bishop on h4 without sacrificing a pawn. So here, Mahmoud Yarov played the move knight bd7. This is actually exactly the same position he has against uh, Aronian earlier in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And there, right. Aronian played the move knight d2. But mm -hmm. Kramnik is playing, I think, what's supposed to be the, the old main line. Queen c2, c5, e3, queen a5, bishop d3, c4, bishop f5. Castle, castle, rook e8, knight d2, g6. Yeah, that uh, that and seems to me <laughs> to have been a, an old line. Yes, and if this I'm not mistaken, the play. main move used to be bishop h3 here. Mm -hmm. And I think, for instance, then, at times they would take on c3 and might, might even take back to the queen and have a pleasant ending. But at some point, some players, I think including Morosovic, but maybe even also Mahmoud Yarov, played king g7, simply to defend this knight and to be able to do knight b6 next. And somehow this was seemed to be rather okay for, for black. But Kramnik took on d7. And that's a bit surprising in the sense that Kramnik is one of, I think, especially in his youth, was very known for really liking the pair of bishops. Well, I think everybody likes the pair of bishops, but especially Kramnik had some very impressive uh, results with the pair of bishops. But he's just given away the pair of bishops after knight d7, he's just played h4. Well, this is very clearly his preparation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's no way Kramnik is going to give away the pair of bishops and then uh, weaken his uh, kingside structure. But like he probably this. shouldn't sound so surprised. He has done it before already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe uh, not uh -huh, that so few times. I'm this, well, this basically this line showing off <laughs> ignorance of. Uh, well, e even Ma Mamadiarov has played it, maybe. No. Yes, Mamadiarov has played it with white as well. This is okay. a very, very popular so line. So this is simply... Okay, this is a trend I haven't been, been following, apparently. Mm -hmm. Kramnik has played it himself against Grishuk in 2010. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Ponomarev has played it. Uh, and so uh, what do they do after h4? After h4? Well, as for h4, this could be... Um, Less popular move, <laughs> and all, well, rightly so. It but, looks. But Kramnik has played it, right? You yeah, said. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, not h4. I'm ah. saying that he took on d7. Okay, okay. But um, h4, we we will see. It has also been played. For instance, it has been played by Cheparinov um, against Mametyarov. Okay. <laughs> in 2007. Cheparinov is yeah Topalov's second, and mm -hmm. well, despite all this commotion that was with the lack of handshake and the bad bluff between the Topalov and the Kramnik camp. It seems that at least Kramnik doesn't mind using their ideas. And I think that that's, well, that's, that's quite, quite reasonable. I think from the chess sense, of course, everyone is following each other's games. Sure, and uh, and uh, if, if the idea is good, it yeah, would yeah, be exactly. crazy to not to play it. Very much so. So he played knight b6, Mamadiyav, in that game. Yes, he did. He did. Mm -hmm. that's, I would think that's the most ambitious way. Of course, the counter-argument would be that the knight is going away from the, the king's side, but 
In an ideal world, you will get bishop f5 next, you will take on c3, and the knight will jump to a4, and black would have a, quite a dream position. Actually. Yes, but it's good that you mentioned that in an ideal world, because uh, this is exactly what he didn't manage to get in okay. this game. He played, uh, well, Chaparinov played f3 immediately, mm -hmm. uh, effectively uh, blocking bishop so f5. So bishop f5, you can play e4. Yes, Yeah. and after bishop f8? So... Let's say if you would take on c3 here, you would take back with the pawn? Well, I would certainly think and so. And after knight a4, you're just well, going to go rook a c1 rook and protect. Rook a c1, for instance. And basically, you think you have a, a perfect attack on the, the king side. I would love to be white here, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It looks, uh, well, it looks very interesting and uh, attractive to me. You could be very much right. But uh, also it should be mentioned that this is not the kind of position where, well, the computer is not impressed by white at all. N no, and I think uh, so. this is. Um, I think it's. It looks nice from the human point of view. But the computer is seeing black has a pair of bishops and black has a strong pawn on 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 c4 and I think that's enough to to evaluate black's position as uh, slightly better from a computer point of of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think simply that that is the reason. How did that game continue? Well, so, uh, so after Bishop, Bishop F8, F8 uh, <coughs> E4 was played, and uh, after Bishop G7, Bishop E3, which is quite reasonable. And then, but just by look of this position, I agree it could be nice for White, but I think it could also be nice for Black. This is not what strikes me as a typical Kramnik. Uh, well, position. I disagree with you, I think. Okay. I think that, uh, well, it's clear that this is something he prepared, and, uh, well, it's also clear that he understands that he should be playing for a win, trying to play for a win. Well, and I, I think, uh, well, if he plays it, it means that he probably has quite some faith uh, in in the, well, in this position. Sure, th that I actually agree with you. What I, what I mean is that it's not a typical Kramnik position in the sense that um, normally he would have some... I would say a bit more conservative values, like for instance the pair of bishops mm -hmm. uh, here. Well, he has some attacking chances, but also there is a weakness in his position, and his position is to a huge extent committed. It's not like you can play this f for two results, or you can play this solidly with, with no risk here. It's actually going to be... Maybe what you mean is that, well, there are too many weaknesses in this position. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's simply too late here if we take the position like... well. We, there's no need for me to <laughs> um, start uh, altering the position. Just the diagram position we have uh, at the bottom diagram. Well, White has to attack. White has already weakened his center and everything. There is simply no choice than to attack and really hope, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And normally, I think you would see Kramnik, he might do this, but then he would have mapped it out extremely well preparation-wise. Mm -hmm. That could, could be the case, but normally... I would see Kramnik playing for in a more controlled manner. Here he's really, really going to throw his uh, stuff uh, right at Mamed Yarov and mm -hmm. hope, hope it's, it's going to hit him. Oh, that's <laughs> even better for, for, for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, no, I, I mean, I still think that Kramnik has very good chances in this game. It's just, I see it as slightly out of character for Kramnik. Yeah. Well, that could be dictated by the situation in the tournament M maybe and by his, his, uh, uh, by his last uh, well To a certain extent game. expected from yesterday. Mm -hmm. But also, I would not be surprised at all if after knight b6, he has some kind of improvement ready. But it's right that f3 in this position looks extremely logical. What, well, what else? Uh, somehow, you cannot yeah. really... Um, you cannot really allow bishop f5 and no, bishop d3. No, let's say if you go e4 straight away... It's possible that you would even interpolate this and take here, and you will have bishop f5 yeah, next. Yeah, that, that actually looks like a... Yeah. No, this is like a interesting. Position. But also it's interesting that Mahmoud Yarov is really taking his time here. Well, it must be quite scary for him, as, as he has lost a game like that with black uh, seven years ago, and, uh, well, Kramnik is aiming at this. I, I understand that, but also this is... the. It seems like... This is his main preparation for this tournament, so mm -hmm. he must have looked at this. But of course, one thing is to prepare something, then suddenly when you end up uh, in it actually happening, uh, things could um, start feeling a bit more uncomfortable, that definitely. That's, that's right. But I think also here we're going to see some, some action. But should we maybe well, fulfill the, the circle and, and go back to... To Vichy's game. Uh, mm -hmm. To Vichy's Hitler, yes, let's do that.
Yeah, just as we thought uh, D4 was played. Yeah, and that... I think I was making the argument that in this position he didn't want to go knight g6 because of d4. But bishop b6, d4, knight g6 has happened, and that will be exactly the same line. Uh, so, yeah, I, I doubt that had any huge relevance. Switch so played the move h3. I think that is to uh, not discourage bishop g4, it's to stop bishop <laughs> g4. It, it's, it's Forever, a, yeah. basically, yes. <laughs> basically. And now. Well, Anand has made the position rather interesting or unbalanced. He's taken on d4. I would think that a normal move could be rook e8 and, and to play for some kind of sy symmetry, but he actually seems to claim that um, it's time to undermine the, the center already. So he's played ed4, cd4, and d5. Well, and maybe not so much to undermine, but to make it uh, a much more clear uh, structure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can argue that it's not actually undermining it. It's, on the other hand, it's forcing it forward. Yeah. So. Swidler has played the move e5 quickly, and Anand has gone to h5. To h5, okay. Yeah. That's well, quite interesting. Well, that's probably also very natural. I but really like it, especially if it doesn't lose a piece. <laughs> no, f4 is a, a very inviting square, of course. Yeah. For the I mean, now we are just analyzing, so I will play the move g3, and I will say well, that for then, night. Then night. h3 is hanging, yeah, and that's what you want. That was a sacrifice, and then... <laughs> I'm really hoping this one will drop. Okay. Maybe it will. But for four, maybe? Yeah, well, let me just show this, and then another one is going on e5. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, so that you cannot do. Maybe g3 was not the, the brightest idea. No, no, that's... But I well, thought that f6 might come next and uh, undermine the, the center. Isn't... If it works, then it looks very nice for black, <laughs> I have to say. But... What well, would you do? Knight f1? Would <coughs> knight be f1 a looks... Uh, well, uh, he should come up with some solid moves. I would guess so. But I guess then you will reply f6, and are you really gonna go... Not necessarily even f6. I would also consider knight hf4, for instance. f6 will not really run away from me. But it's also very principled. If I do f6, your position is, is close to somehow... Being uncomfortable. Are you really going to play the move e6? That I doubt. I think, well, e6 is very weak. <laughs> yeah, but the alternative is allowing fe5, and then... Wow, that's that's quite... No, it's <laughs> very strange that we are looking at some uh, extremely solid positions uh, yeah, no, and boring positions, and then two moves they become... I think they're very uh, interesting. Very, <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, if that's uh, if knight h5 is Vicious preparation, then once again he's uh, showing some really. Yeah, if really we take good the stuff. Geary rule and look at the clocks, then if anything, it, is, it should much. be. No, but I would almost assume they're both in their preparation, but it's a bit unclear. Oh, this is uh, this is quite. Um, I think it's an interesting situation. Vichy yeah, has given it a bit of thought, but. Um, yeah. I don't know, it still feels to me that it should be prepared in some way. That would be my hunch. I would be a bit surprised if they both commit to a, a very complex structure with, uh, I would say, even quite some risk for... Yes, for, for, for both. For, yeah, but I would say especially for Switler. Yes. But what could have he done differently? If we think that this is comfortable for Black, um, it's just, well, he hasn't done anything I think wrong. One, one d4 is a very good move, actually. <laughs> That's for sure. But mm. let's say um, he yeah. just played d4, which is the most natural. And after knight g6, well, you could argue that h3 Has maybe is a bit... Has this position been played before even, Just maybe. a second, yes. I, I, will, I will check that, of course. I would actually still think Swidler could be in, in, his in kind of his, mm -hmm. his preparation. Mm -hmm. But, but he doesn't look, well, too happy right now, right? He's not really, no. He's taking his turn. Well, this is the position after knight h5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see if, if uh, there are some games or if we are in completely new territory already. Normally, there, there would always be a game in this kind of position. Simply, White has been so desperate that he's tried almost all kind of uh, move orders. No, but this seems to be a new position, okay, at okay. least, well, according uh, to my base. Okay, sure. So let's say if we go a couple of moves back and... Um, well, this h3, this which could you could argue uh, has allowed. Um, 
Yeah, I understand. This to happen. <laughs> and maybe you can make the argument that bishop g4 was not yet a threat because you could play the move h3 against it. Mm -hmm. So, well, should this turn out to be not fantastic for white? I guess maybe h3 will get a bit of the blame. Or maybe you can even argue d4 is, is a bit early. And you could have played the moves like, well, bishop c2 on bishop b3 or knight c4. There, I there is definitely going to be the options. But there are a lot of options for, well, for both sides on each move uh, around here. So but this okay, is maybe also the position after knight h5. I understand Vichy looks uh, confident and uh, Switler is thinking. But even so, is it really... So bad for no no no. Well, it would be no, no, uh, insane if it was bad already. Uh, that uh, that would be very yeah. strange. What White hasn't done anything. That what could be a move? Bishop c two, for instance. How would you reply to that? Would you go? Simple? Yeah, bishop c two is a nice move as it is. Uh, well, working in some ways against f six, as you will always but have to. But is it working successfully against h six? F six, I think so. Yes, okay. bishop takes g six is uh, is quite it's a threat. So, mm -hmm. takes, takes, and you think now knight h4? Knight h4 is a possibility. Or maybe after... Or even, well, Something you will like never be able to take on e5 anymore. Look at your position. This looks like a... Um I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe knight b3. But, uh, well, then bishop c2. How would you respond to bishop that? Bishop c2, I think, discourages f6. But I would play knight h4. Mm -hmm. And just, um, well... Postpone f6 for And you're saying move. that you have you have sort of sealed this pawn structure. He will not really be able to go forward here and after knight f1, then you will strike with f6 maybe. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, At this, least this uh, well this looks very nice from the black side. Mm -hmm. I, w I I really yeah. think so. Sure. And uh, well, I would say that in this position black has uh, a much more clear objective f well the square f4 is very yeah. inviting well h3 right now really hurts white as g3 is never possible anymore and uh, and that's well, I, I did try but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no i think it's impossible we have oh, to agree okay. that it's impossible okay. and also black has this nice uh, resource yeah. in f6 f7 f6 oh. is a nice resource yeah so uh, right now right now it looks uh, very pleasant it, it sort of would say that from a practical perspective, and maybe even also objective perspective, it could almost be slightly better for, for black, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Should we have a look at the other Berlin and see if, yep, if white definitely. managed anything mm -hmm. there? This is Kayakin against Aronian. Our yeah, well, white has to do player. something. <laughs> <laughs> something yeah. very clever soon. Uh, otherwise, it's just impossible to play four anymore. Yeah, we had the position down here. And uh, I think n nine knight c4 was the last move. And mm -hmm. we said that... Jun Ludwig Hammer had played knight d7 in this position, That's right. and, and uh, so did Aronian. And, well, very much as expected. It seems like the, the very obvious move, I think. So knight d7 happened, and I think uh, Benjamin Bock played bishop g5 in this position. Mm -hmm. That's right. But Andr uh, sorry, Kayakin played b4. You think b4 is preparation? I think so, yes. Well, okay. it's an early stage, and uh, yeah. it has been played. So I think b4 yeah. should be... So b4, should still be in bishop d6... Queen b3, knight to f8. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, what, wi what white has done is he has uh, basically prevented, at least for a time being, both f6 and c5. That is correct. And uh, um, that's exactly what, uh, what uh, Hammer did in that game good. we were discussing. Because I was about to say that it's interesting after the move bishop g5, he didn't go f6. <laughs> but your point is that after f6... Yes, f6 is not very fortunate here, no. F6, knight takes d6, check, bishop e6. It's not possible, but okay. Well, no. that has to be... Uh, yeah, it's not ideal. At least this sure. is scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that much I can so say. So we have a position like, like this now. And you think it's better than normal from White's perspective? You said you were not much of a Berlin player, but, but um, even so... Uh, well, <laughs> that's putting it very mild. <laughs> yeah, White do have some kind of a grip on the, uh, the queen side. Well, I like uh, White's position, uh, well, precisely because black seems to be... Um, somewhat, uh, somewhat, uh, well, lacking options. But he still has knight g6, knight g6 would knight come g6. next. Maybe you would, after that, kick the black bishop, and then you would put the queen on e7, and the, the bishop is going to come out to e6. But, no, generally, I understand what you're saying. And you think, actually, 
for a change, White has been rather successful against the Berlin here, or you think it's just gonna, it's just a pretty average position and nothing is wrong at all? Oh, well, yeah, I, yeah. I like White's position. You like White's position. Yes, I, yeah. I really do at this point. I but th but I think also well that's that's Berlin um, that black has um, a little bit more passive uh, sort of pieces at the moment it doesn't matter much no it could I, still go I, back to I, I still see some potential in exactly. in Aronian's position for sure here but it's an interesting game I think maybe he will put the bishop on g3 even and uh, maybe just centralize his rooks and such. No, it's an interesting concept from from. Uh, I also Kayakin. think that uh, well, that has to uh, that black has to play queen d7. <laughs> it's well somewhat awkward. Of course, it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't lose in any way. But but it looks um, it looks awkward. <laughs> no, I understand, but the position is is rather slow. I don't think that, for instance, Kayakin can play d4 and open up fire. Black's position is too solid for that. And mm -hmm. Well, black will catch up in development with knight g6. And uh, now I was about to say it's almost an advantage that he, he still hasn't developed because then he, he can make some useful moves. That's probably complete nonsense, actually. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> well. uh, but still, it's hard to intensify the pressure without ruining your position to a certain extent. Well, I think d4 is definitely uh, sort of in the air, but... Um, but not right now. <laughs> no, let's even say if you play something like rook fe1, knight g6, d4. I wouldn't be surprised if even something like this at times wouldn't be too bad. I see. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, you got some nice pawns in the center, but maybe I will play h6 and queen g4, or h6 and queen e7, and start attacking the pawn on b4 and such. It could also get a bit out of control, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's it's very trivial being kayaking in this position either no and no. Uh, maybe he will actually be sort of he really wants to win this game and it could even backfire to a certain extent i think still he has a very nice position and uh, he definitely haven't done uh, below average against the berlin but i still think that black's position is is rather mm. solid after all you could be right this we will see in well yeah we will see how p how the players sort of treat this position. Mm. It is very interesting. Well, for instance, I think rook ad1 uh, right now is also um, you, well, you are sort just of a decent indicating move. d4 as a plan and maybe even mm, taking yeah. back with the rook. But I think that, well, it's really mm -hmm. um, most likely I'm not going to do this, but uh, it's just a threat that, uh, well, that that is there. It's actually an interesting idea. You say knight g6, maybe then d4. Yes, maybe or maybe just not, not hurry too much. But and, uh, I actually quite like this. Now even you might have a threat of rook takes d6 and knight b6 actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, that's at least something that could look scary for yeah, black. For exactly. And maybe something like this will tempt uh, Kayakin. He is, well, he seems to be thinking quite hard. Yeah, I like rook ad1. Yeah. But also after rook ad1, if let's say knight, uh, this position we just were discussing, rook d1, knight g6, mm -hmm. if d4 is not... Uh, too good. Then he could just play rook d2 and uh, you know double on d line and just well prepare for d4. <laughs> yeah, that would be it, a it is a very well. It's maybe it that would be a novel concept. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, maybe. Well, he has also all the time. I or, understand. Or he could start from with h3. What I mean, yeah. I guess, is that black is somewhat um, you know lacking uh, mm -hmm. good moves too and. Uh, I sure. think, uh, but let's say h6 here. You're gonna go bishop f e3, of course, yes. And then I guess queen e7. Uh -huh. And I am about to play bishop g4, or bishop e6 here. Yeah, I think h3 I think will be I'm necessary. I'm starting to be annoying. Well, maybe it's been annoying for a while, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I think here you might get a bit out of control, actually. That's true. Well, it's a tricky position, no doubt. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. No, also it's gonna be interesting. What will Kayakin's approach be? Mm -hmm. well, he looks a bit sleepy, but uh, I think he's just very focused. I think, well, it looks like he's really giving his best. Yeah. Sure. And I think, as we discussed just before the round, um, well, it is a crucial game for Kayakin in many ways. So. Today we are crossing the, um, the half of the tournament. And um, 
Yeah. Yeah, you have to start winning at some point. Yeah. I was just getting curious about his drink actually. Yeah, it looks like some fresh f- excellent healthy fresh juice. <laughs> is it orange or is it even carrot actually? Yeah, yeah it could be carrot juice. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's uh, well, very <laughs> Looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> see how the statistics will be for carrot juice, but yeah. uh, well, that looks like a very healthy drink and I well, I think they they are taking good pl- uh, sort of care of the players here. That there will be tea and coffee and such. But I mm-hmm. think these kind of things, you will actually have to bring your yourself. Yourself, yes. Well, well I think uh, maybe older players will often uh, take, just resign themselves to taking mm-hmm. a lot of coffee. And uh, I have noticed myself that yeah, lately <laughs> when ah. I have to play chess, you have to simply go for stronger uh, s- sort of uh, caffeine drinks. But okay. I think when you're really? 24. Fresh juice might yeah, just do it. Sure. I, yeah, I think even at well later in life, fresh juice will still be a very good concept. But I think you're right. It's Magnus Carlsen, also from the 1990 generation. He's a well, he's known for his uh, uh, orange juice orange concept. Orange juice, and yes. Yeah, kayaking seems to copy it, or maybe even uh, well, it improve, maybe improve, improve it. it. Yes. Yeah, we, we we will see about that. So, should we? Move on to maybe Andrikin against Topalov. Yes, that we haven't uh, looked at. In a while since we were there. Mm -hmm. I think we were in this position after bishop e7. Yes. Andrikin fought for quite a while and then he played the move queen c2. Mm -hmm. I like that move. I think the point is that, well, he wants to play, he might play e4 in Mm. one go. Uh, what he has to really do is, uh, well, he has to find some way to take advantage of not having played knight c3 and of the queen on f6 being a bit uh, strangely placed, you could say. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I like don't know if uh, Long Castle is an idea here. <laughs> <It's> uh, <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> not really, no. I understand it's an idea, but yeah. it, it is kind of dangerous. But, well, it's, yeah, you see queen c2 as something aggressive. I, I thought that. It could also be somebody who can't really make up his mind. And that, um, should I play g3 or should I play e3? Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly, so I'm going to play a rather useful move first, queen c2. You think that he played queen c2 with the idea that it's forcing c6 because of the threat of cd5. Well, then it didn't work because Topala played c5. No, he castled actually. Ah, He he castled here. Uh He seemed to just think that this position takes, takes queen takes c7, knight c6. I was yeah, going to say, looks this looks like decent compensation. It Actually, looks it incredibly looks like a, It looks like a trapped queen, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's just basically... Okay, the queen maybe lost. you can go to g3, but this looks simply horrible. No, I don't think that he played queen c2 with the idea mm. of attacking c7 pawn. That I don't but think. But now happened e3, c5, dc5, <coughs> knight bd7. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would normally good. think that this is completely fine for yeah, for black. I, I think I'm I'm with you there as. Um, but I, but actually, well, if you take on d5, mm-hmm. you would you even consider this move? I'm sure Topalov yeah. would consider <laughs> that. Topalov yes. would consider it. Simply saying that here, I'm gonna have a ton of development and a pair of bishops in return for a pawn. That looks actually, this, scary. this looks scary. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe here you would have to play something. Yeah, something like bishop e2 and but short bishop e2, castle. I might even start insisting and do rook d8. Yeah, but you can even afford to play e takes d5 followed by bishop f5. Yeah. That's and also pleasant. If I jump to d4. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're giving away quite some time, I would say. Uh, yeah, I would say that black is for sure completely fine. Something like bishop d7, castle, rook c8. I don't think white is a bit better. No. It's probably worse. But um, yeah, well, it could be that uh, what we uh, what we are watching here is well, Andrekin wasn't completely sure how to no. play in the opening, so he made a couple of well, Queen C two is. I think actually, yeah, you're saying Topalov is slightly yeah. better. I'm saying that Topalov is fine. I don't know about slightly better, mm-hmm. but but it does look quite comfortable for Black. Yeah. He has two bishops, and well, the bishop from C eight. It will go out and quite soon, most likely. I understand. Maybe no, the idea would be not to take on d5 uh, and just keep it uh, locked in for, for a little you are bit longer. Bishop just to play e2, bishop e2. Knight yes. c5, castles. That's what? That's After an bishop d7. And 
Well, even you after just, bishop d7, I can take on d5, maybe. Sure. And, uh, but, it's well, we will get the same position as before, more or less. Knight d4, something like that. But, but uh, yes, you, the you black is very active. You don't I have think. a good square for your queen already, yes. I think. The queen on c2 is awkward, so I take that back. I don't I, think it was I, such a good move. It's too early to say this is a opening disaster for Andre. No, no, no. Uh, but this is not the kind of position which will be a disaster. But he's... No, but it can actually turn out pretty badly, and I think he's he's already slightly worse here, mm. and it's a very bad trend for him. Yeah. I think actually, I mean, Topala could not have dreamt for more than this simply, and no. uh, oh, he has a healthy position, and he's I think he's slightly better simply, mm -hmm. and uh, well, this is a could become a key moment in the tournament in the sense that Topala, well, I think. After five rounds and this, well, after f four rounds, well, I forgot when he lost actually. <laughs> he I lost think it was in the fourth against Swidler, yes. Yeah, I think there we basically discounted him, right? And, uh, well, and now it was a big blow for him, of course. Yeah, but should he win this game, he would be on plus one after the first uh, yeah. half of the no, tournament. No, no, I, I think, I think uh, uh, well, any of the players on 50%, they are very, very close to, to competing. Yeah, but if you actually get a chance <coughs> with black, it's a bit sort of uh, out, well, of, out of the it's, ordinary it's in huge, that sense. Of course, so yes. this is, it's going to be but very interesting. on the other hand, I wouldn't overestimate it either, as Andrekin, he has actually done very well from slightly worse positions in this, uh, in this tournament. He has defended well. It's not fantastic that he has to defend with white but he quite has, soon. But it's already, I think, quite unpleasant. How do you get even a decent position here? Well, I think any of the positions that we discussed, even the one after bishop e2, knight takes c5, uh, Yeah. I don't think it's that scary. And castling now, bishop d7. There must be some decent moves. <laughs> like c takes d5, e d5, and just, well, maybe knight b3, you have to... Well, that's also to running to into bishop a4. Hmm. I... Yeah. I really think you are under considerable under considerable pressure here. I, I think it seems one of these positions. The more you start looking at it, uh, the, the more unpleasant the it feels, mm. and you start wondering how how did I end up in this uh, situation? Mm -hmm. It's I think it's. Well, I, think, I simply think black is just better already. How much better? It's still too early to say. But I haven't seen anything where I will say. Let's play like this with white, and it's not too bad. It actually looks just like uh, very unpleasant. If I could get to exchange something, uh, well, for but instance, I, uh, queens, I but but you cannot do that comfortably at all uh, because queen c3 is queen always c3 a is terrible move. No, no, it's uh, yeah. you can take it, or maybe you can just ignore it. Uh, this no, is also that's, that's going to be a difficult yeah. position. But I, th but I think this is the the point actually. It is already a, a quite a difficult position. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, Topalov has done very little, but. Maybe he's moved bishop e7, and he's just he's just played very, very sort of solid and, and normal chess. And yeah. he's at times seen for being extremely aggressive. Yeah. And he is to a certain extent, but he's actually also just uh, a logical and uh, sensible player. And it's mm -hmm. just sensible chess that I think he's already better. Is this, was it... His manager in the background? No, I, I don't I think so. No, no okay. I think it's, well, the only spectator the we spectator. have at the moment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we have the a lot of spectators uh, online. And yes. I think also, well, chess, our main target audience is, is you out there who is uh, following the game from around the world, not the actual playing hall. I think no, uh, no. Well, at World Championship matches you might see quite some spectators, but it's really a, a specialized sport that has uh, the focus on, on actually online Actually, it's maybe even a bit unfair as... Uh, the the playing hall here is very nice and um, really the conditions for spectators are good. You can even watch it from uh, downstairs, from the first floor. There are mm. huge screens, so all the conditions are good. It's just the problem is that Hantumansisk is uh, quite, quite far from, <laughs> well, for the chess fans, just to travel here to watch yeah. it when you can do well, that, that from, well, from your home, Well, basically. there will, of course, be a lot of... Uh, Local spectators. We also saw the the big uh, Armenian contingent coming to support um, Levon. Levon. Mm -hmm. But it's true that, well, I think for us flying from uh, sort of Western Europe, it's actually a longer flight from Moscow to Huntington since than from, let's say, Denmark to to Moscow. If I'm if I'm correct. Actually. We have a uh, we have a tweet uh, asking Tanai Hargunani. Sorry if I pronounce that wrong. Uh, asks. 
Please explain what do you mean he will be on plus one after this round. Well, uh, I think Peter meant that uh, Topalov right now has uh, three out of six. And, uh, well, just, uh, well, chess players, we, we are used to th thinking of it as 50% sort of as being exactly. equal. Uh, and then if you win one game out of this situation, then we call it plus one. Maybe it's mm. uh, some, some sort of special lingo <laughs> that yeah. we chess players are using. It, very much, it has the advantage that instead of saying that he has four points out of seven and you have to start calculating is that good or bad you will take simply if you are doing better than all draws you will add plus one for each win and the reverse mm -hmm. and like this it becomes easier to well for us that's used to it at least to understand that um mm -hmm. well is he in a good situation or a bad situation mm -hmm. well so, yeah generally being exactly. on plus situation means that you yeah. are doing decently well especially in this tournament where where the assumption is that uh, the winner will have maybe plus four <laughs> again. Yeah, <laughs> maybe even Something plus like three. That. Actually, last year, I think Carlsen and Kramnik were actually only on plus three. If In I the end, yes, yeah. but having lost both their sure. last games. Yeah, um, so. So. yeah no, m maybe... The tweeter has a point in the sense that it would be maybe more logical to say the exact number of, of yeah. points they have. But That's true. I think this is simply the, the chess lingo that we will say, well, plus or, or minus, simply to uh, yeah. well quickly establish the situation in, in, in the tournament. At least in we can guarantee that's how the players themselves think about it. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> they don't think that, you know, now I will have, or now I have, let's say, three out of six. Yeah, I think you're right that they will... They will for sure know that do I have plus one or two or minus something, but yes. the exact number of points they will have to remember which round was it actually today, and then to do yeah. a bit of math, mm -hmm. they will manage. Sometime, but, but yeah, still. Well, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let's go and have a look at uh, the game between Kramnik and Mahmoud Yarov. Mm -hmm. I think last time Kramnik had played something, uh, and we have serious action over here. I think. Very much so. Wow, Kramnik played h4 in this position. And Mahmoud Yarov, is this in his preparation? Or you think he is... Uh Freestyling. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we've just been discussing this position and that Mahmoud Yarov was... He has played this already mm -hmm. and that he was giving it uh, quite some thought. His previous game was uh, in 2007 uh, in this position I'm where he played knight b6. And I'm afraid I said knight b6 was the ambitious move in the position. <laughs> but uh, have a look <laughs> well, at what he's played. He really played b5. Uh, well, first of all, there is no pawn hanging on d5, because then there is a knight hanging on d2. And despite of this bishop looking a bit trapped, I think it's going to get out on b4, or bishop b7 would attack the knight on d5 in time. So this would appear to just be a blunder. But b5, Kramnik reacted very aggressively with a4. Well, I think if you wanted to see an ambitious move, I don't think you can see a more ambitious move than no. 14 b5. <laughs> and well, this is Mamed Yarov. You are playing Kramnik. Kramnik surprises you with something. And then you decide, I'm going to play the most complicated move at he all. He could have looked at it. He could have looked at it. But why is he taking that long time then? Yeah. I don't, well, b5, it looks... Um, it is very, very interesting. Let's, yes. let's see. He played b5. And, well, Kramnik doesn't want just to sit there and allow black to expand like this. Of course, you could play something like h5. But a4, well, I think now we are back to Kramnik's uh, sort of good old style again. He's breaking the opponent's pawn structure and creating weaknesses. Yes. He played a4. And, well, you can't play a6 because of a, b5, and the queen is going to be... I'll just show it. Then the queen will be hanging like this. So Mahmoud Yarov took here. Kramnik took back with the pawn, and Mahmoud Yarov played b4. Mm -hmm. and well, that had to be his plan when he played b5. He doesn't have very another choice. Very much so, and he's sort of guaranteeing himself a, a strong passed pawn on uh, on c4. Mm -hmm. But Kramnik is getting something in return, and Kramnik has taken on b4 and now played the move knight b1. It might look a bit slow, but mm -hmm. the knight is going to be beautiful on c3. It's going to block the pawn on c4, and it's going to attack the pawn on d5. And I don't see how black can get to exchange that. Knight b1 is a beautiful yeah, move. This well, you can see that rook f b1, let's say, w would be a much more well natural Yeah, that move. would be natural. This, this is the first reaction. 
but I think uh, it's, it's to be honest it also looks quite reasonable to it, me it does but I think night B1 is this kind of uh, classical uh, yeah. positional uh, decision where you bring your knight to c3 to block the c4 uh, pawn uh, it's in every uh, you know uh, you can see a lot of such examples in the games of the but old also before we, we praise the human mind too much it's actually the first line of the computer as well as well yes uh, well that's that's also <coughs> a good indication uh, but uh, knight b1 is, uh, is a beautiful move, of course. But how do you even survive this with black? Oh, I don't think we are there yet. <laughs> but knight is coming to c3, rook is coming to b1, and the pawn on d5 is going to be quite And you weak. see, suddenly Kramnik is playing completely positional chess. Yeah. <laughs> there's, so nothing, uh, there's nothing... Uh, you're basically saying it's like these kind of players in football or basket, they look at one side of the board, but they really want to play on the other side. Sort Something of, like well, that. board it's was really chess, not the yes. other sports, but sort of, yeah, maybe maybe you're right. So, maybe something like bishop b7, knight c3, bishop c6 would be solid. And after rook, b1. rook fb1, queen to a5. Mm -hmm. That's definitely solid, but, uh, well, let's say I can play bishop f4 Yeah, you will here, start like and this, uh, and you will take control on the B line and then I will be very happy with my B line. Uh, well, it's not like I can Queen B2 to to B4 maybe to maybe then at some point he will exchange queens and play A5, but still the bishop and the knight really has to put all their attention into defending. I think Kramnik I think Kramnik is very happy with the position I he has really right now. I would really guess so yeah. because I think what uh, what we are looking here at is that well they could be really close to calculating the end game. Yeah, or we could just uh, yeah calculating or maybe evaluating. evaluating. Maybe it means the no, same thing. Uh, this is what I mean, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, because uh, well, uh, now the B line looks very attractive for White. Bishop on f4 will be nice, uh, and um, well, you can see Kramnik. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking quite relaxed, even. He's looking, yeah, compared to what we saw him in the previous round. I think this is just. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, uh, of course, he also had time to recover, which is very sure, helpful. Sure. Uh, yeah. Helpful at such mm -hmm. a point, but uh, this is a new game, and uh, it's it's a pleasant development. But we him. are actually saying that we think both Kramnik and Topalov has a quite a good chance to to do well today. Uh, and well, soon we will go on, on a break, but. Should we have a look at Switler Anand first to let's see how that. our our leader mm -hmm. is doing? Yeah, let's do that because oh, sorry well, about, yeah, we we were quite happy about well uh, sort of it looked uh, this this black position it looked uh, it but looked nine f one we thought actually in this position it was possible to play the move e six but Anand yes. sorry f six yeah but mm -hmm. Anand has played the knight to to f four mm -hmm. we thought that there was maybe nothing wrong with playing f six straight away here. And we were even not completely sure how Sweden should equalize, but Alan has played knight to f4 first. It Maybe could be it that it doesn't uh, change much. Th that, is, that is quite likely indeed. As, uh, yeah, it's not so clear what, um, what, uh, uh, what could White do uh, that would prevent uh, the f6 next. Yeah, could he really be that after f6 he was worried about the move e6? I would be a bit surprised uh, by that, but of course... There is no good reason to allow that if you can avoid it. Well, the reason could be that with f6 you strike immediately. And if e6 should turn out to be bad, for instance, that something like rook e8 would just be good, then, well, you would maximize the pressure. But Anand has played knight f4, and he has done it, well, more or less after a minute's mm -hmm. thought. So That's true. He, did he was quite probably quickly. still be in his uh, preparation. Mm -hmm. but now probably the most... Uh, the best move for White is just exchange. Well, giving away his bishop on f4. Um, it's really sort it's of give away your bishop days today, right? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah, I think you're, you're right, but it's that. just uh, it's surprising. Is he really going to take on f4? Just well, if he thinks that he's on the verge of being slightly worse, he might. But I thought bishop takes f4 is. It feels normal to you. For me, it feels really, no. it hurts almost. Um, yes, but uh, I would be nervous could, being white yeah, simply. But it could be a very position. strong move and it could actually, well, maybe you are simply showing a lot of understanding by taking on f4. It just feels, uh, yeah, <laughs> it almost hurts physically <laughs> in, in some sense. But um, no, I think you could be right, but it's, uh, I, yeah. 
I will be well, impressed Swindler, if Swindler takes Swindler on that form. Uh, taking his time yeah, now. He's, will well, what else? What else? Bishop c2. But I think after bishop c2, f6 must be yeah. must be a good option. Well, uh, And you are saying that you will end up taking the knight on f4 anyway. So let's get it over with and let's get it with at least as decent uh, sort of conditions as possible. It's not well, gonna it's not gonna be better later anyway. A plus of taking on f4 now would be that after bishop takes f4, knight takes f4, uh, queen d2. Yeah. You do it uh, with uh, with the tempo, and now black is simply not on, not on time to play f6. Maybe you, for concrete reasons, you sort of this is the exactly right moment to do it. Mm -hmm. I would still think that. How you say something like knight g6, you would go bishop to c2, yes, and after f6, f6, you will take on mm -hmm. on on, uh, on g6. That Here could, I don't could, see could anything well wrong, be. and we just saw the computer evaluation, which was z uh, 0 yeah. 0.05. Sure. So uh, talking about black uh, advantages way so too early. Maybe knight e6 followed by f6, but but it's true that this no. Well, there's I think no you're right. There's you no reason why it should be uh, worse for white, especially. No. But bishop takes f4 is not a very easy move to make. But I think Switler will come around to that. This is actually mm -hmm. what he has to do. Well, unless he thinks that his position is. Uh, better than it really is, yeah. uh, and uh, well, that he's probably trying to figure out right now. It has happened before for him, but I think that no, I think actually you're right. He's gonna, I mean, Switler is a very strong player, and I think he will come around to that. Actually, Bishop takes f4 and queen d2, which is exactly the right moment. Mm -hmm. And like this, I keep a decent position. That could he's be. maybe not thrilled about it, yeah, but still, I think he's. He will he will do that. We will go for a short break now and uh yeah, we'll be back soon. Shahriar Mamidyarov and Veselin Topolov won their games against Peter Svidla and Vladimir Kramnik in round 6 of Candidates Tournament. The other two games, Vishunatan Anand Sergei Karyakin and Levon Aronian Dmitry Andreykin, were drawn. Vishunatan Anand had white against Sergei Karyakin. Anand confidently entered the famous endgame blitzing out the first 20 moves. Karyakin was slower, as he tried to recollect the exact preparation. He placed his pieces on optimal squares, and White soon realized that there is no way to make progress. Draw was signed on move 33. Huge tension was felt in the air ahead of the game between Veselin Topolov and Vladimir Kramnik their first classical since 2008. Somehow they kept missing each other in the past six years, with exception of the quick games and Melody Amba events. The game started as a Queen's Gambit declined, where Topalov introduced a novelty. Kramnik confessed at the press conference that he was afraid of computer preparation and decided to play more solid. However, his opponent made all the best moves and duly converted the advantage to get a full point. Peter Svidla started with a Dutch defense, an opening that he had planned to introduce during this event. Shahriar Mamidyarov was not confused and went for a rich game. Svidla believed that Black emerged with a good position from the opening, having achieved everything that he had hoped for. But then, as he said at the press conference, his brain stopped working for about 20 minutes and his position collapsed in just a few moves. Mamidyarov didn't take long to conclude the game. 
the game between Levon Aronian, Admintry and Draken started calm. But then, White unbalanced the play by sacrificing two pieces for a rook and a pawn. Cracking under pressure, Black was forced to give the material back and transpose into an endgame where White had an extra pawn, the passa, on the A-file. But then Aronian rushed to exchange a strong bishop for his opponent's knight, probably considering the rook endgame easily winning. However, it turned out that the outcome was unclear and the game was drawn on move 48. After 6 rounds, Anand stays on top with 4 points, while Aronian is close behind with 3.5. Peter Svidler was born on the 17th of June 1976 in St. Petersburg, where he still lives. He started playing chess in 1983, and it wasn't long before he had some significant successes. In 1991, he shared a win at the USSR Junior Championships. In 1994, he became under-18 world champion and gained his Grandmaster title. In the same year, he became Russian champion for the first time. He has claimed this title on a further six occasions, an absolute record. Peter quickly entered the peloton of Russian players and subsequently the world elite. For many years, this grandmaster from St. Petersburg played for the Russian national team and usually very successfully. He has five gold and two silver Olympic medals and wins at the World and European Team Championships. Despite the impressive results, many specialists think that Peter is yet to fulfill his fantastic chess potential. Svidler is a superb tactician with many beautiful games and victories against the world's best players to his credit. India is the birth land of chess, but until Vishwanath and Anand came along, the country couldn't brag about having any extraordinary players. According to Indian tradition, his name can be translated to Anand, the son of Vishwanathan, Confusion with the name started when he first came to Europe. Many thought that Vishwanathan was his first name and that Anand was his surname. Later, Vishwanathan was shortened to Vishi. He learned to play chess when he was six, and by the time he was 14, Vishi was already champion of India. At 15, he was an international master and at 17, a world junior champion. From a young age, Anand played with great strength and speed. Incredible intuition is the strongest part of his universal talent. At the beginning of the 90s, Vichy was among the best players in the world, and in 1995, he earned the right to play a world championship match with Garry Kasparov. Anand lost the match, but in 2000, was victorious at the FIDE World Championship held by a knockout system. It was his first championship title. In 2007, Vichy's dream finally came true. Anand won a two-lap round-robin tournament in Mexico and became the new world champion. He defended his title in 2008 with a confident win over Vladimir Kramnik. Vichy Anand is the only chess player in the world who has won world championships in three different formats. Veselin Topolov's attempt to wrest the title from the Indian Grandmaster in 2010 was unsuccessful. And two years later, the champion retained his crown in a hard struggle against Boris Gelfand. Anand held the title for six years until November 2013, when, in his native Chennai, he finally succumbed to the leader of modern chess, Magnus Carlsen. A player with universal skills and a stunning defender, Vichy Anand remains a serious threat to any opponent in any competition, in any format. After a short break, it seems that both uh, Veselin Topalov and uh, Vladimir Kramnik are doing quite well in their, in their respective games. Uh, Topalov um, managed to put Andrekin under some pressure straight from the opening, despite the black pieces. And um, it wouldn't be a surprise if uh, he already has a decent 
advantage. While Kramnik seems to have gotten a very pleasant position put in a positional sense. And um, Mamejarov has some difficult decisions to make now. Um, while in the other games we have more unclear situation uh, with uh, Peter Svidla still thinking about a possibility of exchanging one of his bishop bishops for the active knight on f4, which could be probably the best solution for him just to avoid having, uh, well, getting into trouble. So uh, we should go for the, for the, for the game Andrei Kintopal, first of all, as uh, some interesting um, developments have just happened there. What do you think about this? No, I, I quite agree. Uh, and I think also, well, you mentioned that Swidler was almost slightly in trouble, but actually something very interesting has happened here in the Topalov game you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We left uh, last time in, in this position after knight d7, and we didn't really see a very tempting option for, no. for Andreikin uh, at all. And, well, I think he realized that, and he came up with something... Something very, very uh, well, original, yes. But also... Very, very risky. He took and he played knight b3. Uh -huh. We were also considering that after c takes d5, knight takes c5 was possible. But uh, Topalov played, uh, played it maybe more safe even. Well, I think safe is, uh, <laughs> is gone in this position. I think also Anand, is he looking a bit in disbelief? Or no, uh, I Well, a bit, I curious. think. <laughs> no, no, I think he is. But, well, and Raikin has played it extremely aggressively. Mm -hmm. It could also be that well, there was simply no good solid option, so he had to do something aggressive. He played knight b3. a5? a5. a4. The threat is a4 in this position by black and getting back the pawn on c5. Mm -hmm. So a4, b6. A typical to Palov. He's giving away a pawn and just opening up. Yeah, we've seen this and, before and already, even in this tournament. Didn't think he could allow that. He played c6, bishop b4 check, king d1, knight c5, knight bd4. Okay, that's quite a that's quite a, a development. I don't have any engines running here, so I could be saying something completely wrong. No, but but I I can't because I don't really have anything to say. I I don't know what to say about yeah. this position. I would say that, uh, well, driving the white king to d one, with uh, the board full of pieces and uh, two bishops, and in this situation, it looks incredibly dangerous. For for, white to me. But there is some kind of solidity to it as well. Where? <laughs> you will put the bishop on b5 and the king on e2. Mm -hmm. And everything is, is quite well protected. Yes, if you manage to do that, maybe. Actually, you say you will try just, and hurt me before that. Well, for sure. But I think just before he played knight c5, Topalov had an interesting option in knight b8. Well, because the only thing that bothers me in his position is that of course well if he <laughs> if he l lets this uh, c6 pawn stay alive right now it doesn't matter but to it could but to start of, mattering yeah. at some point you but it's could, not to could be his. right but mm -hmm. he w i don't think he's thought about that for a second i thought that in this position he might consider not moving the knight if it wasn't because there was any other uh, sort of logical move yeah but i think that knight b8 and getting the pawn back i think no that didn't cross his mind uh, but knight bd4, how do you intensify the pressure here? Yeah, it's, well, maybe it's not as easy as it seems, but bishop g4, I would consider, let's say, bishop g4 has, um, has an advantage of, uh, let's, well, let's say, if white goes for h3 at some point, I could consider bringing my bishop to g6. Yeah. What I would really like to do is to have one of my bishops on b4, which is there already. But after bishop g6, I would immediately go queen f5, I think. No, after bishop h5, you would go yeah, queen sure, f5, sure, yes. Sure. Now, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But what that actually bothers so me from the white perspective is a move like knight e6, and you somehow start breaking this mm -hmm. blockade that I was... Uh, about to be a bit happy about. <laughs> so actually after bishop g4... Bishop g4 is a nice move, I think. It's also the most natural move in the position. Yeah. Uh, it is It is very active, and as you rightly point out, knight e6 
could be simply a quite serious threat after bishop g4 as uh, well the king on d1 is terrible so, okay i'm I really think i'm gonna so. try something here that looks i'll admit rather strange but i'm actually just gonna go to c1 and i will start mm -hmm. claiming that i'm just going here and i'll have a very strong pass pawn on c6. Yeah, but I don't think you will still will be safe. <laughs> you think I'll be hurt in the meantime? You promised that you would... No, yeah. no, I don't know. Uh, well, let's say if I just take on f3 and play something like d4. I understand that that... Um, something like this. That could, that could okay. also work out very I'm badly for me. I haven't spotted your threat yet, so I'm yes. just going to run away. Well, probably there was none. Okay, bishop f3 is not good. No. I agree. Again, I would be quite surprised if this is going to work out spectacularly well for white. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find some way where I'm not going to be uh, completely blown apart. Maybe rook a c8 and uh, just... Uh, yeah. Black uh, should also... The concept should be king b1 then. Mm -hmm. Bishop c5, just to intensify yeah. the pressure on d4. Well. I'm going to give you that one. So the idea should be king a2. Yeah, I understand. I, you will get, I mean, if you want to take something like this, the concept should be I play rook a c1 and I'm happy about this structure. Mm -hmm. and I would even I claim see. that I have a, well, it could, it's a passed pawn in theory. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is not that I, I'm sort of in love with uh, <laughs> the white position. I'm trying to say it's not, as bad as it might seem, and there could be a way to fight on in this position. I would not be extremely surprised if Topalov is blowing him apart. But bishop b5 and the king to a2, I do see some logic in it. And mm -hmm. should black win a pawn, or even two in the process, if I get my king there safely and my rooks out and I have a protected pass pawns, well, worse things could happen, I think. Well, it's an interesting I, it's way that, uh, that Andrekin found. Position. I thought that mm -hmm. Andrekin was in huge trouble. I mean, you mean by playing just normal moves? Yeah, or even mm -hmm. the diagram position. It looks like something where, you know, Topalov is going to do something extremely aggressive and just going to get very close to, to completely Winning. breaking mm -hmm. uh, the position. But it's going to be interesting to see. I still but think he will play bishop g4 now. This yeah, must be I the I agree. Move. But bishop b5? Maybe knight e6 is not the most energetic here. But yeah, you said bishop h5, which would be huge if it wasn't because of queen f5, but queen f5 looks very strong to me. And uh, I'm not, not... No, of course, uh, going into the end game is very dangerous uh, yeah. for, for, for black, actually. I'm not, not too forward. convinced mm -hmm. in, in black's position. You understand that this could be a miniature, and this clip would sound stupid, but uh, somehow... No, you still not have to say what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's... And the computer says black is better, so it's probably he is. But uh, I still think that bishop b5 and try to get some king safety. Well, I don't I know don't what are, I don't know exactly what are the criteria of computer, but probably even the computer realizes that king on d1 is not very, uh, you know, not very well placed. <laughs> no, for sure. And uh, I think they've gotten better at this. I remember that was when Kasparov was playing uh, one of his computer matches. Maybe this one was the one against Deep Fritz. I think he won a, a game where. Instead of castling, he, he moved the king sort of to d1 and c1. And, um, well, the computer evaluation instantly jumped from Kasparov being better to being worse, but uh, nothing has changed in reality, but the computer simply misunderstood it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was a bit of a distraction. Should we... We should move on to Karyakin Aronian, which that, yes. we haven't checked uh, for a while. And... Um, I think seems to be happening yes, a, very a much bit so. there. I think here, we left you here in this position uh, below us after 12 moves, and we were thinking about moves like rook a d1, for instance. Mm -hmm. But Kayakin played, well, he played bishop e3 immediately. It's a bit strange in some sense, but he actually seemed to have a concrete setup in mind. So let's go a bit forward. He played bishop e3, knight g6, and now knight f2 d2. And like this, well, this knight is defending the pawn. So basically he's going to go d4 next and that's exactly what he did. d4 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he found and a way to yeah, to make d4 work. Yeah. 
quite effectively. And I think you can make the argument that he's actually have a nice sender that's completely under control. Why shouldn't this be, be nice? I was saying that when something like this happened, a typical thing would be, let's say, takes takes and queen e7 attacking the pawn here on b4. Mm -hmm. But even a3. Probably he will just do a3. Isn't everything under control? I would guess so. Bishop e6 would have threatened b5. Queen c2. Queen c2. And now you're even stopping f5. The knight comes to a5. This looks very nice. So let's see how I run. He played queen e7 first, mm -hmm. which is threatening to take on... on uh, yeah, and now if he looks he a bit more awkward. And bishop e6 has happened. Uh -huh. And queen c2 takes, takes. And it's hard to imagine that he's not going to take on e5. Or well, he just did. He just did. Okay, I that so. makes the prediction even, even safer. So take on e5. Is this a dream position for white or has black just completely equalized? No, I think equalized? that black is completely fine here already. Generally... I guess mm. you would say that after this, it's just a four versus three majority on the king side, and the double pawn on the queen side is hurtling black. But you are simply thinking that there is pressure against the e4 pawn, and after something like this, maybe bishop d6 will start attacking a bit. Oh, but I also think that, well, this setup that uh, Karyakin used with b4 and d4, Has it worked very well while there were a lot of pieces on the board, mm -hmm. uh, because it was. Uh, limiting black's pieces scope uh, to a huge extent but as soon as uh, black manages to exchange a couple of light pieces well <laughs> he's left with a lot of uh, holes so, in his so position you're saying like in this position uh, here even the push of a5 could start undermining exactly i think well b4 is not beautiful anymore at all but what do you do then are you not going to take an e5 here maybe knight d2 is a better well, move, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if just... Well, I think I think the position is still fine for white, uh, I obviously. I start wondering what happens after knight g4. You could have bishop f4, but... I think any move would be reasonable here, but even c5 might yes. start undermining. Something must have gone wrong for yeah, white here, I because, well, we just uh, sort of uh, fast-forward to the, to, the, to the actual yeah. position. Uh, but... but but also remember, we spoke about this, that there is some kind of long-term potential for black in, in, in this, these positions. Yeah, and it's he has extremely two hard for white to, to put any pressure here. Mm -hmm. So that seems it looks to be. like yet another good Berlin day. And uh, soon well, there is some, some players who keep playing E4. But in this <laughs> tournament against the Berlin, they have not been successful at all, actually. Still too early to, to sort of consider that. Kayakin is in trouble. No, I wouldn't think so, that he's in trouble. Um, knight d2 I like more than knight takes e5, and that's based knight on... Knight d2 is a tough move to play for a start, I would think. And knight g4, you, you will move the bishop, or you will even consider rook a1? No, rook a1 I wouldn't normally consider. Okay, you would go bishop f4. Well, again, if he just wants to make uh, well to 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 make sure that he's not worse, he could even consider bishop c5 maybe. Ah. Or maybe bishop c5 is dangerous. Dangerous, sorry, because of queen e5. Here, yeah. he's much worse. That I missed. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think black is comfortably equal already. That would be my. But hunch. I like knight d2 any anyhow. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think knight takes e5, queen e5. Okay leads to some sort of uh, very easy position well, for black. Yeah. Uh, it's so pleasant to be black I think here. sort of before the Berlin became very popular, one would say that this is actually what white wants, but I agree that there is the queenside structure uh, well, before issues. Is, before is, is, is not uh, helping uh, white. No, not at all. And uh, mm -hmm. even so, I think the structure will be healthy enough for black. So it's going to be interesting. What is the clock times? Yeah, Kayakin has spent... Quite some more time. Almost an hour, yes. Mm. Oh, Leon seems to have seems but to have solved his problems. When we sort of debated problems. how to to get safety for White, how what about Bishop C five? Is that an easy way of making a draw, for instance? Yeah, Bishop C five could be just swapping down the Queen E six, for instance. And. Bishop, Bishop takes F eight. I think. Then I take C four. I think could leave a, a very yeah, strong knight. Yeah, knight c4, that's so true. e4 is hanging. Bishop f8 is no good. Yeah, but just, you have just to the play. c4 square for the knight. But mm -hmm. knight e5, and 
if you take on c5. Well, there is um, knight takes f7. Yeah, knight f7. And then the desperado bishop f2 is not, not very Actually, good. But then the bishop e7 is possible, so yeah. knight takes f7 is not a very good move. Maybe knight f3 still, mm -hmm. still is, is, is pleasant. No, there is something for Kayakin to think about in this position. It's not. Uh, he's well, not for a start, he has to decide whether he's still uh, sort of ambitious about this game and he's uh, trying to find ways to mm -hmm. put pressure, or whether he's almost slightly worse and he should yeah. uh, be solid. And that's, of course, a tough uh, turn of events for him. Yeah, I think best for him would be to realize that uh, he is still solid, but he's not better and. I think a good way to get into a lot of trouble is to uh, really spend a lot of time and then, um, well, you keep being ambitious, you are running your clock down uh, and sort of, you don't get uh, that job done in time. But, well, yeah, well, it says it's slightly, slightly better for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But things are, seems to be happening in the other game, so should we... Yeah, we could switch to another Berlin, uh, to Siddler and over uh, some time ago. Um, we were considering that bishop takes f4 in this particular position was a safe way for white to play. We, we thought so. But actually, I wasn't fantastically convinced. Let's say bishop f4 takes back queen d2. I agree that knight g6 was not very great, but knight e6 followed by f6. It's still a pair of bishops and undermining the structure. I think there, there is not so much pleasant for white to, to look forward to. What Switler has done is at least, I would say, much more interesting and ambitious. He's played bishop to c2. Mm -hmm. After the move f6, he's just played knight g3. Yeah. And now we see... You see... It's hard... I mean, if anyone I should know sort of his expressions, but actually it's hard for me to, to read if he's but, uh, optimistic Wait a second. Uh, what happens if I just take on e5? Well, this this looks incredibly dangerous to me. Are you going to t to play knight takes e5, or what? I would assume so. Pawn takes e5. I don't like opening up for the bishop here. But look at your if f2. Even, <laughs> if even bishop so takes h3 is terrible. possible, I wouldn't know. So let's say f e5, knight takes e5. Well, for a start, I would even think about, um, yeah, bishop takes h3, runs into knight takes g6, so that doesn't work. But let's say knight takes e5 here. Okay, I can't take with the pawn because of some f2. Exactly. Attack. So you have to take with the rook? Yes, and this is, what, isn't f6? this just nice? Queen f6, for instance. I really think that uh, Swiddler should have gone for, for the bishop takes f4. Yeah, but it's it's a sad move to play, I think. And Swidler has generally taken, what do we say, non-sad decision. Uh, that sounds uh, <laughs> all wrong, but he's uh, he's played a very interesting yeah, chess. Yeah, uh, for sure. No, no. I uh, well, um, it's it's. You uh, cannot come up with a moment where he has decided. Okay, let's uh, put on the brakes and be be solid and sensible. So very early in the game, it's tough to realize. Well, you can see the. The computer evaluation yeah, on yeah, the screen, yeah. it's this minus 0 0.57. It's and actually uh, a, a key moment for Anand. I mean, plus 2 is nice, but things have very much slowed down for him. If he gets to plus 3 today, it's a yeah, completely different also, tournament. Well, the point is that dynamic. he's playing uh, Svidla, who is, well, at least in the competition. He's for not too far away as, from As well, from for him. sure. No, it's clear that then we're talking about a two-point uh, gap to, to Svidla. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, That's then for Svidla... Well, things are yeah, almost things passed are tough, in some, yes. some sense, right? So this is a, Let's say a after very crucial moment. F takes e5, knight takes e5, right? How F bad is it to take with the pawn? Well, mm, is bishop takes h3 an option? Can I just flash my tactical skills or lag <laughs> yes. off? What happens if I take on g2? You take with the king. And take on f3. Yeah, you have to take with the king. Yes. And now, can I knight h4 check or queen f8? Queen f8, I, yes. I've gotten some checks in at least. Uh, well, that looks incredibly dangerous if thanks. not winning. Thanks. Yeah, this knight takes g2 is nice. 
and it, it could even be working well. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. That we have a yeah. <laughs> we have a new tweet from Sid Gandhi. How much do you think age is a factor in playing good games? Vishy is now forty-four. How much longer do you think he can go? It's from from yeah from Gandhi even uh, yeah yeah. Um, well, I, if yeah, if I if I had to answer this, I think uh, well, the age is of course a factor in chess. It would be, well, it would be probably stupid just denying that. But uh, so. but on the other hand, uh, well, really good, really talented players and world champions, they can go on for basically a very very long time as long as they enjoy playing chess. If there comes a moment when well, when something something is lost there um, in this phase yeah. of enjoyment, then then uh, probably it's best to retire. But as you can see from Vish's performance here, as you as you have seen from let's say Boris Gelfand's performance mm -hmm. in the in some well in in previous years mm -hmm. when let's say in 2011 in Kazan, also the competition was incredibly tough, and he managed to to win. But I think there is still quite an important difference between Gelfand and Anand and uh, now I'm not at all trying to uh, sort of insult Gelfand at all I'm actually a very huge fan of what he's managed but there is maybe the difference that Gelfand was still very hungry in the sense he hadn't played a world championship match mm -hmm. while Wishy has played a lot so I think motivation is is also going to be a big part of it of course Wishy is still uh, very motivated and I think in this tournament he shows it more than ever but still to sort of I think still somehow doing it uh, sort of this is your first world championship match this was something very particular for Gelfand this was a lifelong dream for him while for Vichy it was after all world championship match number five uh, if I if I remember correctly and that is that is quite a difference in a mm -hmm. sense I think also Kasparov quit uh, in his early 40s basically having achieved everything and somehow this thing that there is only repetitions left mm -hmm. in life makes things slightly more difficult to maybe sort of have the or more well, routine you could yeah, say yeah, in a way and uh, well you would have to renew yourself to to some extent i think for instance was it after kasparov retired and said he tried everything in chess i think ivanchuk came out with a brilliant comment but he's never played the french <laughs> but i think that's that wasn't exactly kasparov's point no. but um well, age, of course, matters both in a physical sense, but also to a certain extent, I would say, to, in, in a psychological mm -hmm. and, and mental sense. But, of course, also in a physical sense. And I think, for instance, uh, at some point, Manchester United, the football team, had this very good goalkeeper, Van der Sar. And I think he was maybe even the best goalkeeper at the point. But the, their coach was telling him, maybe now is the time to quit because things can actually go pretty fast in the wrong direction. And, and he chose to do that. And that uh, maybe was not a bright decision, but at least he's remembered uh, like that. And I think, well, before this tournament, there was someone who was skeptical about uh, Vichy's chances. But I think here he's shown that he's just playing a uh, fantastic chess. Mm, and I is. think actually there was a very Absolutely. interesting, uh, not tweet, but comment by Alexander Grishuk uh, about Vichy's performance mm -hmm. here. And he said that for him, the surprising thing was not Vichy doing well in the candidates, but that he hadn't done well in all the previous tournaments, mm -hmm. in a sense. But yeah. well, I think 44 is a suboptimal age for any sportsman, and despite age mattering less in chess, I think it's better to be 24 or 34 than 44. But, well, class matters more in some sense. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I think this is uh, a very impressive performance by a 44 year old. Uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, an impressive well, performance by, by, by any, by any, by any, by player. any and, standards, uh, yes. Yeah. And, Maybe earlier you would lose use the sort of uh, vicious age as an explanation, but I think to speak about his age when he's he's playing chess like this makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And now he's he's just taken on e5. Mm -hmm. So, well, actually, it seems that well, <laughs> here uh, White has to be very very careful to not get into a lost position, and it is interesting uh, which uh, well which way will Svidla choose, as after knight takes e5, which we have been discussing before. Mm -hmm. Not even knight takes e5, but simply queen f6 seems to be very strong, don't you think? And the point being that, well, well f2 is <laughs> is very if weak. If knight takes g6, you're going to hit me with some... I think knight takes h3 should be just uh, okay, very, very good. Che check here. And now you have 
some kind of well, uh, now, move. N- now I think uh, there is a choice. <laughs> okay. I but wouldn't be surprised if Queen takes G3 just wins here, for instance. But also, also there is simply H takes G6, okay. and uh, let's say, well, yeah, maybe. What are your options to? Yeah. <laughs> to sort of to control this I, position? <laughs> I think yeah. Uh, I there think, are I none. Not really. No. 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 So this uh, this mm. this is one of the big yeah. dangers of this Queen F6 uh, but hitting F2, uh, but to to such an extent that it's basically impossible but, to solve it. But to sort of sum it up a bit. I mean, d5 loses to knight g2, and if knight d5 loses to queen f6, you are trying to say that he has a move that's not taking back on e5. He has to give away one of his bishops, and that's when probably he will regret that he hasn't done it early. Mm. But let's say bishop takes d6, is that really a move? Yeah, bishop takes g6. Just knight takes g6. Knight takes I mean, g6, I think. Well, we are still looking at the same. He hasn't solved the problem on a, of f2 being so weak. No. no, of course. I mean, the chess game goes on. Knight takes e5. And if queen f6, maybe I can play bishop to e3. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's obvious it that this is this fantastic for black. But and this has gone uh, really wrong for, yeah, for, for, for white. Mm-hmm. Wow. This has gone so wrong and so quickly that it's what hard to believe. What about bishop takes f4 in this position? I understand it looks very weird. Yeah, I think e takes f4. Well, you should at, re- at least try to cash in this pawn. Yeah, and I was thinking, do I have some kind of compensation? But uh, I you could have. Uh, no, at least I don't, I don't now there is no no at more least, yeah. mate. <laughs> it's quite a price you are paying. But yes. Uh, well, okay, maybe mm. we should leave poor Switler a bit alone with his position and his yeah. agony here. That's yeah. maybe not not reasonable to focus on. No, that. no, that's true. Should we? Have a look at Kramnik first. I think it's Let's been a lo- long time mm-hmm. since we've seen his game with Mamed Yar. Mm-hmm. So I think we were very optimistic on his behalf. Well, uh, maybe not so much because of uh, the objective evaluation, oh. but uh, also mm. because uh, how pleasant this position is to play, I and for someone like Kramnik. But I really like his position mm-hmm. as well, more or less mm-hmm. just for objective reasons. Mm-hmm. So I think Knight B1 was the last move he played, mm-hmm. and uh, Mamed Yar has replied with queen to d6, knight c3, queen to c6. Well, we thought about placing the bishop there, but maybe putting the queen there in some sense is a bit more optimistic. Mm -hmm. You're hoping that this bishop uh, from c8 will come to f5 and d3 and at least contest the b5. He's played rook f to b1. And now, well, he should be moving his knight to f8, maybe. But that's still, isn't it a a very sad position? Rook Rook b5. You're gonna go bishop e6. It's not a fun position to play. I can no. double in the b line, and I can put my bishop on f4. I, every, I mean, all my th- pieces are nice squares. I would rather have my pawn on h3 than h4. But apart yes, from that, yes, I understand <laughs> that. But uh, well, this is uh, still a very small price you have to pay for yeah, for getting uh, such a pleasant position. You have so much under control here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is no, this looks uh, this looks okay, very unpleasant. Okay, there is a slight detail though that rook. B1, B1 you can into bishop, bishop f5, f5 so yes. there's at least a trick left. But, but it's not like uh, time is a huge factor in no, this position also, either. No, again, help me a bit with the tactics, but how about e4 here? If you take it, there is d5. Yeah, well, that means that uh, he cannot even afford to put his knight too far away from uh, from d5. But, but, but where? But where? <laughs> I mean, it's on f6 it's going to be taken, and on b6 yep. it will be undermined by a5. By a5. I think that Mamed is in huge trouble. Yeah, it seems so. It it really does. He is well. We are saying that Switler is sort of the roller coaster ride of this tournament, but I think Mam- Mamedyarov at least is. Uh, well, Mamedyarov for, for a start, <laughs> he has four decided games out of six. Switler as well, right? Oh, I think. That yeah. that could. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yes, but, you're right. But I mean, it's the same. But he was minus two at some point. Now he was he minus two after three yeah. first rounds, yeah. and he it really seemed like this was well. Yeah. At least there was a big chance this would be a disaster. And then it, he came back with two wins, for sure. Yeah. Which which was uh, also very very yeah. uh, impressive, but uh, today uh, things uh, seem to be going. Yeah, uh, I don't know how he can even limit the damage in this to position. Be going his way. It's it's hard suggesting, an even moderately reasonable move. You think he's considering bishop a6? It looks. Oh, I think he's horrible. considering knight f6. Actually, really? knight ah. f6. Uh, well, with some um, with some concrete uh, tactical point, uh, mm-hmm. as if bishop takes f6, queen f6. 
Yeah, then knight d5. He could consider queen takes h4, but it still looks very, very, very bad after a simple queen takes c4. What are we? Well, we're talking about being a pawn down with a fantastic pawn structure for white, no weaknesses. And there is no h pawn at least. No, but uh, well, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's impossible to picture the situation where you're going to mate me on the h line. Is it? Okay. I, I thought I would start with bishop e6 and then sort of annoy you a bit, but um, queen it's, not it's not mm, it's not great. Yeah, but uh, I would well, hope rook c8 just would knowing more. knowing Mamedjarov, I think that he is considering some kind of active option here, but much rather than uh, well, also I think it, what are the passive options? I think it, that would be, I mean, a completely understandable choice. Mm -hmm. Else you're s you're going to drift into a strategically very unpleasant and long and sort of boring defense and even objectively very difficult. Mm -hmm. Another uh, idea could be to try to protect the b5 square with a6 or bishop a6. Yeah, we are actually, actually going to see bishop a6. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, at least very logical. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, bishop on a6, it's not doing much more than just protecting mm -hmm. the a6 square. Well, m maybe his point is that now he's actually about to play rook b8 next. And should you play bishop f4, mm -hmm. then he I can play, play knight f6. Mm -hmm. that, that's so that's an interesting way to do this. Mm -hmm. Our, I mean, we somehow had the urge to do something extraordinary, and he's actually just come up with something very sensible. Mm -hmm. I still somehow think that there is something wrong with Black's position here. Uh, may maybe I'm just too much sort of impressed by the knight on c3, but to me it looks like a very difficult position for. Well, for a start, even if you play rook b8 and you manage to swap down uh, on b1. It's not like the weaknesses on, on d5 is no, going away no, at all. No, uh, it, um, it is not at no. all. No, you're saying rook b8? You would just reply bishop f4 and, well, one set of rooks has been exchanged. But uh, for instance, so what in, in some sense? Let's say now the interesting thing for, for Kramnik would be uh, to to put his queen somewhere on f3 or g4 maybe okay. just to play queen e2 or queen d1 doesn't mm -hmm. matter something so, like something that like this mm -hmm. and then well we are eyeing squares on f3 or even on g4 and mm -hmm. well i like f3 a lot because it's attacking this pawn yeah f3 is very uh, very logical and yeah. and putting even more pressure mm -hmm. on, on I black think, i think yeah strategically this is a very difficult position for black and there even is uh, some short-term tactics also making it difficult. Of course, Mamedyarov is a, a very imaginative player, but he also he needs something to be able to create something. Mm -hmm. And Kramnik's position is extremely solid, and uh, the knight on c3 is huge. The knight on c3 yeah. is beautiful. I, I think Mamedyarov is in huge trouble here. Mm -hmm. Should we go to Andrei and Topalov? Because that seemed like a very fascinating position. Actually. Let's do that. <coughs> Yeah, we've just been discussing that this bishop b5 is, well, that bishop b5 is potentially uh, an interesting way for white to, well, to keep his position uh, more or less uh, yeah. protected. Yeah, you, you thought that he should go bishop g4 and maybe knight e6 to break it down, or yeah. maybe that was even my suggestion until I changed my mind. But yeah. Topalov has actually played the move knight e4, and, uh, and Reichen has followed up with bishop to b5. And this is, I don't know what to say exactly. Do you think that Andraikin will hide his king on e2? Or will he actually be ambitious and, and go for the sort of the walk and then <laughs> try and end up on a2? Walk the walk. Yeah. No, I really think that uh, king e2 looks uh, much more sort of normal. <laughs> but does it? King e2? What is the hope? Then... Well, maybe you're hoping that you will end up on g1 on, on a good day. But king e2, I would be afraid of queen g6 at any moment. Mm -hmm. So how... I, I mean, maybe I'm just getting too fascinated by putting the king on a2. By your own idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's that tends to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that, uh, well, king e2 is also well, definitely possible and something that he will yeah. look at in the first place but, as, but, as it looks more natural. But now actually we are discussing what should white play, but it's black to move. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. 
<laughs> actually, <laughs> well, once again, Andraken is pulling it off because he's, well, he's finding some some very original ways to play a position which looked like, well, you yeah. remember ten, 10 moves ago, or maybe five moves ago, it looked like he's just worse without any good yeah. prospects and that now he's a pawn up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's true, he has paid a price for that pawn. His king is um, no, no. strangely E5, close. here we come. Wow, okay, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a move. <laughs> yeah. G5. Yeah, that, yeah, that, is, that could uh, be the most exciting game of today. That is cool. But is it good? <laughs> yeah. That's the question. Well, it has a very obvious threat of g4 and taking on f2. Yeah, um, but you will play h3, right? Yeah. And then I, I assume his idea is h5. That also opens up uh, lines uh, I, with his I king. I understand, <laughs> but you think he is just saying g5, h3 is a knight's inclusion. I wouldn't think so. No, he's I think playing H3, H3 has been played. Yeah. Wow. But, well, you were praising Andraken, and I want to go on a bit in that direction as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you all heard my evaluation. I thought black was actually considerably better, and I could only find depressive options for white. Very much so. What Andraken found looked awfully scary to me, but actually he managed to do it in a basically aggressive way, and now he has a position where all three results are possible. Yeah, maybe what Andraken <coughs> is doing uh, very, very well is, uh, well, that he finds some options that could be, well, mm -hmm. with the most computerish way, they could be uh, used, uh, sort of, and, yeah. and, and he, could, he could get uh, a well, bad position, uh, but for a human being to find mm -hmm. Uh, ways to fight this is not so easy. And he's provoking Topalov to play, uh, to really walk I the... I still think that he has just given... A um, very thin line, I think. He gave Topalov an excellent position right out of the opening, yeah, where he had right. a pair of bishops and even some initiative. And uh, I think he's just playing very well in a not very good position. And mm -hmm. he maybe he put himself into a not very fantastic uh, scenario, but did it quite well. I think actually, well, we heard Grishuk saying something nice about Anand earlier, but actually I think Grishuk said something even nicer about Vishy some years ago. He said that Anand could be one of the players in the world where actually making a blunder could actually improve his chances in the games. He was, I think basically he was saying that when things get out of control in a complicated position, it could be that Anand was objectively worked, but just that it got so complicated it could actually mean that you were in huge trouble. And there is something of it with Andraken as well. With that, play. Mm -hmm. that actually, well, I understand it hasn't worked out too well in this uh, tournament, but he's seeking this kind of wild complications, simply believing that he can. Um, well, play at play least as well yeah. as Eskis' opponent. Well, this is, this is the first time that he's playing on this, well, the absolute top level, and maybe. He will need to adjust to a certain extent, but um, he's uh, no. This is this is a fascinating game, simply. And uh, well, we will have computer evaluations, and we will be uncertain. But uh, yeah. I would expect Tupolev to play h5 here. But now, well, I well now <laughs> your king c1. Yeah, yeah, he's playing h5. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now your king, king c1, c1 and becomes g4. More. Takes takes. Yeah, g4 takes takes. And, um, okay, I'm just gonna have fun. So I'm gonna suggest the move king b1, mm -hmm. and after takes takes, and next king a2, and I'm rook. gonna go king a2 mm -hmm. and rook a1, and that's, I will pretend everything was planned. That's very nice. Yes. But no, I, I <laughs> no. really mean it because well, yeah. you already have a pawn. You're a, already a pawn up, and that's not a weak pawn at all. <laughs> well, for a start, it's an extra pawn, but that's actually what I care the least about. It gives me king safety. Mm -hmm. You cannot use the C line. There's no way you're going to shoot against this pawn on, on C6. This is actually... But, uh, well, what is Topalov doing? He's basically, he basically thinks he's winning if he plays H5 here. I think Topalov is... Um, well, Topalov goes forward. I mean, yeah. he has said... I have yeah. a lot of understanding <laughs> I, for I, that. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I was about to say, he thinks pawn can only go forward. They can actually only go forward. Yes. So. Well, that pawns are sort of yeah. designed for that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But King C1 but, now is incredibly interesting for... Well, it it's also, also probably the, the only move. What about... No, let's say h4. That could also be a move, I think. And the idea should well, be that after g4, g4. knight g5. I would jump here. And knight f2. I can move my king. King. Uh -huh. And that's made an h7. And if queen f2 is possible... Well, I, queen f2, you can play knight e4, worst case. Yeah, and I thought queen e3. Then there's knight to check on f6. So you'll have to exchange. And that can't be too bad for no. me. And what I wanted to say is that... Sorry, takes takes something like g3. It could be a solid structure, but actually, I think rook to e4 and bishop to c5. Probably not. Mm -hmm. But I would think that a logical move could be king e2 as well. And uh, but uh, what about g4? Ah, you, you well, mean the, g4, the very same idea? I would idea do something mm -hmm. similar, and then I would go rook to g1 here and says, please <laughs> take it. <laughs> but well, but he will not. No, that's, oh, well, that's your problem. That will be made in a, <laughs> in, a, in a few moves. Yeah, King but, E2 is but maybe, tempting. Yeah, but maybe you will not really get, get on next. Actually, now I had a slight glance at the computer, and he was suggesting the move C7. I will guarantee you that is not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, that looks like the most ambitious move I've ever seen. No, but <laughs> this is, it's he's just not a going joke, to play it. <laughs> But uh, let's see. Okay. The computer is saying a huge zero, edge for white. Yeah, 0 0.71 oh. for white. Yeah. That's just incredible. Well, he's an pawn up. And if. I well, think the computer thinks simply thinks that what Topalov has done in the last two moves was terrible. But, uh, but I also. This is. And this could objectively be right, but this is a game that can swing back and forth tremendously by, by each move. And, uh, well, I was about to say that. It could also be that Andrekin is very pessimistic about his position. That could hurt him. But, but I think it's we, not his style. No, I think we, uh, Andrekin has showed his uh, sort of optimistic uh, side in this tournament. Mm -hmm. I think, and it, I don't think the losses will influence him in that sense. No, no, not really. But, but what is the point of King C1? Is it just getting out of the way? So King C1, we are saying. It's just, you will... Well, uh, you it's just water. probably that the king on e2 is uh, very, very safe mm -hmm. as compared to anything else. And yeah. then, well, and then you end up just being a pawn up, uh, well, and a very solid pawn up. Oh, that is, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Should we check out Karyakin Aronian while Andrekin is thinking? This game is, well, incredibly yeah. exciting and we will come back to it, well, well many, many times <laughs> sure. because, well, this is, this is a priority yeah. right now. But Let, let's, let's do that because also, yeah, I think we left you off in this position and Kayakin seems to have had quite a thought. Now he just made a move again, but let's so mm -hmm. let's quickly. Knight d2 was played and we were talking about knight to g4, but maybe that wasn't exactly the best, at least he played the move a5, a3, mm -hmm. and now he has exchanged and played the move to queen to e6. I think at a first glance you can say that, well, black has solved his problems. At okay, least. I was about to say that. At first glance it would look like things have sort of improved moderately for oh, white. Really? I mean, he does have the better pawn structure. Not maybe better pawn structure, but, well, he has at least a pawn majority that has some relevance. But it's true, the more I look at it, the less I like it for white, to be honest. Well, he can play, uh, well, black uh, probably is planning to do something like either knight c4 or yeah. knight g4. Well, you I can't was, really I prevent was everything. I bishop f4, but you could maybe even play knight c4, uh -huh. unless I'm blundering f7, c7. Oh. But uh, no, I think you're right. Black should be completely fine in this position. I think but so. It it's not unlikely to end up being a draw in not but so f3 many. f3 is a nice... Many. Nice, cozy little move, I think. Also, have a look at Karyakin's time. He's, that's not he's down to 38 minutes. Distance. What would you think about a move like knight c4 here? Mm -hmm. I assume you have to take it. Maybe you can go to... Maybe actually bishop f2 is nicer. But I was just trying to say something like this. Mm -hmm. I understand, again, there is the sort of uh, majority discussions, but there is also... These Very pawns are so. weak. And also, yeah, I agree. This is... And, well, this is not... Black Too bishop nice will go to white. d6, and uh, well, it's it's very solid and, and safe there. But maybe here, actually, Kayakin will go to to f2, and he will get a considerably better version. Yeah, you could also um, you could also consider rook a d8 here, maybe even because uh -huh. look at the d3 s square. Of well, course, I this will is very force you to not look at it. <laughs> That's a good on. point. Bishop I mean, takes. I'm not 
that sharp tactically. How about this? Bishop takes e5, and you want to play bishop queen e5. Queen e5. Yes, that's that is nice. Yes, that probably I works. I think so. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe rook a d8 is a is a, is a quite well. You you have to consider rook a7, of course. As rook a d8, uh, well, giving up the yeah, a line is risky. Sure. Sure. No, he knight just knight c4 has been yeah. played. Okay. F3 and knight c4. And I really think bishop mm. f2 should be the right answer here. And uh, yeah, well, knight takes c4 simply seems uh, slightly tempted. worse for white. But, but even in this, is it completely possible to to imagine that these pawns are actually quite a liability? I'm saying that if queen e2, I will have queen b3, and I'm gonna sit on c4, and I'm gonna be, you know, put a bit of pressure here mm -hmm. and there. Maybe it's probably way too too little in some sense, but. Um, well, Aronian yeah. will do it most likely. I don't think white is better at all, at no. least. But probably it is r rather easy defending. But I still, I do have some sympathy for black's chances here, at least to put up a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. Time-wise, okay, he has 37 moves for 7 or 18 moves. It should very normally be a draw. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, time-wise is not uh, uh, critical in any way yet. And, uh, no. well, most importantly, the position is quite simple to play, even if it is uh, very slightly mm -hmm. worse mm -hmm. for white, but it's not no. too complicated. But Aronin should be happy about right. the, the how how this game for is. For sure, for sure. Should we check uh, what yeah. what is happening in Vichy, in Swidler so, against Vichy? I think we saw Swidler walking around. Mm -hmm. We thought he had a very difficult decision. Well, he had a difficult decision to make, and okay, probably he, he, he chose, made it. He chose to take on g6 here. Mm -hmm. We thought basically taking back on e5, in whatever way he did, would have some direct tactical drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, and Reikin has just played the move king c1, which was supposed to be very strong. Mm -hmm. But le let's keep keep our focus here. So, Swidler took on g6, knight g6. Bishop to d5, queen c7, and knight takes e5. Mm -hmm. And this well, bishop g5 was an interesting move. He yeah. he manages to uh, drive the queen from the very important f6 square. So let's just can you help me with a tactic here? I'm going to take on e5. And after you take here, you take on f2. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is that not working? Is it? I cannot see why it's not working. To because be rook e8 check, there is rook, f rook, rook f8. f8. Mm -hmm. you and rook e7, <laughs> there is she's looking at his hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some yeah. reason. Well, you know, he has he has time. He now, has time for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, black is minus black is one. better. Not not like he's winning, but he's one well, pawn up. Well, the computer is saying yeah. minus one. Maybe it's even my tactic. That would be that spectacular. Would be spectacular <laughs> indeed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well. No, it's it makes actually a lot of sense. Maybe it's not such a such a difficult difficult thing to see. Knight takes e5. Is there's it? nothing else. Yeah, rook f2 straight away is probably bad for a number of reasons. It's not that I see that many of them. How bad would that be? If we just uh, well humor me. Well, what do you mean? Queen takes uh, king takes f2. Well, the idea should be knight e5 with uh, a huge attack. Uh, why, why wouldn't you just take a pawn <laughs> instead? Because, uh, so <laughs> because you want Swidler something more. is heading for position a pawn down with, but some with dark square compensation. Ah, Jonathan Rawson. Mm -hmm. yeah. hi, 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 Jonathan. Nice to, nice to hear from you, actually. Um, yeah, yeah well, what, uh, it seems... It's Jonathan Rawson is, uh, well, for a start, he's been s Scotland's strongest player for quite a, uh, some time, but also I think he's a very entertaining and uh, intelligent chess writer. But mm -hmm. he has left the chess world to a certain extent. I think, uh, I think he's I think maybe so. he's otherwise employed in, in, mm -hmm. in some way. So, well, actually, I'll be curious to hear, hear, hear what he's well, doing. Well, I think Jonathan <laughs> is uh, writing a lot uh, on, on Twitter these okay, days okay, about sure. non-chess non things non -non -chess as well. Non-chess things, okay, yes. okay, okay, yeah. But, but he's a well, very renowned chess but, author. But now I almost sort of pu pushed the question back to him. But Jonathan is saying that Switler can get quite some compensation on the uh -huh. dark squares yeah, for let's pawn. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's try to what fig figure out what, <laughs> what, <is> what, <laughs> what does he mean. Uh -huh. 
so 95 well okay so we are saying probably 95 rook e5 and rook f2 is the critical follow-up yes what would be the move here then it looks pl pretty queen terrible e for what queen e1 could that be a move no, I'm dropping Bishop D4. Takes D4. That, that, you uh, can't do that. That's the problem with b with White's position. Of course, uh, he's only one pawn down. Yeah. But D4 is so incredibly weak that, well, how is he also ever going to, well, no, let's say, that, move that his is queen? But is it really so simple? Knight E5, Knight E5. Okay, Rook takes E5 is absolutely only move. And after Rook F2? Two? Well, let's be a bit active and give a check i assume rook f8 yes and maybe he means rook e7 now right no g3 oh, sorry, is, hanging. G3 g3 is, is hanging. hanging as well so i think he would mean this yes. well it could also be that jonathan is we got his tweet but it could have been a couple of moves ago that maybe i mean i don't think we should sort of uh, um necessarily feel sure that this is the position jonathan mm -hmm. is talking about no no it could be queen d3 but i think just king g8 this is the kind I of position where yeah. uh, white could be just simply lost uh, due to the... Well okay, there is rook e1 and some kind of compensation. Yeah, but bishop takes d4 also is an option at times. Well, right here it's going to end up with uh, mate. mate. Mm -hmm, so that I understand. So here actually, this is not mm -hmm. over. No, no. Maybe after queen d3, maybe actually king g8 is a pretty bad move. You should play bishop e6, for instance. I think that's a much better way. Uh, but again, for Vichy, it's going, well, nicely. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, it's a very crucial moment for Vichy. Mm -hmm. There is a huge difference between plus two and plus three. Yeah. Let's imagine that he wins this game and Aronian is playing against Kayakin and that's a draw. Mm -hmm. Then he will go in with a point lead to uh, uh, Aronian tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if Aronian do not win that game, Vichy has an extra point and guaranteed best tiebreaks toward Aronian. This That's is right. a huge lead. While, um, yeah, let's say that he, he makes the same point or even Aronian catches him, then tomorrow's games, well, tomorrow's game is going to be extremely important between these two Anyhow. anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I think, well, I think also um, the world champion Magnus Carlsen, he had a, had a video and... Uh, sort of giving his interesting comments on the candidates tournament. And he was saying that, well, he thought that actually it's only Aronian who can sort of be a breakaway winner from this tournament. But should Vichy win today? Mm -hmm. Well, he actually has a chance of sort of really breaking away from the, from the other persons in that set. So I think it's really a key moment. Vichy started with two and a half out of three and it looked like he slowed down and was just happy. He put some pressure, but nothing too serious. Mm -hmm. But this is his chance, I think. Yeah. Well, it's <coughs> it really seems like he should take uh, this pawn on f2 and then... Does he have other, yeah, other options? Yeah, I'm wondering what is he thinking about here. <laughs> oh, Jonathan Rosen is tweeting <laughs> again. Hi, enjoying commentary. I'm assuming knight takes e5, rook e5, rook uh -huh. f2, rook e8. Okay, this is... Okay, interesting yeah. stuff from Jonathan. He's saying like this mm -hmm. and now king h2 mm -hmm. and then queen moves rook f1 and bishop f4 e5 yeah, yeah. that could very well be what Swidler is planning here yeah Bishop's i understand it, i think it's king a good, good good concept and if you can get it uh, no i think jonathan has a very relevant point let's make a couple of moves let's say like this and now he's gonna go queen d2 let's king say king g8. g8 and now bishop f4 somewhere then like this mm -hmm. and if you're lucky you will even get the knight to h5 that's right well something like that would make a lot of sense yeah probably well black would still be better but it's a very i mean very nice idea and it's pretty forced i think right so he takes, he has to rook play like this, yeah. rook f2, mm -hmm. check. And I think playing king f7, it's rook for e a start. Seven, check. Yeah, mm -hmm. that didn't really help. That doesn't so work. Takes, takes, and king h2, simply. Mm -hmm. 
you would really like to switch, let's say, the queen to d6 and the bishop to c7. But there is no time. There is no that. time, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have check and bishop f4. That's right. So it's actually going to end up in something, something like, something like this. And there's, it's a pawn, but there's a lot of work for Vichy. No, I think Jonathan has a very good point here. But if it's really enough to discourage Vichy from taking the pawn, think I wouldn't so. think so. No, uh, well, this is the best chance for White, very yeah, likely. Yeah, very much so. But he's and already in, in dire straits. Actually, I would say I like it so much that sort of to start debating the tournament situation, should Vichy win this game? It's actually too early. It's not yeah. at all clear he's the favorite to win this game. I think Do he has a... Do you think not? Well, how are you going to break this thing down? Well, I, uh, well, let's say this position that we have on the board, I would mm -hmm. consider playing, uh, let's say, bishop f7, and just to put my bishop on g6. I understand okay. it looks a bit <laughs> sort of take well, long, straightforward. You're saying like this, and then yeah. bishop g6, and That's then what I mean. The rook is coming, well, maybe the bishop is back. Then I just want to swap, uh, swap some pieces, and yeah. uh, well, I will always be much, much better in, you're right, you're in right. any you're scenario right. as yeah. long as as long as I don't uh, allow you to play knight h5 and queen g5 quickly, yeah. which of course would be very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, something like that should be tried. But look, Vichy is really taking his time. He's probably used like ten, at least ten minutes in this position, right? Yeah, and it uh, is not. Uh, Maybe for him it's a trivial tactic, but, but even so, there is involved a check on e8 and a possible rook e7 and such. No, I really it think that sense. what he's thinking about is, well, the evaluation of this position yeah. uh, later on, uh, mm -hmm. if, if it is really better for him, if the king is not too weak yeah. and things like that. But does he have any tempting alternatives? Yeah, that's a good, uh, good, good question. Well, I think <laughs> that, let's say he couldn't win the pawn like this. Yes. Even then, one would say that Black's position is, is quite a success. Of course, knight d6 might be a threat, but let's then play a move like queen d6. But I don't think there are good enough reasons not no. to take on e5. No, no, after here, I think, let's say queen d2, and you will take back on e5 with the rook. And uh, Well, it's almost like you have the, the game, pos uh, sorry, the, the rouse and pawn stack position with an extra pawn. And that makes it much nicer. Much of course. nicer, yes, yeah. yes. So he well, actually really has to go for this, I think. Yeah. Vichy has almost an hour left, and uh, this is, I mean, he is extremely good in all aspects of the game, but of course, calculation is uh, maybe his, uh, his best uh, strength, I would say, mm -hmm. but it's a bit hard to, to, to say that. It's uh, hard to say, yes. So. What should, should we, we have a look at? You want Kravnik Mamadyarov or Andraikin Topalov? That's your choice. Well, let's, uh, let's see Kravnik Mamadyarov uh, for okay, a start. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, we stopped at Yeah, we we, we finished our Yeah, Mamma played the move Bishop A six. Yes. Twenty Bishop A six. Mm -hmm. And we wondered if he wanted to give a pawn away for a bit of compensation, but actually he chose something much more solid and you can argue quite passive. He played the move Bishop A six. Kramnik played Queen D one as we expected, sort of switching the Queen um to to attack the, the the weak pawn on d5. Mm -hmm. Mamadiyev defends it with f6, bishop f4, rook a to d8, and the idea is queen f3, knight f8. And now Kramnik has played bishop h6 and king to f7. Yeah. For a start, let's say knight e6 is actually an annoying threat. I assumed it's not, but even something like bishop f8, rook f8 rook b4. Isn't this pretty terrific for white? Well, um, well you would black's position You would never hasn't ever hasn't take on f8 in such a <laughs> position. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why no. not? Well, I think if anything, the bishop on h6 is... Uh, yeah, well, what I mean is that this knight on c3 is fantastic. It's yeah. attacking on d5, it's blocking the pawn, and white has the b line, and I can simply not see any way where black is going to get just a, a moderate amount of excitement in this position. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he can hope to that White will take the pawn on d5 and he will get c3. But that is, is pretty much a, a long shot, I would say. Well, I think, uh, well, the argument for taking on a fate would be if you play rook b4 and black plays knight e6. But then there was actually, at times, maybe e bishop, g, bishop g5, I thought. Bishop g5. 
Well, bishop g5 and I play knight f8 again. <laughs> if that's yeah, what. sure. That's, uh, it's not like yeah. uh, bishop g5 is winning. Well, it's also position. like knight e6. Is there anything close to a threat? Can I just take the b line now? Mm. It uh, sure uh, looks can. like a, a very dominating position for Kram. Mm -hmm. Well, it's of course a question if he can break through. That yeah. will take some uh, some effort. Are ah, you saying, let's say, knight g7? And we start thinking that knight f5 is annoying, so we're going to take it. And here? Well, maybe there's hardly any way forward for white. Well, I think g4 he will consider something really? like that. Oh. Well, uh, well, he, he, he basically... Start with something like queen f4 and take a bit more. Yeah, but what I mean, I guess, is that uh, he's achieved maximum mm -hmm. uh, on the b line. Yeah. Uh, there is no rook b8, but also he cannot... Uh, he can exchange off... I mean, even that ending would not be too bad, I would say. No, no, but I think something like queen f4 and, uh, well, try h5 or something like that. Just uh, he would uh, have to try to find uh, um, mm -hmm. another, also another yeah. point of entrance or another um, weakness in, in the oh, black position. It's a very unpleasant position for, for Mahmoud Yarov, no doubt, and also... Time is not uh, fantastic for him either, but not too bad. No, actually. no, I think time was yeah, uh, he right. should manage this, this mm -hmm. n in not too difficult way. Yeah, well, we promised to go back to Andrei Kintopalov very soon, um, and I think I think yeah, we, we should we do should that. Actually. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So we definitely should do that because that's maybe the most well. I don't know the exact phrase, but that's the game that. Well, it seems to well go sort of up and down in some sense, right? We left you after the position h5, and uh, and Reichen just played king c1, and after bishop c1, c5, king b1, rook e8, king a2. Well, I love it. What can I <laughs> can I say, right? This is what I thought was the dream scenario for for and uh, Yeah, it is. Uh, this is uh, it is quite impressive with yeah. his with his king on a2. And uh, probably it is safe then. But what would you say of Andreikin's sort of decisions, let's say, based on a sort of a strategical uh, point of view, that you're minus three in the tournament, you're playing Topalov, and you decide, I'm going to do something incredibly risky? Well, I, I can you only say it. that <laughs> I respect it very much, yes. You do respect it? Of course. Well, uh, he is. Well, maybe he didn't think that. Uh, well, it's very realistic for him to hope yeah. for. Winning. So uh, we had a tweet here saying, "Great game by praising and Andrei." Andrei. Yes, yeah. and we uh, can only agree. Yeah. Well, uh, he's. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for someone who sticks to his um, to his uh, style of play, and uh, especially against those guys who are. But uh, isn't it about t taking intelligent, balanced decision, not just sort of no, uh, but you saying can, you can you know, easily let's go for you gold can, and hope for the best. Yes, but you can still easily end up on minus four, uh, not having won a single game. And then you will think that you have wasted your, <laughs> well, uh, an interesting chance to play. Uh, well, he's a young player. He should try it. That's that's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I see. Rook a7 has been played to change the subject. Yes. Yeah. Okay. King b1, rook e8. Mm -hmm. no, of course. But what uh, are you going to do next now? Well, Topalov has a bit switched. He's not going to go g4. He's... No. Actually, just going to say, okay, maybe actually Topalov has done something quite impressive. He has come to the realization that, okay, I have actually done something very, very stupid here. I have taken a promising position and turned it into something... That's not promising Not anymore, at all. At all. I, w I thought h5 and g4 is going to crash through, but it didn't seem to be the case. And now he's just saying, I'm actually just going to stabilize. I'm going to double in the E-line. I'm not going to go G4 at all. And uh, how is Andreikin going to get on with his uh, position? And but so he's a pawn up. Well, but I don't think it's just a pawn up. Uh, well, for a start, he has... You almost sound like there's nothing positive that Andreikin can do in mm. this position. But that I simply don't believe. For a start, he should put his rook either to D1 or even maybe F1. Mm -hmm. But I like rook D1. This mm -hmm. is very natural. And then he could think about uh, h4, possibly, uh, as one of the options. You think h4, g4, knight, g5? Yeah, that's what I think. Well, eventually, okay. I'm not mm -hmm. uh, necessarily, I don't necessarily claim that he has to do it mm. at once. No. But it's not just, well, of course, the, his c c6 pawn is huge. 
but also well his yeah. king is safer <laughs> than yeah, the black king I was thinking rook a d1 and king a1 to make the king even safer <laughs> in some sense <laughs> maybe you are too prophylactic <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that's possible <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no of course you can you can afford to play king a1 too the yeah. point is that is there anything positive that that black can do no that's a question um, is um, is Topalov really just going to play I don't know rook c7 king g7 or what maybe yeah. he wants rook e7 and it could be knight d6 at some point but even if you take on b5 I will just take with an a pawn I will still have an incredibly strong yeah yeah uh, pawn no, there no but that's what I mean I think Topalov has I think he's ruined his position and I think he understands it. and now he's yeah. decided that I'm actually just gonna just stay put and uh, saying that my position is reasonably solid and before white had to survive and be ready for immediate black's attack mm -hmm. now things has changed and actually he just have to wait and he also has to break down black's position mm -hmm. but you could be right that he can still go rook a d1 I do like my king a1 so I'll include that mm -hmm. and at some point he will start breaking down the black position and that could be very possible mm -hmm. so yeah, I it's think interesting how how Andreykin will play this is a new situation for him yeah. now he's uh, well is it the first time in the tournament that he has uh, advantage well sort of sizable advantage yeah I think first game was against Kramnik and that was yeah, Quite no, a lot that, that was just an, an opening. White with Anand, he was he was definitely worse mm -hmm. and drew, and, and he had had he one lost. more draw. I've forgotten. Yeah. Well, that was yes. Well, the day before yesterday against, against That was that was not too much uh, pleasant there. So no, I think no. you're right. For a start, I think he should be enjoying enjoying things because <laughs> his creativity is is working out well. Well, it's but paying of course, off today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but probably also, I mean, well, you spoke about having this um, optimistic uh, approach and. That is good, but of course, then it's extremely important that when the creativity actually works, that you also convert, because else it becomes just about uh, creating um, interesting moves, not about uh, making a result as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. despite this being interesting, should we actually go back to the tournament leader uh, Anand's games with Sweetler and see if uh, has he what have he chosen to do? Well. Believe like it or not, but he chose not to take on F2. He did not take on, on F2. That is a huge surprise. That's a huge surprise, yes. Why not, indeed? Well, he got worried about... He apparently, hmm. that, is, that is surprising. Mm -hmm. I like the concept of... But, of he, Rausen, had, but even he, so, had, he had a pawn, a clean pawn it there. It seemed to us that it was possible to play the move rook takes f2 in this position and we could only see reasonable compensation. Mm -hmm. Well, Nothing but more. also compensation. Anand has played h6 and Switler has played bishop to h4 mm -hmm. and now well, Anand seemed to be thinking here but I would assume that he wants to play queen f7 but then maybe queen d2 is a decent move. This is quite so yeah, this is quite a surprise as uh, well. Yeah. He must have seen something quite far ahead yeah. that that bothered him in this line. Sure. H6 bishop h4. Bishop h4. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's still maybe he's still better in this position. He just played queen of 7. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's brilliant. <laughs> it could what be. he's doing. Just how are you defending now? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna go? But was I mean, okay. We we were happy with rook f two, but maybe we are being a bit ignorant. What would happen in this position? Is bishop h four a bad move? What happened after, let's say, bishop to e three? Is the rook on e five just trapped then after queen f seven? Yeah, the rook on e five is definitely not not fantastic, and queen f seven. Mm -hmm. So are we seeing Indian brilliance here? <laughs> yeah. What happens after h6? Maybe, maybe simply it's a fantastic evaluation. He he saw the concept of Rausa and he decided that yes. there was quite some compensation there. Let me be on the attacking end instead. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, then maybe it's well, it is brilliant. Maybe <laughs> I'll have to apologize to Vishy and say that this was not at all worth criticizing. 
what what happens here? Let's say well, ninety five or ninety two, right? Ninety two. How are you gonna go on now? If I'm correct, then bishop c7 runs into rook e7. That, that I think is true. Yes. So how do you... Well, for a start, you can play bishop e6. And, uh, well, plan bishop uh, c7 is next. Is that really aggressive? Not especially, but... <laughs> <laughs> but Are you complaining that my, my play is not aggressive enough? <laughs> no, never. But let's say g5, is that... Am I... G5, bishop G3, and what's your point? Well, bishop C7 should be the idea. I thought I could be winning something. Maybe, but, uh, maybe a pawn. Uh, yeah, but if you were afraid of the other thing being too double-edged, yeah, then but this yes, one is even more. Not necessarily, I think. Well, yeah, let's be concrete. Make a, make a move. Are you gonna go rookie free? Or are you gonna give an exchange? No, but I will give an exchange. I'm gonna get my. I will take it and put my bishop to f5 and g6. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be some safety there. Well, you think after f3, let's say f3, bishop takes e5. Yeah. Bishop takes e5. And bishop f5. You think this is gonna be? Well, you have well queen d2 and uh, again. The oh, black squares around the black but king. king. <laughs> but they are quite safe. I do have some air. From, uh, maybe air for your king doesn't maybe sound even, too good. Maybe even too much. <laughs> Not say. really. I think king h7, bishop g6. and uh -huh. Well, I would go rook a8 and at some point I could give the exchange back. But yes. I would try something oh, like, you're let's say... You are still bad, I agree. Bishop g6, queen f5 and try to exchange something. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just trying to justify what Vichy is doing. Because... Mm -hmm. If you don't go g5 in this position, what, what, what else? else? You said bishop e6, but that seems that's a, a bit, bit slow. A bit sad, I, agree. I would say. But still, well, maybe she doesn't want to risk. Maybe he's uh, he's sort of making a conscious decision to play it safe, and yeah, then even something like bishop e6 is fine. But also, if you decide not to risk, you're actually taking a bigger risk of not uh, achieving anything. Yeah, right? that's and true. I mean. Well, you have to risk at some point, and uh, of course, points could start dropping by by a sort of accident at some point. But mm -hmm. um, well, if the time is correct here, Vichy has used really a lot of time to make this decision. But I think that's that's re reasonably justified. Yeah. It was a big decision. There was a tempting option of winning a pawn, but mm -hmm. he has actually maybe evaluated correctly that this was an even greater thing. This is still remains to be seen, but it's a well, a very advanced uh, point of view. Yeah. But you said not knight e2, but knight to h5. It has a risky look, but for both, maybe, in some for sense. Both. Well, because uh, you really have to have everything under control mm -hmm. <laughs> to play g5 here. Yeah. G5 with, uh, with those three pieces is, is, over Are you there. really going <laughs> to... Are you going to go g5 here? Yeah. Well, well, that's the principal move that we should look at. This is analysis, so you can play g5, mm -hmm. but... After bishop g3? And you're saying after bishop g3? Well, bishop c7 could be is very strong. Is the move. But even... Why is this clear at all? Something like this. I don't get the, the, the point of uh, this at all, actually. No. I mean, g5, bishop g3. Not going to take on d4, are you? I wouldn't think so. No, here I Maybe think... Maybe here you could play something some like bishop f5. Mm -hmm. and, and just... Uh, you're going to go mm -hmm. back like this and poke the knight. But it's a very difficult position. Well, complicated, you mean? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the computer evaluation still s sort of saying black has a considerable edge here. Yeah, well, knight h5, uh, it also looks scary for white to make a move like that. Very and much that's so. mainly because... And g5... This is not going to work, I assume. But even that, f for a human, f2 is hanging, but somehow that feels like oh, a distraction. Oh, but I think just take on g5, rook g5, and king h8. <coughs> okay. And, uh, How are you going to follow up? It's impossible, well, probably. Some tactics like this, but, but you, maybe if you don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll play bishop f5. <laughs> bishop f5, yeah, that, that looks rather solid. And, uh, yeah, well, sure. No, uh, Mm -hmm. Yes. Now this 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 kind of this is very interesting and 
No, it almost, uh, well, it almost felt like a pity that Vishy didn't go for this very straightforward line with r- Rook takes f2, where yeah, <laughs> it was very interesting to see what Svidler has, has uh, planned there. Uh, well, he will tell us in the press conference. <laughs> yes, I think so, yes. Uh, but, um, but no, this could be a very classy decision from Vishy, or it could also be that he's underplaying a good position. Mm-hmm. And it's... That Either way, I think it, it, it's not reasonable to be harsh because this could be a very interesting practical uh, decision. I would say that knight e2 looks like a, a very interesting move and if he's going to go g5 there, it's going to be interesting because if he doesn't go g5, it starts, fizz- loses, it starts fizzling yes. in some sense. Uh, well, Somehow he loses his, uh, his, his advantage, let's yes, say, the momentum yes. he loses. Well, what we maybe should point out is that after g5, bishop g3, bishop c7... Mm-hmm. At least as far as I can see, he's got to basically give up an exchange because the only square for the rook is e3. And after this move, rook g3 is the only move. Yes. But Queen then check, two. I guess. Let's put it here. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Then bishop f5. Somehow, I think again the bishop will stand somewhere around g6 and it's going to be. I think also after well king h1 instead of bishop f5. Yeah, you could have had a uh, rook e8 maybe. Sure, g3 is hanging yeah, as yeah, well. Well, that's an argument for putting the king, king h2. h2 but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so no, this is yeah, this but is very basically, and well, uh, Vichy seems to have to follow it up with g5 if he wants to fight for the we big advantage. I think early on, I was also mentioning that well, the players are quite good friends. We are both playing in Baden-Baden and I had some pleasant dinners together. But uh, it's not exactly oh. a friendly game, I think. No, but uh, that it shouldn't be. No, no. But I think we have action in all the three other games, actually. So should we leave Arnold and Switler alone with their complications? Yeah, yeah. For, for, for a bit. We should go and check out the um, Karyakin Ronin. Let's do that, because... Is this, well, this is, you could argue, the most quiet game of the round. Um, yes, but even so, it's not uh, like nothing is happening there exactly either. I think knight c4 was the last move, and I'm afraid I said that bishop f2 and knight c4 was the possible moves. But Kayakin put his bishop on f4, mm-hmm. and now c5 happened, and he played b5. Kayakin is playing it quite ambitiously. I think he's playing like uh, I'm still slightly better kind of style. Would you think so? Well, I think so. Or maybe he's... You think just that he thought the other one is not uh, no, safe enough? No, maybe he simply thought that the other one is not uh, safe yeah, enough. I'm not sure that right. b5 is an active yeah. move. It could also be no. just... No, no, no. So knight d6, rook a8, rook a8, rook b1. Maybe he thinks he thinks it's simply objectively the best way to play. Yeah. Well, when the queen goes away, he would consider... Well, then he would like to take on d6 and put a knight on c4. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just... Yeah, he just took on a8 twice, right? Mm-hmm. No, uh, yeah, he took on a8, mm-hmm. took back, and then rook b1. But, okay, this I didn't notice, but you can actually get to a2, for instance. Yes, what, what that happens too. after rook a2? Is uh, something we... No, uh, Aronian just played b6. Uh-huh. Well, I think maybe, maybe rook a2, rook b2, simply. What was the problem with that? Maybe there's no problem. You could be right. I was even thinking a move like queen b3 could also be possible. Well, b6 is good in a way mm-hmm. that... Well, so b6 is just keeping... Well, he keeps making his position, you would say, almost healthy uh, in a way. And it's... Well, what is Kayakin going to do next? Yeah. Do you think the move c4 at some point will be a threat? Somehow By black? Yeah, making well, b5 a weakness, well, rook a5 think could be next. At least not, not very soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's saying. what I think. Uh-huh. Okay. But I think that b6 is a nice move as it blocks b5. b5 mm-hmm. is, well, it's not a strength, it's a weakness. Yeah. That, that much I think well, is, I is clear. At least right now. Some kind of dream scenario, you're going to take on d6 and put a knight on c4, but it seems but a little sta- stale like and a dream. And also, actually, I just noticed now, but have a look at the time. Yeah. Karyakin is down to 24 minutes. It's not unseen in this tournament. He's been using quite a lot of time but in his games. But here... But he's 
it's actually getting out of hand for kayaking. Yeah. At least in a moderate sense, I would say. And I was about to suggest a move Queen B3, but then I think C4 at least starts <laughs> having a bit of relevance. <laughs> well, you managed to find one way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I think that uh, for Karyakin it's already not such an easy task to find uh, to find a good move in this position. Oh, so yes. it's it's fine enough he's taking his time, but somehow... What about Queen D3, for instance? <laughs> you really want to make C4 work? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I want to take on D6 and play Knight C4. Or, well, I'm pessimistic about my chances mm -hmm. here as well, so I, I just want to survive. Mm -hmm, I, I see. I could even consider queen d5 at some point. Well, I think queen d3, or rook a2, or rook a4. I'm not completely sure what, what is it that you're planning. Me neither. The point is that, yes, uh, if you want to take control of c4, why don't I just play rook a4 there? And if I'm drastic and I play c4 in this position, mm. why is that bad? Well, maybe g6. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, yeah. this diagonal yeah, is nice. Yeah, and also, it's just a weak pawn here. So. No, maybe at some point you want to give away your bishop, I don't know. Yeah, but well, I will have to, but black is just pleasantly better in this situation, yeah. right? it could be too little. Yeah, but I still think that Kayakin, I mean, around here or something like this, he should have settled for something where he was just slightly, slightly worse. Well, basically not even worse. I no. think he was... He yeah, this was the position where he still yeah. was uh, But fine. here he's, he is about... He's drifting. His clock is going... Well, I think we sort of debated that scenario, that if he keeps being ambitious and his clock will lower and such, things could actually just get worse. And mm -hmm. I think they have... They just keep getting worse for him. It's probably still defensible. But I think... This is very unpleasant. Look mm -hmm. at the clock timings. He has 14 moves left to make in 22 minutes. And no, that's of course not critical. But no, but I it's not an easy position to make moves in. That's the biggest problem with yeah. it. And I like uh, Aronian's b6. He yeah, sort of, yeah. well, he invites uh, uh, Karyakin to make a, a useful move. Just, just playing healthy chess, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think this is very tough for Karyakin. And this also. Well, this could be very dramatic in in the sense that well, Kayakin is going to be quite out of it basically. And well, should uh, he Aronian lose? will move up the standings. Mm -hmm. Maybe even well share the lead before he's playing his uh, direct uh, sort of rival Anan tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that could this happen. This could be could be very interesting. Uh, should we? Should we have a look at uh, Andrei Kintapalov? We, we can do that for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And we should also remind you that uh, should you have any comments or questions, you're very welcome to to post on Twitter and use hashtag candidates2014. So what is... Rook 81 happened? happened. Mm -hmm. just, just as I... As you expected, but I think... Well, I said that Topalov will just stand still. And he's still doing that, but he's played the move King F8. He wants to play g4. Maybe <laughs> actually he thinks that's threatening g4. At least it, he made his opponent believe it because uh, he has played the move rook h to but f1. Rook h to f1 is not uh, necessarily a defensive move, I think. It could also be a move that prepares um, well, yeah. the knight retreat mm -hmm. uh, and sure. and f3 sure, potentially sure. even. I don't know if, if that's uh, something, but at least... Yeah, I think you, you could very much be right there. But King F8 is uh, well, a logical move. It's nice for black too. But where is it going further? <laughs> That's another no, question. No, I think Topalov has no choice but to stand there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to stand there and he's, uh, he's actually a pawn down simply in this position. That's not, That's not a, a dream scenario. For there me. is a pair of bishops and, and uh, well, a nice knight. I mean, he does have... He does actually have nice squares for basically all his major pieces. Mm -hmm. And, well, when you start breaking down a position like this, things will happen, of course. But even so, this is... Uh, no, this, this game has turned around amazingly. Or maybe we, uh, I simply called it wrong, but I still think the opening looked uh, 
pretty bad from uh, Andrei's side. And I'm, I think that's I'm just objective. I'm completely sure that Topalov was very optimistic about his position. Well, that you can see from the way he treated the yeah, position. Yeah, he treated it like he, well, that's how he plays, but still he's playing it like he was uh, more or less winning in some sense. Mm -hmm. No, this is... Well, what I like, for instance, well, let's say uh, Topalov just makes uh, some sort of uh, rook c7 move. Uh, well, it's not clear to... What what else he could do? Let's yeah. say he plays rook c7 and well, uh, he played, he played king, king g7. Okay, well at least yeah. he is doing what he's what is probably his best chance. He's waiting. Yeah, he's just waiting mm -hmm. and uh, sort of uh, yeah, telling Andrei, "Well, it's your move." Mm -hmm. But no, there is definitely some work. But, um, I was about to suggest knight g1, but the, no, maybe knight see, g1 is actually not We can uh, see a tweet from Tane Hargunani. Uh, we may just have all four decisive games today. Yeah, that could yes, happen. Yes, that could happen. That could be quite... That would be the first day. <laughs> but yes. at least the, the yeah, all the four games are very exciting at the moment. Already we 24 games played in the tournament so far with, I think, 10 decisive results. Mm -hmm, that is I already, think. I mean, a huge percentage, actually. A huge percentage, so yes. I think last time the tournament was seen as being very com uh, combative, but I think this time even more so uh, mm -hmm. in some sense. Well, and Reikin just, ma just made King A1, which you liked so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... You respect I, that. I'm so proud. <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a nice move. I mean, why not have the King on A1 instead of on, on A2? Yeah, that's, and, that's, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, no, I think... I remember once in my... In my kind of youth, I had a playoff in the for the Danish championship, and I played King B1 to A1, and Chipov was sort of praising me on some Russian chess side, and I, I was. And you were very proud. I was <laughs> very, very proud. Yes, yes. So that brings back uh, good memories. Okay. Okay. But it's been like 15 years, maybe. Well, I, I still you still remember. Still remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a King A1 is a nice move, and well, uh, what it does, what is very positive from the White's point of view is that uh, now d5 becomes uh, a real weakness as before. Well, even after knight e2 or knight b3, white could never really take it because yeah. bishop e6 would come and there will be some sort of um, pin. But now that's gone. I still think he's... I was about to say he's not really going to do anything aggressive, but, but it could actually be that also he has this idea of playing let's say knight e2 and then h4 and when g4 comes you jump to f4. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think, but I think there is plenty of aggressive yeah. things he can do. Yeah, maybe, uh, right, uh, simply Topalov has a, plenty. you think he has just a bad position basically, mm -hmm. that, that's what you're saying. Yes. Yep, that sounds right. Okay, okay. King e1 is, is, is a nice positional move which Let's have a look actually at the Swidler against Anna because Things are happening a bit there, and maybe Anna didn't go for the most ambitious choice, I would say. Mm -hmm. It I does seem like, like it. We left you off in, in this position. Anna played, he didn't take the pawn because White had considerate compensation there. He went for something very straightforward and attacked f2. Knight h5 happened, and here we thought, is he actually going to go bishop sorry g5 followed by bishop c7 but well that was definitely the most ambitious way to do it and after g5 bishop g3 bishop c7 there was probably nothing better than giving up the exchange no we thought something like this and we mm. were thinking that you can't really take on g5 and after bishop back here bishop to c7 no well, it seems that what Vishy did uh, is simply... But if you just go away with the rook here... Not best. I'd, is that so bad? Uh, you think... Well, rookie uh, rook one that we were discussing. I mean, this is not... It doesn't strike me as very clear, at least. Mm -hmm. Rookie one. Yeah, may maybe simply you shouldn't play bishop c7 in this position, but actually just play bishop f5. Mm -hmm. And, uh, But... Let's return a bit to what actually has been played. He's played bishop e6 and rook e3 has happened. Yeah. Well, rook f3 is not a threat. So what's what it's would not. be... Well, it's a bit hard to say. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. <I was> <laughs> if I play king h7, it will not be a threat, yes. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but, um, sure. No, I was thinking, is Rook A8 the move here in this position? Well, Rook A8, but it really looks yeah. quite balanced mm -hmm. at the moment. It seems that Vichy has has wasted some some of his I would best so options. As well. Still, though, the bishop on H4 and the knight on H5, it is a bit sort of... Uh, well, badly placed, you mean? Yes. So, a move like... King h7, for instance. I, I would really be happy to get in rook e8, bishop f5, and I would continue putting some pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, king h7 looks like a nice, also preventive move. Then rook f3 is uh, not yeah, happening. You, well, uh, yeah, you, that is a nice tactical bonus, you can say. And then Look, Vichy is sh somehow shaking his head. Do you think there's something he missed? Yeah. Do you think he realizes well, maybe that he's, ha he's having some regrets and maybe also, well, it's not unlikely he got very excited at some point and thought I'm I'm gonna win this 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 game and, and things are starting to look mm -hmm. look great for me and suddenly well, this momentum has changed. Not as much anymore. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Maybe Spitler put up quite quite good resistance. No, but also, well, uh, it would have been really interesting to see what. They would have done after rook takes f2 that he didn't yeah. take the spawn well, is i think uh, yep. well jonathan rausen tweeted uh, the concept and uh, we can have a debate about this being a healthy extra pawn or still being uh, very defensible Vichy he just played, played bishop d8, bishop to d8. Mm -hmm. yeah it looks like he's trying to swap down some pieces but what happens then rook f3 mm -hmm. is he gonna give up the queen but it was well. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what is he doing after Rook F3? There is a new tweet from Greg Berezhnev. Which of the candidates has the best head-to-head -head against Magnus, and is that likely to affect their mindset in candidates? You should know, Peter. <laughs> I don't think it will affect their mindset in the candidates, because... Well, you're playing somebody else, and I mean, if you have a good score against Magnus or a bad score against Magnus, still your best chance is to get to play him, actually. Mm -hmm. So I, th I don't think so in a direct sense. Then, actually, embarrassingly enough, I don't know their personal scores with well, Magnus, but some of them could easily have a good score. But it also depends on when do we start counting. I mean, Magnus was around since he was 13. Uh, and I think also, well, Anand had a pretty positive score against Magnus before the um, their World Championship match, but his wins was based on rather long back uh, in some sense, and I would, wouldn't be surprised if some of the other players would have a, a positive score in mm -hmm. that sense. I think uh, I'm lately sure, Svidler has had uh, yeah. a, well, a decent score, at least as sure. compared to many others. Well, for instance, Aronian has actually knocked Magnus out of, uh, I think, even two World Championship cycles, but we are talking about a uh, a very young Magnus. I think he knocked him out in the Tripoli World Championship and then later in the candidate matches in would be even Lister, I think. Lister or Huntiman since I've actually forgotten mm -hmm. where that is. So it de it depends a bit on, on how you will calculate these things. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, to be honest, none of them has any thoughts about Magnus. I think they, mm. they have enough on their plate uh, right here. But don't you think, uh, going back to, to the game, that Vichy is playing this almost as his worse? <laughs> yeah. I well, I don't really understand because, well, the bishop on b6 was attacking the d4 pawn. Yeah. And you think he's trying to... He's actually thinks White has a huge initiative and he's managing to defend against it. Well, I can't rule that out because well, otherwise, how can you explain? Just debate this queen sacrifice mm -hmm. or uh, queen loss. Uh. <laughs> What's the material score? It's equal. Well, I mean, equal in pawns. Is there any way he could dream on playing on in this position? Probably not. I I you doubt think Queen F3 is something that he's considering? I, I mean, well, as a commentator, you have suggested these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you get in some well, kind of stability and uh, yes. let's say Rook F7, Bishop D7, Rook F8, maybe things will start dropping. But you think that you really think Black has potential to be better here? 
Well, I, I, I well, wouldn't be pawn, surprised. If the pawn starts dropping. Yeah. I, I mean, normally the queen should do something dominating, but I don't see mm -hmm. see that exactly. This looks more like a well, yeah. a decent position for both. But yeah, to yeah. say that, I, I uh, would be surprised if it uh, suddenly turns yeah. out spectacular. And what happens after? Let's see. Well, in this position after bishop d8, what happens just after bishop takes d8? F2 is hanging. That doesn't matter. It uh, does matter. It does, does matter. matter. Ah, that's lot. the point. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Sorry about so that. Yes, so. And, mm -hmm. and bishop g3 is. Uh, bishop g3 is. Uh, well, a bit passive, you could yeah. argue. So basically, Vishiman just uh, to achieve what g5 would do, but just without playing g5. Not quite. I think g5 somehow also made the knight more stock and such. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, it could be that we were influenced the computer showing something very aggressive. Well, decisive, but you could say. Well, uh, more Swidler decisive. must be thinking about rook f3. Yeah. And you really think Swid his idea is to play queen e8 in this position? No. Well, now that we have discussed this position after queen takes f3, I have, uh, well, yeah, I like this, but, well, I don't think that uh, Vichy could be better objectively. No. Although it could look like a nice uh, structure for him. Well, the pawns are, yeah, the pawns are not beautiful, white pawns. So king I mean. d2 would be, uh, I mean, let's be a bit uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. And so then we think it's probably rook f7. Mm -hmm. Something like that, yes. Yeah. I, could white be doomed to some kind of passivity? Maybe queen b3 is a move, and after rook f8. Ah, oh, now this is where the bishop takes h3. Oh. Queen b3 is... Uh, well, let's say knight g3. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. actually going to take on f3 here? I think there is... Even if you put the bishop back on c8... No. Uh, maybe I'm not doing it very well for black here. No, but I, th I, I think uh, black is... <coughs> black is not worse. But I don't believe that he has realistic chances for a win. It's no, more or less... That could be. It's more or less balanced, but it's interesting. If he takes on f3, that's uh, a very interesting approach uh, to this position, at least. Oh, so it will be interesting to see what we see. I mean, let's assume this game could actually fizzle out to a draw. Yeah. Will Wishy think that he blew some chance here, or would he think that actually Swidler had uh, serious compensation for, for, mm -hmm. for a pawn, for instance? And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, psychologically, it could have some impact on uh, sort of before tomorrow's uh, game in a way. Okay, Let's say Ruger just played Ruger Ruger played. Let's see if if Swidler is he gonna uh, no. What what is Vishy going to do? Is he going to take on f3 quickly, or if or or he's going to go for queen e8? Yeah, you think he is actually gonna do it? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We should leave. Uh, yeah, I think this so guarantees there will be action when we get back. So yeah, I think so. On all four boards, it seems. So okay. we will go for a short break and uh, we'll be back soon. See you then. Shakhmir Mamidyarov and Veselin Topolov won their games against Peter Svidla and Vladimir Kramnik in round 6 of Candidates Tournament. The other two games, Vishunatan Anand Sergei Karyakin and Levon Aronian Dmitry Andreykin, were drawn. Vishunatan Anand had white against Sergei Karyakin. Anand confidently entered the famous endgame blitzing out the first 20 moves. 
Karyakin was slower, as he tried to recollect the exact preparation. He placed his pieces on optimal squares, and White soon realized that there is no way to make progress. Draw was signed on move 33. Huge tension was felt in the air ahead of the game between Veselin Topolov and Vladimir Kramnik, their first classical since 2008. Somehow they kept missing each other in the past six years, with exception of the quick games and Melody Amba events. The game started as a Queen's Gambit declined, where Topalov introduced a novelty. Kramnik confessed at the press conference that he was afraid of computer preparation and decided to play more solid. However, his opponent made all the best moves and duly converted the advantage to get a full point. Peter Svidla started with a Dutch defense, an opening that he had planned to introduce during this event. Shahriar Mamidyarov was not confused and went for a rich game. Svidla believed that Black emerged with a good position from the opening, having achieved everything that he had hoped for. But then, as he said at the press conference, his brain stopped working for about 20 minutes and his position collapsed in just a few moves. Mamidyarov didn't take long to conclude the game. The game between Levon Aronian and Mintri Andrekin started calm, but then White unbalanced the play by sacrificing two pieces for a rook and a pawn. Cracking under pressure, Black was forced to give the material back and transpose into an endgame where White had an extra pawn, the passer, on the A-file. But then Aronian rushed to exchange a strong bishop for his opponent's knight, probably considering the rook endgame easily winning. However, it turned out that the outcome was unclear and the game was drawn on move 48. After six rounds, Anand stays on top with four points, while Aronian is close behind with three and a half. Levin Oronian started to play chess when he was nine, and already by the age of 12 he was a world junior champion. He achieved numerous victories in junior tournaments, and the most significant was success at the Goa 2002 tournament when Levon became world under 20 champion. By this time his family had moved from Armenia to Germany, and to this day Oronian shares his time between these two countries. The title of chess prince gave the Grand Master confidence in his career and convinced him in the choice of his profession. By the mid-2000s, Aronian had begun harvesting his first big successes in the international arena. The first phase of this part of his career culminated with a win at the World Cup in Kanti Mansisk in 2005. The Armenian Grand Master then earned the opportunity to take part in the candidate cycle. He was soon among the chess elite, his track record boasts first places in the strongest tournaments of our time, Week Anze, Linares, the Tal Memorial and Bilbao. In 2009, Levin presaged his greatness by winning the FIDE Grand Prix series. Aronian is a great team player. For many years he has led the Armenian national team and has presided over three team victories at chess Olympiads and once at the World Team Championships. Aronian is a past master of the rapid game and has scored repeated victories in Monaco and Mainz. As of the 1st of March 2014, Aronian's rating climbed to a personal record of 2,830. For many years, this grandmaster has held the number two spot in the world rankings and world champion Magnus Carlsen names Levin his biggest threat. back and there is a uh, very exciting action in all four games at the moment but uh, most likely we will start with uh, Andrekin's game against Topalov where the Russian player today is 
really playing in uh, a very impressive way. Very much so. Uh, I think basically, I think I wrote him off after half an hour of play, but uh, yeah, an hour <laughs> later he early. seemed to have uh, sort of created some kind of masterpiece. And uh, well, right now, I think we left you last time with the move King A1, and uh, at least I was praising that. But Topalov played Bishop F8, and then happened Knight E2, which mm -hmm. is attacking the pawn on d5, and Topalov has defended it with the rook on d8. And to be honest, I don't see what happens after h4 in this position. Is that the, the move for white? Isn't well, it's not the only move for white. But, but, but doesn't it, I mean, isn't it more or less a decisive breakthrough, let's say h4? And the point is that after g4, you can interpolate this move with the, mm -hmm. I assume, deadly th threat of taking here. And uh, it's not also, this one is hanging, and when I start looking at it, I guess c7 as well. This looks like... Uh, well, it looks like uh, black's I position mean, is completely falling apart yeah. at the moment. And that's, it's uh, well, <laughs> this is really... <laughs> yeah, it seems very much like it. And mm, yeah, this is... Uh, an it's not like even a win here would uh, make Andraikin the favorite in the tournament, but it no, would of course no. be a, a huge uh, psychological boost for him. And also, I think so. well, I think it might be good for Andraikin, but Primarily from a tournament point of view, it's actually horrible for Tupalo. It is, it is. Okay, well, we see that. Yeah. <laughs> the computer evaluation is 3.57. Wow. That is quite a surprise. Yeah. Well, uh, well, that uh, is, I think it has to be h4. I'm surprised that h4 is so good, but I think h4 simply completely breaks down mm -hmm. Black's position. Well, this is the kind of position where Black simply doesn't manage to hold anymore he H4, has too H4, many it's so ter i mean what are you what are you doing after it's not like the position is hanging on only h4 being available but no. i think it's just maybe you will play bishop f5 for instance trying well to to yeah, you know but strengthen but somehow but but even then bishop d3 for instance and uh, yeah bishop d3 it's hasn't of course the c6 pawn has been loose but I would assume that this followed by a three is also going to be, yes. I think, simply, well, Topalov's position is a ruin. This will happen to Topalov now, and then Topalov goes forward extremely aggressively, mm -hmm. and that's why at some point he was a very beloved player and also was quite successful. He's going to go forward and uh, attack a lot. Yes. And the price is that when you lose, things can look rather silly, and that's what we're going to see today. But well, uh, this g5, h5 was terrible. That was the way to, to ruin his position. Yeah, Although, uh, but at that the, point, it, w it uh, was uh, a promising at position. At that point, we already started to say, to s sort of debate, how are you going to do with it uh, with black? First, we thought black is playing an aggressive and impressive game. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, okay. h4 and has come. Just, and I think, just, just did a I think well. this is going to collapse, simply. And well, that's an easy prediction to, s to say. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes you have an easy that. time uh, here. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, no, this is exciting, but there is a lot of stuff happening in the other game. Should we actually try to, to go on to, to them? Because at least from a sporting perspective, I think this game is just uh, just decided simply. Yeah, it looks that like, well, we will keep an eye on it for, for uh, sure, if, if for sure. something happens. But at the moment, should we see Kramnik Mamajarov? Let's, let's, we haven't let's have looked have at, at it for that. a while. It's, it's been a while, yes. And, uh, well, that also looked very promising for White a couple of moves ago. Yeah, I think we were in this position and we thought White has a considerable edge. But actually something very exciting is happening at the board right now. So let's uh, more or less fast forward to that. Rook b2 happened, Kramnik doubles in the b line, knight e6, rook b1, knight g7. Well, this is sort of intending to f5, but Kramnik just played g4. I think actually from a strategical point of view, Kramnik has a fantastic position. Yeah, but g4 here. is the way to play this position, it's I think. It's very aggressive, but also he really has everything under control. But also, he it can prevents afford. the knight from so coming to f5, for went king g8, queen f4, king f7, back and forth, like nothing is happening. But uh, something seems to be happening, and Kramnik has played the move e4, mm -hmm. and somehow... Well, Kramnik is playing it like in sort of one logical motion, like everything is, is planned and under control. And maybe it is, but... Well, what you, happens you just after tell me what, what happens when he takes the pawn? I think he wants to play d5. That, again, would be in the spirit of sort mm -hmm. of, uh, of if, things. Of what he's doing, yes. d5 would very much be in the spirit. And now the point would be <coughs> that, let's say, if you play queen c5, 
Uh, well, at times I could have rook b7, but not here. So let's say I play knight takes e4 knight here. Knight takes e4 mm -hmm. looks logical. Because f6 is hanging. Yeah, so, and queen d4, there is knight d6 check resigns. Yes, yes. Well, could also be rook b7 resigns. But, so. well, <laughs> but anything yeah. already. Yeah. So... Now, I queen c5, knight d4 is just uh, very, very bad. How bad seems. is something like this? Probably it is very bad, because, for instance, here, rook b7 is over. Mm -hmm. So, e4, it looks... No, I think well, after d5 oh, you have... No, you take on e4 now, and after d5 you play queen d6. That is something that is, uh, well, uh, much more concrete for black. Yeah. Because, well... b7 is winning some kind of material. Mm -hmm. But I... Not sure how much it is. So well, takes takes, and rook e seven. And do you mean queen takes d six, rook d six? Of and course, and yes. But this is this is not what you want. Maybe you are actually still better, or maybe you are worse. Yeah, this is the kind of position that could go either way. Uh, yeah, as after rook b six. Exactly. Now there is rook b six, and things are getting out of hand. It could easily be that knight e four is good enough, but I think has gotten complex and. I think Kramnik wants to avoid complex here, but it looks, I mean, it looks like Kramnik is just crushing through today. So this is, it's actually a bit strange in the mm -hmm. sense that Kramnik had a almost traumatic loss to Topalov, and it seems like he's recovering well, while the loss seems to have uh, But what are you suggesting for him to do after d takes c4, ah, d5, king, queen d6? You want a... Yes, I want a concrete. <laughs> <laughs> you want, don't want me just to sit on top. No, no. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's worse. <laughs> it could also be that Kramnik has uh, hurried with uh, playing uh, e4. But, uh, well, when... I would still think that when Mohamed Yar is thinking so hard, there is some kind of very concrete problem with it. What could the options be? I mean, d5 looks so obvious. Well, d5 is obvious uh, as long as it works, but it, yes, if it doesn't yes. uh, bring anything special, then hmm. if I what else could that be? Interpolate taking on g7, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. It could also be that he simply wants to play d5, queen d6, and, well, go for something like queen e3 here. You're always going to have terrific compensation obviously but let's say queen d7 and suddenly <laughs> well uh, it's still i'm fighting back a bit a bit yeah no i no i i wouldn't be so uh, so impressed with e4 actually okay. here as i think well he could have made a number of useful moves here i don't think but that maybe he was running out of them yet no but As also things are coming a bit to a halt in some sense. I mean, either you play it like you're winning instantly, mm -hmm. but of course it would be best if you were, that was <laughs> the case as well, of course. But yeah, I understand you can play f3 and king f2 here and have everything under control, but you also have to strike at some point, and apparently Kramnik thought now was the case. But it's true, e4 takes d5, queen d6... I can't with conviction say that I, I see a, a strong a clear. Mm -hmm. I think that after queen e3, queen d7, as you said, even something like bishop, oops, there's a pawn hanging on g4. Yeah, yeah, right? that's Actually, one point. No, but look at no. this position without uh, being, uh, well, you know, prejudiced. Yeah, then it's a complete mess to me. Exactly. Well, um, we just had this uh, position with uh, simply with knight c3 and yeah. total, um, well, yeah. control for white. And but is there any other move than d5? It's very hard to see what that should be, in my opinion. Do you think Ramnik could think that this endgame is good for him? The one that we discussed in the very beginning. You're saying, like, to play like this and give a check. Mm -hmm. Takes, takes, rook e7. Takes, takes, bishop g7. I would be surprised if this is what Kramnik wants. Yeah, king f7 exists here also, just yeah. to push this bishop a bit to, to h6 and then rook b6, right? 
Well, he's not going to be worse here. A still knight c3 out is of very good. And everything. No, it looks like to me like he's not going to take an e4. Okay, well then, well, then that was then it's okay, really interesting. What what is it that we're missing? I'm apparently trying to read hand signals. Well, I got it right actually. Yes, yeah. 96. 96. Hmm, that's okay. That well, it's going to be interesting to know in the press conference what was it that yeah. that that he didn't like. But 96. Okay, 96 is also <coughs> a decent move, of course. But, well, that means that he's not going to take on e4 <laughs> in the nearest future. He just, uh, well, there... That could be exchange sacrifices as well. Mm. But Queen e3 must be the move. Let's say, till this point, I think it's basically been a one-way street. Kramnik mm -hmm. has been positionally outplaying his opponent. Mm -hmm. But now things have gotten out of hand. And this is where Mamed Yarov really is a great. I mean, of course, Mamedyarov is great in a number of ways, but yes. I think basically in complex chess positions, he, he could be equal to Kramnik. Kramnik has a nice logical style uh, and mm -hmm. uh, is a, an amazing uh, player in a, in a number of ways, but this is more or less, it could easily turn into a street fight. And I think there, I mean, Mamedyarov... But, but my point would be that Kramnik was the one who provoked this. So he must be very confident in his chances. He could have taken his time yeah. and not played e4 still. I don't think it was critical it's not yet. A, yeah, but again, provoked it or, well, or missed it. Or we can yeah. uh, start. He could have missed something. Yeah. Uh, no. 96? Maybe he thought he was not getting anywhere, but it doesn't sound extremely likely well, to me. Well, of course, it's a practical decision uh, from Kramnik's perspective. If we have in mind that well, Mamedyarov is getting a bit low on time, uh, it's not uh, anything uh, decisive yet, but still. Mm -hmm. So. But actually, after Queen e3, maybe there is an amazing move for Black. Yeah. So. Uh, well, there is actually the possibility of Knight c5 here. Knight c5. If, if you take it, then d4, and things get out. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that's Mamedyarov choice. Yeah, uh, Knight c5 is a beautiful and, uh, move. Yeah, this is I. This could go wrong for Kramnik simply. As well. Yeah, but actually, we have so much action going on. We, mm -hmm. we might have to switch the games, despite that it would be tempting to stay with uh, either of them until yeah. it finishes. I think. But we will uh, check what is happening in Swidler and uh, now okay. as. Um, yeah, as 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 Vichy, he has taken on F three. Yeah, I think he took on F three when we left you on break. Actually, we have Anand in the picture. He's having a look at Kramnik's position. Mm -hmm. So. And well, let's see, take on f3, d3, bishop h4. Mm -hmm. Swidler played king g2. Well, it seems all very logical. King f7, rook c1, rook f8, rook c3, bishop g5, knight g3, rook e7. We have also a tweet from Erwin Lampi. Uh, he's wondering what Vichy missed. Can't imagine he would consciously go for this queen sacrifice instead of rook f2. Well, he probably did. Well, he was thinking so yeah. much at that point. There was something well, yeah, that there was he disliked. There was this rouse on pawn sacrifice. But well, not pawn. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, pawn. Yeah, pawn loss. So pawn, pawn loss. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that. No, no. It was a creative effort by rouse It wasn't that rouse and blundered a pawn. Not at all. Um, but yeah, I'm also puzzled in some sense. Oh, something has happened. Topalov has just resigned. I think. Okay. Uh, should we just very briefly have yeah, a look let's, at that board? Uh, let's have a look at that board. What a fantastic effort by um, by Well, Andrekin, Andrekin did, did and very uh, well today. Yeah, so far not much fun for Andrekin. Then he plays a, a fantastic game, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Definitely. it shows why he why he's here. Actually, he did qualify from the World Cup, and mm -hmm. I think had a, showed some sp sp spectacular sporting qualities. And well, he's just shown that and to, today. Yeah, and today so he did very well. Yeah. Uh, so, but actually, let let's go back to. Well, sweet learner. Actually, Kayakin Aronian, can we just pass by that game? Because I think actually even there there is uh, quite some some important developments also for the for the tournament standings. Mm -hmm. um, this is well, we're down to three games, but a lot of action there. I think we left you after B6, and we thought that this is a very tough spot for for Kayakin to to defend. But he did something. Well, I was criticizing him for being overly aggressive. But he kept uh, being aggressive. He played e5, and now knight c4, queen e4, rook a4 happened, then rook c1, h6, 
h4, knight bd2, c4, queen d7. And I, uh, I really don't know. Could this be, could it still be quite better for Aronian, or has things gotten out of hand for, for him? Maybe even bishop e3 is possible here. What do you think? Well, I, I, I still think it's fine for Aronian, yeah, to be honest. Uh, he's Kayakan is down to, to seven minutes for, he's very much ahead on time. for nine moves. It's still, but it's, an, it's a very important moment for, for Aronian. I mean, would he win and catch up with Anand before they play tomorrow? I mean, that would uh, for sure lower the pressure on him. Uh, if he's still trailing Anand and... Uh, a draw would mean Anand keeps his lead and keeps the better tiebreak. It's going to be more complex for okay, him. Okay, actually the press conference is about to begin, so we will uh, have a short break, but we'll keep an eye on the games yeah, for you. I as, think as we will be back relatively yeah. soon, because I a lot is happening today. Definitely, so, we, will, uh, we, we will do that. So okay, see, see, you, see soon. you very soon. Round of the FIDE uh, candidates tournament. Uh, Dmitry Andreykin won against... Please tell us about what happened in the game. Uh, the move uh, bishop g5, I was preparing against uh, Vladimir Kramnik and Dortmund. He played g6 and then he, um, and he lost in this game. I think that the move uh, bishop e7 is more logical because uh, black is just de developing here. I think uh, black has no problem special problems here. Вот я думаю, что здесь первый ключевой момент. The first key moment is here in this position. для черных. Также у меня лишняя пешка, но здесь все-таки у черных достаточная игровая компенсация, как мне кажется. Knight c5 is safer for black. Uh, although white has extra pawn, uh, the black has enough compensation. Но здесь такой получился несколько более сложный вариант. This uh, line is uh, more complex. Конечно, белые не отдают пешку обратно. c6 получается очень сильная пешка, но белые без рокировки. Of course, white doesn't give a pawn back. Uh, the pawn c6 is quite strong, but still um, white doesn't manage to make castle. To castle. Вот здесь можно было сразу вести края на c1, не играет роль. Here, why could uh, move queen c1 at once, but I think it uh, doesn't matter much. Maybe it's stronger. Maybe it's stronger. Bishop b5. Yeah, queen c1 is strong. Maybe queen c1 is stronger, sorry. No doubt, this is a bad, конечно, не очень хороший ход. G5 is not a very good move. Потому что, видимо, Веселин хотел сразу здесь создать контр-игру. Maybe Veselin wanted to create a counterplay at once, no, immediately. С другой стороны, не совсем понятно, что делать черным. Можно, конечно, было получить позицию гораздо лучше, чем в партии. But otherwise, uh, one uh, is not sure about uh, the chances for black to get a better position. Но у белых все равно сохраняется лишняя пешка, поэтому... But still, a white maintains extra pawn. Здесь, наверное, перевес уже у белых. I think the white has an edge here. Вот, а здесь находится ход король c1, и теперь... Here white, white finds a move uh, queen c1. В случае g4 можно взять взять и не спеша пойти королем дальше. And in case of g4, white can just uh, move uh, its queen further. King. Ну и King, здесь, sorry. видимо, черные не должны долго продержаться, потому что подключается вторая ладья. And here the position of a black must fall somehow because the second rook uh, comes into a game. Now this is a phase of realization. Ну как-то так даже неожиданно быстро получилось, что черный сделал еще несколько не очень удачных ходов и конь на e2 перешел с темпом. 
Black made a couple of uh, not very successful moves, and the knight moved to e2 with tempo. Ну последний нюанс это h4 после чего королевский фланг черных кружится. The last uh, nuance is h4, after which the king sides of black's king side is crushing. Uh, Veselin, what about you and uh, what happened actually today? What was the moment you missed something? Veselin, пожалуйста, ваше мнение, что случилось сегодня? Как думаете, в какой момент вы что-то упустили? No, I just thought that uh, black should be fine in this position with the king on d1, but uh, somehow... Uh, Я думаю, что в позиции, когда у белых король на d1, у черных должно быть все хорошо. I it was just good for me, but uh, it's of course not so simple because I kind of underestimated the planet with the king slowly going to a2. And in fact, uh, white is solid and uh, not so easy to make... Uh, Uh, to create a counterplay. Видимо, я недооценил перевод короля на ферзевый фланг, и поскольку уже при этом не так просто создать контр-игру черным. What would you change now if you knew this plan I mean, before? No, I mean, Если бы вы этот план знали, что бы вы изменили в своей maybe игре? Maybe knight c5 was better. Here I had also, let's say, here knight a6 move. Может быть, в этой позиции у черных лучше ход конь a6. If white takes, then knight, uh, I think, then it's different somehow. So, позиция была бы уже другая с конем на a6, даже при размене на d5. After knight a6, I thought maybe it's possible. После коня 6 возможно и вариант. Now, for example, I already have bishop f5. На конь b3 уже есть ход слон f5. I thought this was also maybe not so bad for for me. But okay, I'm kind of pawned down, but. Это тоже позиция не очень, ну, хорошая, нормальная для черных, хоть и нет пешки. But uh, yeah, knight d7 somehow I really, for example, uh, also even b6 immediately deserves attention now. Также даже заслуживает b6 сразу. Or knight c5, of course, is uh, for example here. Или, конечно же, конь c5. Здесь я рассматривал слон f5. После слон g6 у черных должна быть какая-то контр-игра. So excited, and this is simply not so easy as, as I thought. And some, now maybe it's kind of easier to play for white because it's very clear what exactly white does. Put the king on a2 and put the bishop on b5, and black has to decide very quickly what. Uh, in fact, if I have to play g5, maybe this is the moment now. I mean, uh, because uh, is maybe compared to the game, it's uh, totally different. Ну, в этой позиции гораздо проще играть белым. Of course, it's true that white has even here moves like h4 and always knight goes to g5, so. Uh, it's not so easy. В этой позиции проще, конечно же, играть с белым, потому что у них есть четкий план с переводом короля на ферзевый фланг и с ходом слон b5. Но, возможно, мне стоило пойти g5 раньше, но и даже на этот ход уже есть h4, и потом конь становится на g5, как в партии. We are back for the live games. Uh, there is a lot, lot of excitement here in the remaining on the remaining free boards. And first of all, we will go f for um, Karyakin Aronian game, as as uh, Karyakin is really low on time at the moment. And he's also very much in trouble on the board. I think um, the last move of uh, Aronian Knight A4 has put tremendous uh, pressure on. On Kayakin, I think there's a threat of rook takes d2 as well as a threat of knight to c3. And you can see that he has, well, he's down to less than two minutes for uh, something like seven moves. S seven moves he has to yes. make, yes. So this is, it's very critical for Kayakin and also mm -hmm. it could make 
a huge impact on the tournament standing because so. Aronian could even catch up with Anand before their individual game uh, tomorrow. And objectively speaking, Knight A4 is a very strong move, which, uh, well, for a start, it has a very simple but uh, difficult to parry yeah. <laughs> threat uh, of Knight C3. I think even White might have to consider playing E6, sacrificing a pawn and somehow trying to, to survive like this, but that's, mm -hmm. that's not great at all. So this is very tough for Kayakin, and basically it seems like a bad tournament for Kayakin is turning out even considerably worse. worse. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. well, Kayakin was definitely seen as one of the outsiders with uh, yeah, chances to upset here, but so far, not at all, actually. No, so and far. He's running down his, his clock critically now. I think we we're below a minute left. We're below a minute, uh, and um, yeah, well he, he just made rook b3 free. Free here, and it looks to me like, isn't it just possible to take on d2 in this position as far as I can see? Let's say takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Mm -hmm. What do you think his point is here? Something well. like rook d3 maybe? Yeah, he but could think that the knight is almost trapped and he could play e6 it's an and just look for in a... That sense. For Queen c1, king h2, and he's hoping that here he's actually breaking through. It's, a, it's an interesting try so low on time, I would say. So it's going to be interesting to see how will... How will but Aronian most likely, objectively speaking, it's not enough. If you just I take, I take twice and, uh, well, you have checks on, let's say after rook d3, you have a check on c1 and the knight is coming back in one way or another. You're saying like this, yes, but uh, rook d... Oh, sorry, now we, we I lost the position for you. Actually, I have to say I'm quite impressed with Kayaki's decision because at least he has some, some serious uh, fighting chances. What about knight b2 here? Well, rook to d8. Mm -hmm. And... I'm sort of hoping that uh, Queen A8 next will actually create some, some kind of uh, fight. Yeah, very serious. And at least Maybe it's even. easy for to play for for Black. Yeah, uh, no, I agree that it's an interesting, uh, probably the the best by far practical okay. chance. Yeah, well, when we talk about it, it's an interesting game. I was about to say that I think all three games are interesting, but actually we see Vichy Anand here so having a, a close look at. Yeah, we will probably stay with this game for a while, as Karyagin only has, uh, only sort of yeah, has fifty it, it's fifty a one tough, seconds. It's a tough dilemma, <laughs> <laughs> in a but way. But we should just uh, mention that. Well, in Vicious game, in Svidler uh, Anand game, uh, not much is happening right now. It seems to be quite balanced with uh, with uh, Anand having this rook and bishop against a queen. But um, well, it would be surprising if any of them ha can do something positive in this I position. I think that game is going to end in a draw. That seems mm -hmm. seems very likely. But they could be playing on for quite a while and. Um, well, and no one seems yeah. to be in, in any special time trouble. No. So if anything, I would could be. think that it's probably Anand who is trying to put some pressure, but mm -hmm. probably not. The other game between Kramnik and Mamadiarov has really caught fire as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it could even end up pretty badly for Kramnik. Uh, well, actually. surprisingly it's so, as he had such a promising position and yeah. such a risk-free position o for a while. But he played... <laughs> one very aggressive move and it got completely out of hand and now it's a very very difficult position and it's it can it can simply go either way mm -hmm. and uh, no there is a lot of stake especially of course in that game because well they are playing for free results but also well kayakin's game is important for the final standings and uh, so is wishes of course so this round is is way too early to call mm -hmm. apart from that well, well one to game to 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 <laughs> after his crushing victory again against Anand looked like a serious contender. And I think right now, not against really. Against Kramnik, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so actually, Svidler <coughs> has just made uh, a move B5, which could also mean that, well, he's trying to do something but in that position. It's a bit surprising to me, though, the, the move he has played. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's also a dilemma if we <laughs> should stay with this game or not. It's very tempting, but Kayakin so low on time. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, well, Aronian could also, of course, take his time here. Yeah, but if he doesn't take on, on d2, then Kayakin will actually get in the move rook d3. Yes. So, so yeah, 
I'm I'm uncertain to be honest. Um, but let's actually let's keep the camera on this game. But maybe let's change the analysis board. Mm -hmm. What has happened in in Switler Anand is the following. You can now, well, you can follow Anand Switler on on the bottom board. I think we had this queen sacrifice position, and we basically thought that they are just going to put up put up their pieces quite nicely, and nothing is going to happen. But then Switler played the move b5, and I don't know how to evaluate this. B5 is a B5 is, is, is an ambitious surprising. move. <laughs> yes, I would very much say uh, so. Takes takes. It really seemed like uh, well. Yeah. It was not uh, well. It was not especially Swidler who was playing for. You think Swidler is just gonna after Bishop C6 he will give up an exchange, and simply claim that that's just gonna be a, a draw? Is that his idea? And the knight will have the e4 square afterwards. That's an interesting idea. What else? What else could be his point? Yeah, uh, else it's difficult to explain why he would, why he would do something like that. But you could even consider, I would say, after in this position, maybe to play rook e f seven first. Is that a is that a move? No. Probably, actually, this is quite fine for for, for well, Switzerland. What you're saying is that if Vichy plays bishop c six, which is very very logical here, I thought that Siddler after will just take on c six. I thought something like that, and. After this, you would think that nothing too bad is going to happen no. to to you. Uh, I mean, you have f3 protected, and maybe well, he will take the d pawn, you take the a pawn, and this is just a, a draw. It's probably still a very drawish position. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe you could start with something like this, and um, but probably it's not really changing anything. Well, I, I, gu I guess what what is nice for for White in this position that he gets the e4 square for the knight. Yeah, very much so. And so that uh, could be well, that could have some value. Well, this is also going to be an interesting press conference, and I'm a bit uh, curious to see who is playing for. Him. Yeah, and who? Uh, what did they think about the game all the way along? I'm, I'm sure that Switler will think he was in in quite some trouble. Uh, well, but most but likely. Still. But I'd be curious to see if Vichy thought he was close to winning, or he simply thought that taking this pawn actually was a great compensation, or maybe he thinks he spoiled his some some chances. But mm -hmm. it is it's okay. Okay, Something we are back for uh, yeah, we are back to the to the Karyakin uh, game. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the yeah. they took here, queen takes, and now Karyakin really has to do rook d3 to d8 to get any kind of compensation. He did, he started with that at least. Mm -hmm. Rook d3. You think Aronian is doing this cleverly? I mean, he has half an hour left and he makes him wait for three minutes. Or you think simply it's when your opponent is so low on time, you, you just have to make a move? <laughs> no, I think that, uh, well, I think that in, in an ideal world he should wait. But mm -hmm. I think it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, for that him is uh, maybe. But that's for, for him or for everybody? I think for everybody yeah. it would be difficult, but of course the most, okay. uh, or maybe he just uh, maybe he saw a win he, already. He saw a win. We think now he has to go rook d8. This would be the logical consequence. And after the move, queen takes c4. Yeah, the move queen takes c4. Okay, he this is what he decided to go for. He has sure. to try this no, idea. No, this queen h4 check. Queen h4 yeah, check and that queen e7. That doesn't matter. Because after queen e7, there is rook e8. Aha. Uh -huh. This is his point. Okay, sorry, I don't know. But this is the only way to, to fight on. And he has played queen a8. Mm -hmm. And now he has basically made the time control. Because after queen h4 check, he has only one legal move. Yes. So Kayakin has made the time control. And he might even have saved the game, actually. It's still too early to call, and I think there is some some complications. But as far as no, I can see, he gets back the bishop the on f8. The reason that Levon went for this <laughs> is because he saw something. But okay, he... No, I think he just wanted... He thought maybe this was my only chance. Oh, well, for instance, now he could play queen e1 check. <coughs> mm -hmm. King h2. Oh, the e5 pawn is gone. Yeah, yeah, also. It's also gone. Really? It is? Yeah, okay. And then I think he will try something like king h7, I would guess. But what happens? Queen takes e5? What would be the move after that? Well, um, let's see even... King... Well, why not king g1? Okay. 
And now queen e7, it actually doesn't make a difference. You will just rook e8, queen d6, rook d8 me with a perpetual against the queen. Yeah. That I haven't <laughs> seen before, I think. Okay, well. So you're saying in this position after king d1, you actually have to move away your king. You're going to go king h7 immediately. Or no, well, the funny thing is that here, well, we have the position ah, already on the board. They're still okay, playing okay, okay. as though... Yeah, so he's, if he goes back to g1 now, this is... If he goes back to g1... Then queen, queen then e1 queen is check. winning. Yes. Because of here, now you go to e7 and rook e8, this is a check. Yeah, that's okay. the point. This was, so in this position, you should not go g3. Sorry, king g1. You have to go somewhere else with the king well, if you want probably to. Probably have, have to go g3. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, a very interesting position, but they now have plenty of time. So actually, we should definitely follow the, the two other games, I think. Uh, definitely, mm. yes. Should uh, we start with Kramnik Mamadiar? I think so, yes. Uh, as, as their uh, time trouble is about to begin. Well, we left you in this position after night 2996. Mm -hmm. And Kramnik is having a, a serious think here. Because after knight e6, well, he thought for a while, and we said that queen e3 could be hit by the fascinating move knight c5. So he took on d5, knight f4, dc6. And this, of course, looks fantastic. You have, you have two passed pawns here, and there might even be moves like rook b7 at some point, but Mohamed Yaf played the amazing move g5. That's and a very nice This one. is sort of threatening king g6. So Kramnik took, and now he took back. Even now, the move king g6 would have been interesting, but Mohamed Yaf has took it. And of course, it's worth noting that you can't take on g5, because then there's a check on h3. No, you have to take on g5. I think that's the point. But there is nothing else to well, do. Well, I mean, I meant the move earlier. Now c7 yes. has been played, and now the move rook d6. And this is the position Kramnik has. And uh, yeah, I think, well, what Victoria is trying to say is that bishop takes g5 is actually the only way to, to play this position. Mm -hmm. and, this is and this is, yeah, this is tough for Kramnik, of course. Yeah, this is something that could go very, very wrong for Kramnik. A game that turned out looked so promising. Well, now you basically reveal that the computers are saying this is the move, but what is the point? Check. Well, the point is that simply, you uh, well, this, this bishop is trapped. I think, and uh, here, well, you have two pawns at the moment uh -huh. for, so for, for the piece. So it's not like you're going to play f4 or anything here. You're just going to continue d5. It's still it's very uh, sharp. Yeah, I think this has gone out of hand. But this actually means that Mahmoud Yarov could be making his way up in the standings. Yeah. He could win well this and be on plus he, one. Yes, if, if he wins oh. this, that's... That would be... Very, very an, good. An amazing development, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. Remember, Mamed Yarov started out with half out of three, I think. Yeah, that's right. And then, yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, well, he was in the so, so solely in, on, on, on last place. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, well, yeah, no, this is, <coughs> that is amazing. He could uh, be in, well, shared second or on shared third, actually. But and this is a Kram surprising turn of events, considering what a pleasant position was after well, the opening. Yeah, not this just after the opening. I mean, move 28. We have a position where basically nothing positive to say for Mahmoud Yarov. He, b he just have to sit and wait, and Kramnik could quietly strengthen his position. But he decided to go for immediate action, and things has got completely out of hand. He, he did take on G5, yeah. though. So well, uh, it's, it's hard to do something else. So yeah. he is going for this... Uh, for this uh, yeah, and I think, well, Mamad Yarov obviously has to take the bishop. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get this position that we spoke of. But even that, I mean, let's go to this position. Doesn't it have a scary look for, for, for Kramnik still? I mean, you have a couple of passed pawns, but they're not uh, really Well, cleaning. they're not the strongest pawns ever. No, also. no. I am, I'm a bit puzzled uh, about that. D5, okay, he, just he played. He just made D5. And Kayakin has played the move G3, so he's still gonna fight on against uh, Aronia. Nothing mm -hmm. is decided there, and no. I think that game could actually drag out for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. But it's very, well, right now, here where, well, this game is where all I the action is. I think is this is where all the action is. Well, there is also Switler against Anand, but 
we think that game is kind of quietly going towards a draw. Or it's not unlikely, of, yes. No. Well, the last position we have on the board, Swidler's queen is threatened, but he's walking around there. so <laughs> well, we, He we must have moved it Yes, already. he would probably have moved his, his queen. But I know that you're quite pessimistic about Kramnik's chances here, but it's not so easy to play for Mamejarov e no, either. No, I, I think, think it's, well, maybe a coin toss is not the right uh, expression, but it could definitely go either way. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm basing it on that Mamejarov has gotten exactly the kind of mess he would really like. Mm -hmm. And that... I think the burden is on wide in this position that, uh, well, you have a piece less for a start and you have some pass pawns that could also easily end up w as weaknesses. You have to play it, it pretty well, but maybe there is some tactical motives that I haven't really appreciated. I mean, could you play rook well, b7 at some one moment? One of the I tactical I uh, sort of motives could be that, well, the knight on g5 doesn't have that many moves and uh, no. f4 sometimes well but knight e4 would exchange s some things uh, then. yeah but that yeah. i only mean let's say after rook b8 but knight g5 is is yeah. is, is, is is a bit um, but okay then you know take away the the king and the knight will go to f7 mm -hmm. in in a way so i think i i do think it's more difficult to play to be white here than white than black in this position but maybe it's a very complicated position and simply it's going to be a they they both have chances to outplay each other mm -hmm. basically that that could very well, well, well be. let's say right now Majarov has 10 minutes for five moves that's not a problem at all but the problem is the complexity of the position yeah and yeah and maybe Kramnik still has chances in the sense that I think Mamedyarov is definitely trying to to win this and well this is also Kramnik's chance that Mamedyarov is going to do something Maybe a bit irresponsible. Well, or just ambitious. Uh, well, yeah, that's more or less the same. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> yeah, I understand. But uh, so le let's see. Uh, but this is this is exciting. Has something happened in Vichy uh, against? Well, not uh, much. Uh, no. But we can turn to that well, game briefly, at least on our analysis board. Let's do that very briefly. Then I think mm -hmm. they have gotten as far as this. Well, he took on d5, and he didn't play s uh, bishop to c6, but he played the move rook d7, and Switler has gone to e4. Mm -hmm. And is the d pawn starting to become a factor, or is what going to happen? Yes, that they will play bishop c6, and then something like, let's say, this. Well, we will see right now. <laughs> ah, we actually have it on camera. Yes, that's great. Um, uh -huh. Vichy is... Well, Vichy can play bishop c6, of course. Yeah, I would think that in this position, d5 is a threat. Yes, well, so he played bishop c6. Mm -hmm. And here, I guess he's going to take it, right? And uh, we're going to see some swapping of pieces. Mm -hmm. Like takes, takes, takes. Yeah. You would really like to keep the a pawn here for black if you want to be ambitious. Yes, but, but that's not going to happen. So no, that's not uh, Rook e a7 is legal. Yes, but but, uh, but okay, then then you also keep the d pawn alive. Yeah, but that's actually not gonna queen. Is it completely absurd to play rook a7 here? Well, well, we'll <laughs> Vichy tells know. you <laughs> that yes. Okay, draw agreed. Okay. Uh -huh. draw okay, agreed. that also makes it easier as a commentator because now we can go back to, I think the Kramnik game, right? Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, to hear a bit in the press conference. Yeah. What uh, what did both players think? Um, yeah, well, it seemed to us that Svidler was in, in huge trouble after the opening. Yeah, also we had a computer on the screen more or less screaming that out, that it was more exactly. than plus one for, exactly. for Anand. But maybe he thought actually there was excellent compensation in this yeah, position. That would be uh, very interesting to hear that's about. That's very interesting that, Mam mm -hmm. well, Mamadiarov has... He played bishop c8, and then he's even found time to, to look back. Okay, now Kramnik comes. Rook b8 is probably going to happen, yes. And that does seem like a very s strong move. Mm -hmm. Kramnik is... Okay, ah, they are both around nine minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, well, bishop c8, rook b8, nothing is, uh, well, clarified yet. No, <laughs> still I think the same. Still, well, it's still this kind of it's just dynamic that, that yeah. uh, it seems that white has just enough play here. Well, white has this uh, idea of f4 now. Mm -hmm. 
So let's let's see. And that could be. Yeah. If this is this is the threat at least <coughs> in this position. So you think that he should play rook f6, sort of stopping that threat actually? Maybe. Well, that's that's. You one could option. be right in the sense that. It's actually maybe easier for white to play this position. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe I'm overestimating Mamed Yarov. I, I'm just so impressed with his practical skills uh, and mm -hmm. such. But oh, it's interesting. Well, rook f6 is a very <coughs> oh, well logical move. On the other hand, it unblocks the deep pawn. Yeah. So let's say if you play, well, we can show this on the board, mm -hmm. that in case rook f6, well, White should consider something like knight b5, and let's say after a6, he, played okay, he just six. played it. You already have to consider, well, some moves like d6 at times and things like that. I'm uh, pretty sure it doesn't work here, but I'm just why? trying to, <laughs> to show, uh, to you show think a possibility. You bishop d7 or something. But, uh, well. Uh, no, it's true, of course. This is, I mean, this is a serious. And the idea uh, is a takes b5, rook takes c8, rook yeah. takes c8, d7. Something like that. Yeah, and we remember Switler had something similar with Andraikin, where he played rook f8 just in time, but that's, yeah, that's but not that's going to be legal here. Mm -hmm. So, no, this is uh, this is a bit out of uh, out of hand here. Mm -hmm. For f well, but you can see, I think Mahmoud Yarov just enjoys it. He seems he's walking around happily. <laughs> yes, seven seven minutes left. It's quite no, what's amazing. the big deal? Right? Yes, I mean, yes, it is quite amazing. Yeah. Okay, he's maybe circling around, so he's. Uh, He's not exactly going to... So let's say after knight b5, what is it that he's planning to do? Well, knight e4 could be a move. It's threatening a check on f2. Yeah. Well, right now we have a, a difficult choice. Uh, th this game is very exciting, but also there is an interesting press conference. Yeah. <laughs> I simply don't uh, know what to do. No. As, um, yeah, we could we could keep an eye on this game and just, uh, just listen briefly at what... Uh, what Vichy and uh, Swindler are thinking. Yeah, that maybe that's logical. Is I don't know if it's possible to keep the camera on this game and keep no. the sound of the <laughs> no, press conference. No, 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 that's a choice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I actually well, the players could make some moves soon. Well, they, they will have to. At yeah, least. <laughs> 15 minutes and it's clarified. At least they have made a couple of moves. So, but it, it is true, there will be some very interesting bits on the press conference that mm -hmm. will be a pity to miss. Mm -hmm. Maybe so we should maybe do we that. Maybe we will switch mm -hmm. a bit back and forth, actually. Yep. Let's, let's, but we will keep an eye on you and we will promise you we will come back if something uh, major is happening here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, uh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Let's see. Well, knight b5 is a very interesting move here. But I really it's think tough, so. tough move to play as well. Yeah. I mean, knight b5, you could even consider taking on d4. Is it clear that, I mean, that you don't get made it uh, and, and no, things like this? <laughs> not and, uh, at what, all. what is it that you're threatening? Are you just going to play d6 and bring them a bit closer? It's, uh, it is a tough spot for Kramnik as is, well. It is, it is, I agree. Well, let's say rook takes e8, king e8, knight takes a7. Sure. Uh, yeah, you could be right. This but it could very well also fizzle out into into some kind of draw after, let's say, knight e4 or something like this. Sure, sure. No, I, I think you're probably right. That. Okay, we can... Mm -hmm. Somehow I didn't believe in. I don't know why. Maybe I could again. I'm so anyway. we start the press I mean, conference. I okay, but uh, we'll start start the press yeah, I missed, I missed kind of three, basically. And it was a very interesting game, as usually. And uh, party, our nerves <laughs> in the press center. Yeah. And the atmosphere was getting high. And Конечно, атмосфера накалялась в пресс-центре во время партии вашей. Да, я тоже хочу этой травы, как говорится, Да, ну хорошо. So, uh, would you like to start I and mean, explain maybe something about the The usual routine, yeah. Yeah, I, yes. mean, uh, I mean, we both spent ages, He's, he before and me afterwards. Uh, well, this is the thing, but... Yeah, this is the most critical position. So I was calculating this for a long time. If queen h5, I thought 
Bishop d4 check. Я рассматривал этот вариант очень долго. King h1, I think he can take on g3, which is kind of what ruined me, because King h1, if I could play King King H1, I'd be perfectly Если бы я мог сыграть король H1, то все было в порядке. Сладья F1, слон F6, и здесь я не мог оценить, потому что, вероятно, проигрываю. Если я мог Петр говорит, что он не уверен, что это очень хорошо, потому что, например, ферзь h4. Да, вот такой вариант. Слон h6. Если у тебя, может быть, есть какой-то гениальный ход, типа ладья e1. Интересный ход. Да, это я думал, что я взял и мой бишоп. В этом случае Виша говорит, что нужно было взять и как-то вернуться. Честно говоря, я бы был очень рад этой позиции. Basically, from my viewpoint, just just very briefly, in this position we got here kind of by I mean, I mean, I can sort of chicken out here and go something like bishop c2, and I'm probably not worse. But once again, this is not why we play this line to to allow the exchange. I can play here, for example, slon c2, and maybe it's worse, but it's not the reason why we play this variation. So, but to be honest, I I kind of underestimated how unpleasant this will be, and I spent, I I said I think that this is the record of of the last. Number of years of time spent on one move here. Yeah, I spent forty minutes. Forty minutes. Ah, how unpleasant it will be for me, and I think that here I have set a record of length. Not lifetime record, but not a record of all of my life. But I think in this millennium, potentially, yeah. But possibly in this millennium, potentially, yeah. Maybe forty minutes. And basically. My first idea was to take on a four. My first idea was to take on a four. Knight a four, queen d two, knight e six, and I don't know, bishop c two or knight g three. But even if I yeah, but the the biggest problem, first of all, you can actually do this, which maybe is even even stronger. F six and then g six. Very very strong. Why not? Why not? Very strong. F e five, rook e five. I think. And rook f three is not good. I don't. Yeah, maybe, but. It's a mess. Yeah. Just just g6 and sort of in a holding pattern here, and I have no squares for anything, and Black will just calmly. Yeah, Bishop d7, and then eventually you will take on e5, and you will be better. But also, yeah, as you as you as you correctly say, even even simply f5, I think I'm I'm in a lot of trouble here because I'm running out of squares. После простого f5, я думаю, что у меня большие проблемы, потому что не хватает полей. Yeah, maybe maybe I can sort of try try for equality by doing this, but even this I thought was very very pleasant. Может быть, я могу попробовать все-таки уравнять таким образом, но даже это очень приятно для белых. Therefore, therefore I have to allow f6, and if I allow f6, it's it's very very critical, and I you know I'm if I don't have what I've done what I've done in the game, I'm probably in trouble. Because uh, let's say in this position, if I take on e5, knight e5, yeah, bishop f4 was possible, but I couldn't quite Slon make myself believe this. Возможно, yeah. но я не по, так и не поверил в это. First of all, g6. g6 first of all, and, and also also this position might be Также might be bad for, for, for white as well. Mm -hmm. Potentially, I don't know. Here I have rook e2, so game continues. But if I if I miss something here, I'm, I'm just going to be dead. So если я что-то упущу здесь, то просто this is not going to be very просто проиграю. And also, of course, just just g6, uh, knight e2, and let's say rook f7. Ну, конечно, I think просто шесть, конь два, ладья f7. Я думаю, что у меня стратегически просто гораздо хуже из-за этого. Yeah, no, it's very important. It's very important to have the Bishop, which at least has a hope of landing on e5 in this position, you know, with the bishop on c2, you're in a lot of trouble. Да, очень важно иметь слона, который хотя бы, который хотя бы есть надежда пройти на e5. And here it becomes very, very precise because if I do something like knight e5 straight away, then my my pieces are all on the wrong squares. Like for instance, queen c6. В этой позиции нужно играть очень точно, например, если я сыграю так, то все мои фигуры на неверных полях. And basically, I I simply cannot do this, so I I absolutely have to play bishop g5. Мне просто необходимо играть слон g5. 
Не могу взять на e5 конем, потому что h6. But I can play d5. Но могу сыграть d5. And this becomes a huge mess. For instance, queen c5. Будет просто полнейшая неразбериха, например, ферзь c5. And to be honest, I've no idea what's going on, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody told me that black is better here. Но честно говоря, я тут даже не представляю, что происходит, и я бы не удивился, если кто-то мне сказал, что у черных лучше. But by this point, I felt that what I'm doing are simply only moves. This is not a matter of choice anymore. I just have to play this and sort of kissera sera. Но до этого момента я чувствовал, что я просто нужно делать единственные ходы, так что это не вопрос выбора. Здесь любые странные вещи могут происходить. Ладья два. The position does does become very very sharp because E six is always coming. I don't know. H six. I have this strange idea. После А шесть есть странное дело. Д два один. Ферзь два. Может быть. It's a it's a strange position, and I understand why why Vishy wouldn't want to subject himself to this. Я понимаю, почему Vishy не захотел себя обрекать на эту позицию. But here I'm probably fine if if Rook Rook. But once again we come to the point of Rook takes F2. Опять мы приходим к моменту ладья F2. I also ran into this. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. I also ran into this. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is this I missed for some reason. Yeah, and maybe this is So queen e2 suddenly, I mean something like bishop d7, rook f1, queen e7. Так что после ферзь d2 неожиданно бежит слон d7, ладья f1, король идет. И опять же очень запутано все. Head six, but again, this is I think an only move. Yeah, no, but I I saw this. Yeah, I saw this. I wanted to play g5 and just take the draw, but then suddenly I wasn't sure. Hundred percent sure it was a draw. Yeah, I'm not a sure. Уже пять, я думал, что ты просто примешь ничего, а потом неожиданно был не уверен, начали это. G5, I can, I can take, take. G5, I can take. Okay, so G5, I can take. Yeah, no, but I think a draw. From my viewpoint, you know, at least I know I'm not worse here, which is already a huge improvement from you know my situation about move fifty. Здесь по крайней мере у меня не хуже, это уже улучшение позиции для меня. Who knows what's going on? Yeah, what 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 you're saying makes actually a decent amount of sense as usual. Maybe you can play queen h7. Может быть здесь ферзь h7 можно сыграть. No, but then queen g5 and queen back somewhere. Yeah. No, rook is. Oh, rook is seven probably wins. Yeah, yeah. No, this is bad. Yeah, ладья семь вероятно выигрывает. Ah, so bishop d4. Для черных. Rook g5, bishop g7. Yeah, and some move like queen h6. Queen h6 or queen h4. Yeah. Queen h6 looks very nice actually. Yeah, and then. Ферзь h6 выглядит очень хорошо на самом деле. And knight h5, rook e1, everything. I think it's insane to play this. Queen h5, ladia e1, and everything. This this actually looks like I should be winning. You know, I didn't know. I thought g5 was not going to happen. And basically, here, if black takes on f2, I think I can play rook e7. Yeah, this is the problem. Queen f4, queen f4, rook g7, king h8, and in this position, I think queen d3. Yeah, in this position, I think queen d3. I think. This was. This, yeah, and after bishop f5, yeah, th this was actually a line I calculated. Это вариант, который я посчитал. And very strange, but everything, everything is hanging. And I can, I can take and take on b7, but maybe I'm slightly worse after bishop takes d4. Слон, d4 so I need to look for a move in this position, but так, you know, uh, there should be a move of some kind. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know queen e1, mm, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Some, but this, this looks like I'm I'm including more of your pieces in the game. Да, но кажется, что здесь я просто больше твоей фигуры привожу в игру. Обращаясь, Петр. Yeah, no, but also probably I should be holding here anyway because the rook is seven. Вероятно, я должен держаться здесь, потому что ладья босей очень сильна. So this looked like an interesting line, but once again, it seemed to me that by making all these only moves, I should be holding somehow. Но опять же, мне казалось, что делая все единственные ходы, я должен держаться. I was momentarily very, very optimistic because I thought knight h5 is very strong. После ферзь f7 я на какой-то момент стал очень оптимистично настроен, потому что мне казалось, что конь h5 очень сильно. Basically, if g5 I can take. G5 я могу просто взять. And if h takes g, rook g5, there are two positions. After king h7. Есть две позиции здесь после короля h7. There are probably other moves, but I can even probably play. Есть вероятно другие ходы, но могу просто. Check and some move like I don't know. Queen d2. 
And uh, well, it's a mess, but I have so many pawns on the king's side that I, I should never be worse here. And if king h, and if king h uh, yeah, knight f6 is very nice. And uh, once again, I, I, should, I can never be worse, and I'm probably here. I'm probably better. Uh, so I thought queen f2. Так что я подумал, king h1, and here I checked a, a nice line. I thought bishop h3, g h, rook f3. Which worried me for a second, and then I spotted rook e3, which is, I think, is a nice touch. Да, на секунду меня это побеспокоило, но потом я нашел ладья и три, и мне кажется, что это интересно. Ah, no, I'm not winning because there's queen g5. Crap. I forgot about queen g5, but maybe, maybe I'm still okay. Yeah, I забыл о ферзе g5. And rook g1. Okay, but I think after ферзе g6, yeah, yeah, okay, this, this, this is fine, yeah, because. Today I actually have a feeling I saw quite quite a bit of decent things. I saw quite a few quite a few reasonable lines which might actually hold water. And after Bishop E6, my plan was to play Queen E2, of course. And then I looked at Bishop and I realized his his devious plan. There's this. Then I looked at the Bishop and I realized his plan. There's this. No, because Bishop D7, I I should have something, no? Because yeah, later I realized that Bishop D7 takes D4 is 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 I, I, I began by playing knight h5 and thinking maybe I'm even better, but after bishop e6, I, uh, I got kind of stuck because, once again, I, it looks nice, but I still need to rework my pieces into decent squares. And I can't really allow black too many, uh, too many moves here. And my next move was a bit of a, was a, bit of a blunder, but uh, I'm not so sure I have anything better, I don't know. Basically, what I missed is. I mean, rook e3 looks very, very tasty because I'm I'm threatening rook g3 in many positions, and also I want to go bishop g3, bishop c5. So if 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 not for bishop d8, I think I I am much better here. I think that I am much better here. But after bishop d8, I'm I'm facing a problem because. Bishop g3. I thought I thought of playing bishop g3, bishop g5, and rook f3. Yeah, but bishop f5 is incredibly strong. Because otherwise, after queen g6, knight f4, this I would be losing. Yeah, this this I would come for what? I don't think you can even win anything. Bishop f4, bishop f4. I thought, and rook g3. Ah, I can't even take it. I don't think you've been collecting anything here. No, but you're still here. Just something you're taking. Queen g2 and rook e1. Yeah, I thought I might actually be be simply better here because once again, despite the queen g5, 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 despite the queen g5,
basically, I think Black needs to make about six moves in a row before it starts really getting critical. I mean, if you double along the E file and go to G7 and rook E1, no, the plan is not to work as a put the bishop on G6 um, and then play bishop H5 somewhere, but that somewhere was never happening. You have knight F1, yeah. H2, and basically, or basically, the, the thing is, if Black presses with H5, H4. The knight will go f1, h2, g4 straight away. Если белые yeah. and черные будут играть h4, то конь просто перестроится. So, uh, and also, uh, basically, I thought after rook e7, I spent some time here uh, trying to figure out if I can do nothing, and I realized that maybe I can. Могу ли я вообще ничего не делать but, в этой позиции? Uh, Потом понял, really, что вероятно, uh, да. There's, there's no reason to check. And, and I have actually a plan which will, uh, which will stop all this. Uh, just before, before A6, A4, and I often draw here because I felt that I should, be, I should be fine. And I, I, I still think I, I am fine. Basically, uh, the, moment, the moment I get some squares for my pieces, uh, it becomes... I don't really care how, much, how many pawns I lose on the queen side. The moment I... As in the game, for instance, the moment I collect on d5 and the knight, and the knight starts threatening to come into the game. Yeah. I'm, I'm, to be honest, not even entirely sure I'm worse here if you take the d pawn off the board. I will be slightly worse, but not by very much, I think. But, but the pawn is still so, alive, uh, so... And uh, you know, after rook d7, I, could, I, I was considering even, even doing something like this. Let's say rook d4, knight d4. Even here, the problem is it's very, very difficult to coordinate uh, yeah. the rook and bishop. So uh, Vishu говорит, что проблема I mean, в том, что очень сложно скоординировать ладью и слона. Much less two rooks and two bishops. Yeah, no, 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 even, <laughs> even this, I think, is perfectly fine, to be honest. But I thought, well, why do this when I can play queen e4, and if bishop f6, knight f5, no, I подумал, зачем then once делать, again, how, how, how am I worse? Yeah, the problem is, I think, after rook d8, here. If he goes here, I want he can go queen e six. Problem of course, после ладья d восемь можно сыграть версия шесть. And now knight f six is entering the thing. And if you do this, then take take uh, rook c seven maybe. No, then rook d seven. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then take rook c seven. 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 Then take rook no, but this bishop d3, yeah. No, but uh, take on b5 and queen c6, maybe? Yeah, no, I'm, I was, I was looking, oh, no, 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 but that, uh, I don't play bishop d4. I was looking for something, left, yeah, I was looking for something more exciting, but... Even this is not easy, because because double pawns, he will play f4, f5, and then... Yeah, no, no, but even... Defending all the guys while... Yeah, even... No, this I would... Uh, bishop yeah, no, this is probably bad, yeah. Okay, okay, even this knight three, it's four, right, it's 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 yeah, no, but, but, but yeah, but even, well, even this position will be uh, incredibly difficult slash yeah, impossible yeah. to win. I think. Because my king is just so much safer than, than black king, and, and, and queen with knight, as, as we all know, the queen, the queen and knight combination is, is, a, is a decent defensive setup. And also maybe I have something, maybe I have something better here. I don't know. I did, it didn't look as grim as all that during the game. Maybe. I don't need to go rook c5, maybe I can go Может быть, мне не нужно просто играть ладья c5. Somewhere else. Может быть, куда-то еще. I managed to say something, but now I can't remember. Я видел что-то, говорит Виша, но сейчас не могу вспомнить, что конкретно. Может быть, ладья c1, какой следующий ход черных, спрашивает Петр. I mean, I'm, I should be fine. I mean, it's very difficult for me to believe that. У меня должно быть все в порядке. That I'm worse here. Because I'm, you know, I'm ready to take on c6 whenever, so. Да, я всегда готов взять на c6. Ну и то, что получилось в партии, конечно, это очевидная ничья. Виша, я имею вопрос для тебя. После того, как Питер провел 40 минут, думая о его шаге на бишоп c2, не дало тебе какие-то идеи, что он может быть не очень, так сказать, счастлив с его позицией, или что-то не пошло не так, как White? Вопрос к Више. После того, как Петр потратил 40 минут на одним из ходов, не думали ли вы, что он... Что он не уверен в своей позиции. Well, it's a very sharp position, but I already felt that at least White probably didn't have any huge immediate try. So. No. Oh, я думал, что, может быть, он даже еще по-прежнему играет в подготовке. Это просто такая длинная дебютная дебютный вариант. No, but this, uh, there are stories like that, but they are about other people. 
Да, есть такие истории, но они про других людей, говорит Петр. Знаменитая партия Лека Каруана. Какой-то момент Лека 40 минут продумал в очень острой позиции. Согласно И после чего он просто за 15 ходов в темпе блица сделал и выиграл. And also uh, the moment when you refused actually to accept the draw. Момент, когда вы отказались от ничьей. If I have to keep on defending one pawn while doing that, I can't do it. So, yeah. uh, this, I mean, the very actually, uh, the very fact that um, he offered me a draw was very useful because at least it helped me with his evaluation. Uh, yeah, I wasn't. Дело в том, что сам факт того, что я offered a draw, well, это было очень важно для меня, потому что я хотя бы Peter's not a very devious guy, so I knew that probably he genuinely believed it was equal. Yeah. <laughs> There are people who would offer a draw in a worse position, but I don't think. No, uh, I think. Есть люди, которые предлагают ничью в худшей позиции, но я не думаю, что Петр Петр это один из таких людей. Да, я действительно. We are back after quite an interesting press conference. Uh, well, it seems that both players saw probably much more than commentators did, and and the lines <laughs> were very very impressive. Yes, uh, well, uh, now we uh, would like to concentrate for a bit on Kramnik Mamajarov. Uh, the time trouble has just finished there, and it seemed for a while like Kramnik was in big trouble, and even now he could be. But uh, actually there, are some, there is probably one good move which could save him still. The question is if he will dare make it. It looks like a, a difficult position. It does. And it has been. Well, rook b8 happened, and then... Mamadiyev played the move rook to f6. Yeah, rook b8 happened, and Mamadiyev played the move rook to f6. And I think rook a8 happened, rook f4, f3, I think rook takes f3. And this was move 40, and Kramnik had a couple of minutes left, and uh, he thought for a while and played the move d6. <laughs> Here it seems like Kramnik could actually have saved himself by playing rook bb8. It looks very dangerous, because after rook c3, Rook takes c8, rook c2 check. It's almost made. But it seems like after king f1, there's nothing else black can do than just, well. It is probably somewhere in the middle. Kramnik has reasonable chances for a draw, but only yeah. in case uh, Mamajaro doesn't, doesn't find this uh, no. very complex uh, line. This is, well, Mamadiyaf, of course, will have a long think. And it can also be that he will have to take it step by step because mm -hmm. He's probably not risking anything, and uh, well, I think we can easily end up with the player spending all oceans of time, of time in, yeah. in this, and this can be. Sounds very likely. I think it's going to be a pretty slow phase here, but also that it's going to be very, very exciting. That's uh, well, that's a given. <laughs> yes, that's the kind of position we have here. But rook b8, check rook d8 looks nice, even though it's not yeah. the only option. But no, but I think. When we put in the practical perspective, this is really the most likely so. development because yeah. there, I mean, at least Kramnik is fighting with something very concrete. The other thing, he's just taking. Oh, but the other thing could just be uh, uh, lost sort of yes. in, in two or three ways. It looks yeah. like it's made. Yeah, yeah. It's lo it looks like it's almost uh, made. Okay, right now we should right. we should really check out what's happened in Karyak and Aronian as. Um, Which has completely <laughs> left this this But game. Nothing has happened actually. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> They have uh, yeah. basically the same position as yes. uh, after move four. But we should. Well, we left you here. Mm -hmm. I think yes. He took on e5 and King g1 would lose. But he has played the move g3. Which is the right move, of and course. And now Aronian gave a check. King to h3. Knight d3 mm -hmm. was played. Well, and that's the take only. Take an and king h7. That's the only way. Knight d3 was the only way for Black to play. And here he has well quite some pawns and potentially yeah. a very well. Well, my first pawn. instinct was that he.
he should play the move queen e4 to, well, I would assume that uh, knight f2 check was a threat. And like this, black, well, white is getting an ending. But it seems that he's too slow. Simply c4, rook c8, c3, rook c7, knight c3. And I think basically you're just completely lost well, in this, this position. Uh, this this is a motive from very many... Uh, yeah. Well, well, normally you would then sacrifice and, and play b6, but I think um, it's black who is in time. He will check and take the pawn on e4, so this is completely hopeless. Mm -hmm. So actually, it seems like queen e4 check is not a good choice here. He should probably try a check here, and after king g6, another check. And now there is a difference, right? Because after... Oh, queen e6 queen is e6, still something to be considered. You can take... Mm -hmm. Rook c8, but now the pawn is less advanced in the previous example. Mm -hmm. I well, think you're right? exactly one one tempo well, behind. Yeah, but that's that's gonna be important because now in this position, it's white who will queen first. And yeah. uh, well, I think that's why you have the evaluation up uh, there. This says zero point eighty seven or well, minus zero point eighty seven, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really uh, a game that's sort of uh, on the wire here. It can be a draw, it can be a win, and I think, mm -hmm. well, that will have huge impacts on the, the on tournament the situation. Yes, yes. Well, we probably, uh, we probably have overestimated Vichy's chances in the game. Yeah, this and was an interesting press conference yes, in that sense. Yes, it was very informative, and well, you could see that, uh, yeah, that, that they have looked at those positions extensively, and this rook takes f2, and they both had some, uh, well, mm. some thoughts about it. Uh, I mean, we had some computer evaluations, and it could be that from a very objective point of view, we are more right than the players. That, that will happen quite often. But I think that it was looked very scary taking these pawns. And, well, both Swidler and, and Vichy thought this was too much, and Vichy ended up taking something where he thought he had some practical chances. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, players after a game, they want to justify their decisions. But it's true that the lines to show it was, uh, looked very dangerous in, in a way. And, yeah. Um, and I think none of them seemed to, to think that uh, Swidler had been in, in, in huge in, trouble. In, in as huge trouble so. as uh, we thought, maybe. <laughs> and yeah. So No, it was a, another quite good game for, for Vichy, but he's not getting a lot of payout for being slightly better in some positions yet. Well, but it really looked like uh, this time he was close. Uh, I, it looked I, like I, this I, to me. I, I agree, and I think also Rook 8 has been played okay. here. Rook e8. Straight away. This is interesting. Without playing rook h8 check. So he's g played mm -hmm. rook e8 right away. Okay, what is his point? Yeah, it's interesting. For a start, there is a move. Queen well, f1 check would be a... Oh, there's a also a move knight f2 check. It's also ah, and your point is that after knight f2 check, I can't go to g2, because then there's this uh, huge there move knight e4. Knight e4 check, yes. You can, because... Oh, so even then yeah. you have king h3. Yeah, king h3, but then knight g5 com com check. This complicated, so uh -huh. he's played. So, let's say here he has to do... <coughs> well, uh, first of all, he has to consider uh, the checks, obviously. Mm -hmm. He should either play knight f2 check or queen f1 check. Karyakin gave it a very long thought. Yeah, that he spent so <laughs> ha yeah. half an hour here. This yes. is, uh, he must have considered every uh, possible... Yeah, this is tough for Karyakin, right? He had a long time pressure phase. Now he gets out of it, he's in trouble, and he spends half an hour, uh, and he's more or less straight back into to time pressure. Mm -hmm. so this is yeah, uh, he doesn't get a lot of uh, rest in no, this game, no, not no, at all. You, you can't say that. No, this is it. Okay, we saw the evaluation jumping, but very moderately. I think that uh, that is not really... Well, um, it continues getting better. Mm -hmm. So let's say knight of two check. And... You think his idea is to go to h4 in this well, position? I think so. Otherwise, it looks very, very dangerous. But of course, knight h4 also looks incredibly <laughs> dangerous. Yeah, this is... Uh, well, King this h4, is sorry. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. now we can see also that the engine seems to have uh, gotten around to that. This is very, very dangerous for, for, for white. What happens here? I mean, queen f1 is threatening... As Mate. far as I can see, made in Just one move. Very, very straightforward. But it also looks extremely scary. So let me give a check on h8. Well, that's uh, also the only <laughs> move and you can do. And another check on c6. Again, the only move. Am I just... You're saying that you could just be... No, I'm saying I... Given perpetual. 
As far as the F6 is the only legal move here, right? No, King F5, King F5 is a very legal move. Because, <laughs> and maybe it's a... So let's see, after King F5, you could play but Queen D5 check. Check. <gasps> Look, Aronian's about to make a move. Yes. Or not? No, 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 no. He was just adjusting a piece. But it now would be King way F6 too is the only legal move, right? I keep saying there's only <laughs> one legal move. <laughs> I think you're simply a bit tired. <laughs> oh. No, no. Uh, he's just adjusting something on the okay, board. Okay. So after King F6, uh, well, it really looks like uh, White has quite some checks here. But does it? Queen C6 check? I, I thought I could uh, go for well, a walk. Do you really think that you can push my two, two pieces like that? My queen and my rook? Well... I mean, the moment you stop checking me, I'm going to give mate, yeah, I hope. Yeah, that I understand. But I, I will preferably never stop doing that. Yeah. Queen takes c7 check. Okay. King d4. And queen f4 check. Okay, that was a bit of an annoying surprise. We are getting in the neighborhood of... Some of us winning. King c3. <laughs> Queen e5 check. Yeah. yeah, there is a lot to calculate here, of uh. course. And king b3, right? Queen yeah. e3 check. It's a very long line we're looking at right now. Queen c2. Oh, that's Yeah, nice. I just want to win one analysis against you, and I think actually yes. I managed. Right? Here you managed. Yeah, well, I didn't try very hard. So. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so it's going to be interesting <laughs> what Ronian does. Yeah. It's actually, well, we have played here for four and a half hours, a bit more, and both players had to calculate some extremely difficult uh, lines right. right now. I mean, this is, I mean, we were talking about the practical perspective in uh, Aronian, sorry, in, in Kramnik and Mamadiarov. I mean, it's a bit the same here, right? This is uh, this awfully difficult lines to, to calculate, and... I mean, you think Aronian will well, go for the walk? <laughs> no, I, I think uh, there is also a very good argument for playing knight f2 check. Okay. And after king h4, simply taking on b5. Uh -huh. What is it that you have won by this? Uh, well, we have been discussing the position after rook h8 immediately, king g6, mm -hmm. and king g6, and queen well. c6 check. So, I mean, here you're just... Yeah, if, if that is uh, legal and even good, then of course it, it's well, ver very bad news. It's again for a very practical uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And, well, that could be, I would guess, well, in, in very Aronin's dis shoes, dis it's something to consider uh, very much, actually. I, I simply I don't see. Um, Good con continuation no. for, for Karyakin. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what his, his point is. Let's say he plays rook h8 check here and king g6. But, well, he doesn't, he can't even play queen c6 check anymore. No. And his king is worse placed than he used to be. Okay, and after knight f2 check, king h4 is absolutely the only move. Well, let's see what happens after king g2. I think knight e4 should be, uh, well... Check. And yeah, if king I h3 is the only move. Uh -huh. And let's say... If I now play... Well, I have a threat on e4, at least. Yeah, uh, my feeling is that this should be made. Okay, knight g5 check. King g4. Mm. Yeah, this could be something that he has. You know, but even here I can play queen takes b5. I, I mean, I'm giving up on mate yeah, for, for the time being. It's true that your king is just going to be extremely your safe Your king, there. yeah, uh, well, <laughs> the king on g6, well, yeah. even more than that, it will it will. So you're saying the key is basically to take off the b-pawn and maybe most realistic, sorry, we got it like this, king h4, and now don't go for mate, just take this pawn and uh, importantly defend well, the c6 square. I'm saying that it's also possible to do the other thing, but mm -hmm. uh, well, this is very simple and practical and uh, well, it's not unlikely that uh, he will no, have... I, uh, I actually, I don't see what is the upside for Karyakin playing like this. Mm -hmm. No, I... I'm not sure what... I, I can't see the defense uh, either. I have well, to sort of the, the resource that he could be hoping for. 
Oh, As, uh, yeah. Well, both uh, both his king on h4 is terrible, and uh, maybe and he simply evaluated that this was the best practical chance. But we did think that giving a check and queen c6 check was not uh, completely hopeless. It, it still also looked bad. Well, it looked bad. Mm -hmm. No, it's interesting, but Just at least Aronian is seems to, to, to have quite a, a pause here. And uh, But the same is the <laughs> situation in the other game. I think Kramling is, is thinking hard, should he play this uh, nice move rook d8? And we have both, both white players have spent basically mm -hmm. half an hour coming up. Oh, so today could be a bad, w a bad day for white. <laughs> well, they are... One point ahead, at least. But so uh, far, yeah, yes. but it's true. But but in the other, it well, in the two games, yeah, white is. You're right. In you're trouble. Right. No, that would be quite extraordinary. <laughs> For this tournament, especially, yes. Uh, let's assume Aronian is actually going to win this. Then he will be equal with Anand before tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But he will actually still be behind in the sense that, um, let's say the game tomorrow is a draw. Then mm -hmm. Anand will by definition, have the better tiebreak uh, in that sense. So maybe Aronian will still think tomorrow is an important game to win. Because well, that he will. He's white. Because then, for sure. But then he will have a, a point uh, lead to Anand, and he will have an individual score that's equal. So it's not clear who will win the tiebreak. But he could think that simply... Well, I think he will just play a game of chess and see how it goes mm -hmm. in, 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 sure. in, in some sense. Um, but uh, no, I just wanted to point out that despite Aronian catching up with Anand, he's not there fully yet in the sense that uh, the individual score is not in his favor. No, yes. so well, I, one could say if they were completely equal, maybe Aronian would be very cautious. But he's still going to be um, well a quarter of a point behind in the sense that he has. Should the game be uh, drawn, he would well, have guaranteed the, the worst time. It break. also depends on how he sees himself. If he sees himself as a clear favorite, mm -hmm. sure, in this tournament, but also well. As we have uh, spoken about uh, some rounds ago, well, Aronian by now is clearly the second player by rating in the world. For sure, for so, sure. So uh, he should see himself as uh, as a favorite in every game. No, here. That, that, no, I think that's Maybe true. He and does. Of course, he's going to put put pressure on Vichy, and I think also, well, just the motive of revenge to a certain extent um, will will also play a factor. Mm -hmm. But actually, okay, Kramnik Mamadiyev is not over. If it's a draw, they will still be on 50% on together with uh, Switler. But let's say Maudiaf wins it, then actually he will be in on shared uh, third, third place, place. <laughs> suddenly. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, a lot is at stake in that, in that But game. he has a bad score against both the leaders. He's lost both to Mamed sorry, to, to Anand and to, to, to Aronian, right? That's right, so yes. Yeah, those were the two uh, we, we first are games. going a bit mm -hmm. of ahead of ourselves, but just trying to understand the, the tournament situation. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that Aronian is thinking so hard. He should, I think. Well, yeah. he's made, you know... Does he have any other moves than knight f2 check? Yeah, he has queen f1 check. Queen f1 check, okay. As well. Of course, he has to to see if if he's not missing uh, an immediate win. But I think what happens after Queen F one is that uh, well, uh, Kriakin can think about King H two, maybe. King H <laughs> two. Oh. Well, it looks weird, of course, because Knight F two check, uh, uh, Knight F two, sorry, exists with with uh, a threat of two mates. Even. Well, I thought Knight E one also is but no, that would be a very bad move. <laughs> that would not be very fortunate, no. But Knight F two. But then I guess rook h8 and queen c6 comes into play, right? So, not really. Well, it does for a bit. Or is it the same position as before? I'm just curious if you can. Well, let's have a look at this rook h8 check. check, king g6, queen c6, and now. Um, ah, now in the picture, actually, we see apart from the two arbiters, we see Jana Bellin. She's uh, the feeder medical officer, I think. Mm -hmm. She's probably here for the doping test. So maybe some players have been surprised today with, with doping tests. Well, I tests. think she's waiting for the... Because, n well, m my <laughs> least experience is that she's waiting for the last <laughs> game to finish. <laughs> game to and finish and she will <laughs> sort yes, of... Uh -huh. And someone, yeah, uh, someone who had a lot of... Uh, a I very long game. I don't know if everybody has to be tested in, in this tournament or how it works. I have no uh, idea. No. I know that, let's say, in the World Cup, if you reach uh, semi-finals mm -hmm. in the knockout World Cup, you have to. Yeah. And before that, it is random. Mm. And s uh, well, generally, it is random in all the team events. Uh, you can be chosen by, I think, by a computer. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to sound absurd, but I was actually tested in the last candidates tournament. And it's worth mentioning I wasn't one of the players. <laughs> and I wasn't even tested because I was one of the seconds. It's simply that like in other sports, when you're under the VADA program, the sort of international anti-doping program, mm-hmm. they have to test some players out of competition. And I think in principle, every player rated more than 2450 uh, are obliged to give a doping test out of competitions when asked. And uh, well, I was r- to an extent randomly selected for a doping check during last year's candidate when I was there as a second. So, well, I think actually when Carlson was winning a very nice game against um, Gelfand with white, the white pieces, I had to, to go and uh, do a doping test. There were, well, Berlin was one of the. Um, the yeah, but it's still medical officers well, is doing it. That surprises me a bit. As uh, well, what would be wrong if, with you being doped when you're not playing? <laughs> well, I am a player. Yes, you are. I mean, definitely. I'm still playing. Well, you're saying that. Uh, well, I've practically speaking quit my career. Can no, I actually no, 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 <laughs> no, no, finish not, at that point? No, that's not what I mean. I mean that. Well, of course, as as someone who is competing mm-hmm. in the tournament, you you cannot be doped. But as as someone who is on holiday. Yeah, well, I think part of the problem is also that, let's say, would I dope myself, for instance, with EPO or something like this? Mm -hmm. You might only be able to trace it for a certain amount of time, and it could still have a longer effect and you can trace it. I think that could be part of the uh, Mm -hmm. explanation. I think also with something like blood doping, it might have a longer-lasting effect uh, in a Mm -hmm. way. But to be honest, it's not exactly the thing I know the most about. Yeah, exactly. The problem (laughs) with with, uh, with the chess players, even the professional chess players and doping, is that we don't know (laughs) what they are. It was a very friendly and extremely professional uh, environment and such. And this was... uh, No, I think it was uh, even a a rather interesting experience (laughs) in some way, although a a bit absurd in, in its own way. But I think that's why... Okay. Berlin is here. Okay, we got to move. Knight of two, check. And we expect Kayakin to go forward with his king. Let's see. Yeah, he has to, I think. Mm-hmm. That, that, yeah, he, he, he just, just, he just mm-hmm. did. So we have this position on the board. Okay, check and king h4. And now we think, oops, I was about to say Aronin would play the move, but he just, yeah, same. Shadoop the piece, but actually, he, I think he just had his hand over there. And also in the other game, Kramnik is still thinking, and he's b- down to around 22 minutes. So mm-hmm. this is, well, yeah, he's going from one <coughs> time trouble directly to yeah, the next one. This is but that's well, that's his position simply. Yeah, I think it, it is. Well, the point is that blame. if he finds a defense, it could be enough, and it will draw the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's such a sharp or direct position that it's mainly about uh, the quality of his position yeah. not, and, not, uh, and not as uh, yes we discussed before well there okay. are well, many Aronian p- mm-hmm. played this move that we thought was actually the best it was Victoria suggesting just taking on b5 and we simply don't see how Kayakin is gonna get an attack in against the, the king I see Aronian do not exactly look like a worried man I think the contra- now Kramnik was making a move actually mm-hmm. should we switch to that game quickly. Oh yeah, we should we should do that as probably Karyakin will also mm-hmm. give it some thought. Let's see here. Mm-hmm. Kramnik has he just made a, made a move. And he left. It's gonna be very interesting which move that would be. Mm-hmm. We haven't still gotten No, no Rook, Rook D eight. He okay. played this move, yeah. That's quite and this quite impressive, I think. Yeah. Hmm. We think that in principle it could be a losing move, but it's a very good practical decision. Or maybe his position was just lost well, anyway. Well, yeah, it's actually a bit difficult to establish if his position is lost or if it's just uh, much worse. It's, it's so complex. V- very much so. Well. And I think even with computers running and such, it's gonna be, there are going to be some kind of evaluation of the resulting positions. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to say. But, well, at least this is a, a try to making it uh, an immediate draw. He doesn't want to defend the position just a pawn da- down for a long time. No, I think Rook D8 is uh, the best uh, practical chance possible. I, I, I very much agree. And now, well, and even it's not obvious, with the very best play, if Mamacharov can win it. No. So, well, it, it is a good move. Yeah, I, I, I like it, but mainly from the sort of um, practical aspect. 
But so now we have a yeah, we have no players at the board. <laughs> but okay, Mahmoud Yarov have tons of time. His opponent has just spent basically yeah. forty minutes on a, on a few moves. And he will give it some time in this position. Well, I think he should. It's gonna. This is actually, I think, what's gonna be the very interesting uh, thing remaining in this round. Will Will Mahmoud Yarov find a beautiful win here? Or will he even try? He it's will try, I think. Yeah, I agree, but it is actually, it is very complex. Uh, another thing is that it's not easy, yes. No. Uh, I mean, there is this huge threat of d7 and just queening the pawns, right? Mm -hmm. And, well, he has to do something like a check. And when the king goes to, I forgot. Well, it's h2. h2. And there's even rook f2 check now, but then... The king is going to go forward. Well, most then likely. you're not hi hitting the. No, uh, something like knight. this, and then d7, and rook c2, and it seems that. Uh, well, king g3 is clearly the only move. Uh, that is just a given. Uh, actually, uh, well, you say that it's a very complicated line, but how complicated Maybe is it? Maybe it's not too complicated. Yes. So it's check here. If you go rook, rook g2, g2 well, king, king f4 is losing uh -huh. very clearly. So it is king h4. You're saying to this, this until here, it's actually you're saying almost trivial. Well, trivial is too strong, I think. But uh, yes, I think both players will 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 see that uh, mm -hmm. without. And now, topic. after Bishop f5, you're threatening mate by. I think Bishop e6 was the move, if I'm okay. not mistaken. I well, I'm not sure, sure. about the difference, but okay, uh, well, so let's let's make it correct. Uh, yeah, if I could manage, I would be happy to. So Bishop e6 is threatening. Check, check, and mate, right? So he actually well, has to yeah. do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So after bishop e6. I think rook f8 check. Now that would be very logical, yeah. yes. Now it and is uh, white who has suddenly time to make some moves. Okay, and now I assume it's not taking it, right? No, taking is, is no good. So you have to go to g6 very likely. This is threatening rook g4 mate so that you don't have time to take a queen right no so i assume can you go rook g8 in this position well that's a, a good question after rook g8 bishop takes g8 how does this look like d8 queen for instance well there was also after rook g8 the move king h6 yeah yeah for sure that's another well <laughs> that could that could even be bad for black as as there is another queen coming <laughs> Yeah, and if bishop e6, there's a check on e8. But yeah. after rook d8, how is king h6? I'm threatening mate in one. Well, how's rook takes g5? Maybe pretty good. Um, because this line, yeah. I guess you can go but d8. Wait a second, what about uh, if I do rook h2 check? Ah. And after king g3, bishop takes d7. Something like this. That's a nice line. And rook d5, you're gonna check me on h3. So rook c, uh, rook c5 should be the move. Rook c5. And I am gone, but this is a lost position. It could be at least, yeah. No, mm. but actually, uh, what was your point after rook d5 here? Bishop d7, rook d5. Uh, rook h3 check. Yes, king f4. And after bishop c8, you're going to go rook d8. Yes. And I don't have a square for the bishop. No, but then you have c3. <laughs> c3, yes. take c2. Yeah. This is an amazing line. It's very yeah. beautiful. It's not simp It's also, I'm a bit puzzled by the computer saying 0 0.85, because either it has a horizon problem, we well, doing I think something it has uh, something wrong. No, but it both. probably has has a horizon yeah. problem, as it is a very uh, long line mm -hmm. here. He, well, computer is stopping at some point and making an evaluation, obviously. Mm -hmm. So the rook h3, yeah, that's quite quite a line here. Yeah, no, that's gonna be gonna be very interesting. How is he actually just gonna go straight down this? Mamed Yarov can definitely do it, I think. Yeah, for sure. But even objectively speaking, okay, it is a tough line to, to, to calculate. 
That's true. <laughs> but there is no risk in it, and there is no other way to play for a win. So somehow, it's something that he should at least gradually try and get in that direction. Yeah, but right? how are you justifying playing bishop h3 check, for instance? I think I would justify it by at least I'm pushing away his king. But you may be saying that I know this is the right move, so yes. I'll come up with any kind of <laughs> <laughs> explanation. Then you can yeah, have sure. an explanation. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, we have uh, those two very interesting remaining games. But still, if you have any comments or tweets uh, for us, please uh, use hashtag candidates2014. We will be happy to, to answer them. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we have a new move in uh, in Karyakin's game. Let's, um, let's have a game. brief look at that. After Queen takes b5, Karyakin has played the move just g4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, g4 is... Well, I like it a bit. Well, it has the idea of king g3 and starting to poke the knight. And uh, That's probably I'm a good practical chance. I understand this might, might be winning, but... Um, well, I think is at this it point, so everything is... it so is trivial? No, it's a nice uh, chance. Are I you going to win by mating the white king, or are you going to win by queening something? Well, I think for a start, you have to avoid um, white giving you... Um, well, white finding a perpetual. But g4 yeah. is a nice move, for sure. What actually happens after the move queen f1? Am I... Ah, then it's rook h8, king g6, queen c6, I think. Yeah, right? and this now it's uh, very important that you don't have king f5 anymore. You think <laughs> and you're I getting I mated. I'm made in the next move. Yes, okay, so that is nice. Let's <laughs> say that I wanted to illustrate that. So, okay, g4. How is Kayakin going to do with this? It's not easy. <laughs> Again, if he moves his queen, not to f1, but somewhere even closer. I was thinking about the drastic move g5, but uh -huh. I think I'm having... Well, you can really get mated here quickly. <laughs> I'm trying to have fun. I think my idea should be this, and I'm sort of hoping nothing stops this and uh, mate. Even if you take it with the rook, it's going to be mate. But uh -huh. m maybe king g3 would be a dream come true for... For black, actually, for white. Well, very much so. I think as B2 now still exists, but it, no, I think G5 is not exactly. Well, today we don't have a good record for G5 move. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think this is not going to happen. So, so how do you, how do you win this? Maybe there's no threat at all. Can we just play C4? Yeah, C4 is definitely a logical. It also gives the queen Move. a bit of uh, scope on the on the yeah. fifth. I think it's the fifth. Yeah, it is the fifth. Like this. But then you take on b5 and you play c4 and you sort of claim that this is a, a positional uh, line more okay. or less. And what about f4 here? Yeah, f4. <laughs> You're saying it's not as positional as I well, thought. Well, and I'm claiming that uh, I am the one trying to mate you, not the other way around. No, no, I'm trying to do this calmly, but uh, apparently well, you have other intentions. <laughs> this is actually amazing. Yeah. It's very and what impressive. is the threat? It's rook h8. Well, rook h8 and well, f5, queen d8 check there. And that's well, anything not, not might gonna happen. not going to go very well for me. Hmm. So anything might happen. So c4 is dangerous, tr simply dangerous. Well, let's say, okay. If black just wants to make sure he's not worse, can he play queen d7 or something like that? I really want to control the c6 square. You were talking about not being worse. No, no. Well, I mean, show me a good move. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's say queen d7 and potentially g5 check, but in the future. Well, uh, when I have everything under control. Mm-hmm. How's this looking? Yeah, I'm a bit unsure what... Am I even considering most like King G3 and hitting your knight? Yeah, that I thought could be an option. And the point is, if I play knight D3, then after uh, rook D8... I, I hope that somehow <laughs> it was wow. my, my turn to win something here. 
Yeah, this is amazing. I Queen D7 is a very bad. I mean, Rook H8 and Queen E4 check could also be interesting, but Rook D8 looks well. Well, nice. it's not necessary. So D4. Yeah, G4 is is, is uh, well. We can safely say that Karyakin didn't waste those 40 minutes or half an hour that he spent. He found some very interesting way to to stay in the game. Yeah. And uh, well, a very logical uh, way for white uh, for black to play would be just to push the pawn. The I mean, there's nothing more logical than just playing c4. But then white has this amazing f4, which controls the g5, which makes sure that black has no checks, and then rook h8 check becomes a threat. Uh, it's almost hard to believe. And uh, well. Aronin has four pawns for <laughs> his exchange at the moment. Yeah, right now pawns doesn't feel overly important. No, no, important. the, the po well, they, they are not. Mm -hmm. But is he better? <laughs> I, I would really think well, so. Well, the computer so. has, has a very clear evaluation saying that black is almost... Okay, uh, What's the m what, what is the move then? Is well, queen c4 is the move. Queen c4. I just glanced at the computer. Okay. And this... Well, if we have to try and explain well, it. Well, this is just preventing f4, I think. So you're saying here f4 is simply a huge threat. f4 is a huge threat. We'll, we'll simply uh, like this, and you will contain the king on yeah. h7 and start yeah, counterplay. Exactly. So you have to do queen c4. Queen c4 is, uh, well. And, well, the human argument would be that now check, and you have allowed two checks in a row. But, that but you might can play not queen e6 here. Okay. Even. Uh, I would guess so. You can, yeah. you can play like this, and, and then you're back to this. Nice endgame, most likely. Although well, there is a difference. There's no white B pawn this time. That I understand. Uh, well, so yeah. Well, and uh, Erwin mm -hmm. Lamy is tweeting that uh, Queen C4 is an incredibly difficult move to find. Yeah, that's what we think as well. Queen yeah. C4 is no. Well, it has. There is some rationale, uh, and that is preventing F4. But you can get around to it if you get to understand that F4 is the threat. But yes. can you actually get around to understanding that? If if you understand that F4 is a threat, then queen c4 is a logical move. Yeah. And also, well, I yeah. But just explain me, why is queen c4 good and queen b4 not, if it's about... I was just thinking about it, and I think that's because, well, you can make it on the, on the board, uh -huh. I think that after queen b4, okay, queen rook h8 check, for instance, uh, king g6, king queen c6 check, you don't have queen e6 okay, here. Okay, that was actually... And that's made. That's, impossible. that's possible to understand. Yeah. This is interesting, if you will... It's not impossible to, to get around to these things, mm -hmm. but of course... But you have to evaluate a couple of things very accurately. You have to start understanding C4, F4. And yes, uh, yes, exactly. Is that really... Well, how easy that is, that yeah. is... That is, well, of course that is hard to say. No, of course yeah. it's not impossible for, for these guys. <laughs> no, but you... Yeah. <laughs> but we are down, it, it looked like already such a winning position for black, and now we are yeah. again down to only move that is winning mm -hmm. and that only shows well <laughs> what a complicated game that is mm -hmm. yeah i agree this is no this is gonna be somehow i think he's gonna make it actually but i think he will get there by some kind of elimination process yes simply. exactly mm -hmm. Uh, well, that always helps when you can but see it is that. true. If someone told you here there's one more winning, I mean, would Queen C4 be your first guess? I, I don't think so. Well, I think first you would check, of course, something like G5 check and yeah, things sure, like that. Sure. You would check the most, um, uh, well, yeah, the most. Uh, <laughs> oh, we see two press officers giggling in the, yeah, in the yeah. background. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice. They have some free time now. On football stadiums, sometimes they will find themselves on the video screen, but I think these two don't know they are live. That's my impression. But no, <laughs> no, but well. <laughs> there is, there is, even a, is it a third press guy, actually? No, I, I think, think so. it's a spectator. It's a spectator. <laughs> I, I think okay. it's the same one. That's, that's nice. Okay, <laughs> let's yeah. The spectator today. <laughs> so so let, let's, uh, let's see. Hmm. But he doesn't look like someone who had this, you know... He has found some brilliant move, right? He looks like someone who's trying to think and no, doesn't really... I think really in his shoes I would be very scared that suddenly it's so complicated. It's, it's so scary. You, yeah. you just thought you were winning completely. Well, and I, now I you can see that... I would desperately try to find perpetual. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't rule that out. No. 
Okay, Derek he's King, made Queen it. C4. Wow, that wow. is impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think he found it by some sort of elimination mm -hmm. uh, method by seeing that uh, all the rest uh, simply doesn't work. And how bad is it now for Kayakin? Is it just over or can you... Let's... Well, the I mean, point... Let me make a funny move. Let me make a Fred made in one. Because as far as I can see, you cannot give any reasonable king check, check the king. <laughs> That's quite the a queen. move. Right? Yeah, but Do you uh, have to play g6? But maybe that's enough. I think g6 should be fine. Uh, well, I think g6, king h4, and uh. queen d4 if you want something very solid. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, without even uh, calculating now, now anything. Now the queen is coming to, to f6. Yeah, and uh, well, here I will be... Well, this I will win little by you little. Just that's just... That's yeah, just going to be fine. I was thinking rook f8, but I don't think I'm in time. No. So queen c4, that's, uh, that's very that's an impressive, impressive moment for mm -hmm. Ronian, and he's yeah. well, really setting himself up. What he has wasted in his game against Andregan, he might have uh, yeah. managed uh, how, here. How is this ending we were talking about? Yeah, so check. that's what I'm also wondering about. Another Rookie check. King g6. g6, and as far as I can see, can you take the pawn on c7 here? I thought just completely unrealistic. Well, I don't think there's anything. So let's say take here and rook c8. Is this just completely gone? Well, that includes a bit of <laughs> calculation. For instance, if I just play b5 now, and after rook c7, knight d3. Yeah. And well, Basically, generally it should be terrible. I don't really it. have a blockade here. You actually no. just have pawns no. uh, I have rolling have two through. pawns, which is already very mm -hmm. good, but I also have a knight. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's nice. But, uh, well, what else? Maybe taking on c7, as you suggested, is a practical chance. Mm -hmm. Mamadiarov is still thinking, so yeah. let, let's stay on this game for a while and see. We should do that, yes. Uh, we, we should well, stay here. Is there any way he can play on, actually? You're suggesting that he should, in this position, take the pawn on c7. Well, as long as he's not directly losing, he, he should do something like that. Yeah, I would think there is even some kind of threat, right? Not, I mean, not, not a massive not maybe threat. <laughs> well, it is a massive threat, but it's yeah, yeah it, it takes a bit of time I mean. <laughs> to defend against it, yeah. I would think. Well, let's say I can play c4. And after you do rook d8, can I just play king h7? Hmm. Well, my point would be after rook d6 to play queen e1. Yeah, well, I think simply what will happen here is that black will combine mating threats with, uh, with pushing the pawns yeah, a little by little. Do something like this, and but somehow hope. I can still, I can still take it. Well, I, I was think. hoping I was winning one of your pawns. But uh, maybe I'm queening. Well, not on time. No, yeah. here I will play knight d3. So, well, that's not so good for me. <laughs> no, I think, <laughs> I think even that is working out for no. me. No. Well, we yeah. see that evaluation jumped to minus one point sixty one. And I think it will, uh, well, actually become even worse for yeah. white. But 1.61 is still, it's somehow Undefined. a bit of a blurry uh, evaluation in such a complex position, right? Well, I think it's has potential of getting worse. <laughs> yeah. No, this looks, this looks... No, I, I don't like see a, any like other way for Kayakin, like that, that is true, mm -hmm. so... He has to do rook h8 check. Mm -hmm. Well, he's put up a good fight uh, here uh, towards the end, I think. Okay, we have a new move in Mamejarov, uh, in, in Kramnik Mamejarov. Do we? Okay. Uh, well, we yeah. can see that on the okay, screen. Uh, this just happened. Okay. Move Let's see. Eight. Let's see. Mm -hmm. What has happened there? Kramnik. Well, I think Kramnik made his... Well, he replied instantly, so probably it was bishop h3 check yeah. and king h2. Okay, sure. just okay. just as expected, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's still very undefined. No, I think we have seen some slips in winning positions in this tournament so far in the yeah, fifth yeah. hours, but this time it could be that it can't be ruled out both players will actually manage it, right? 
I think that is somehow it seems the more likely, I would say. I would even say it's more likely that they both managed, that even one of them uh, you do not manage. So? I think so, yes. Well, I because it's a very straightforward I think line. Aronian is mm -hmm. basically there, and I think Mahmoud Yav will partly find it, partly he's forced to go there, basically. Mm -hmm. It is, well, these lines that we were discussing, uh, these very long uh, forced lines. Yeah, let, let's remind ourselves. Yeah. So it is rook c3, it is d7. Mm -hmm. Then it's a check. Yeah, King you G. cannot go down, right? Uh, because it's just uh, a mate. King H. No, well, explain me why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let's say, well, if if I play knight f3, then I run into rook f8 check, and that's a bit of a problem. Kind of, yes. So. So bishop g2 check, most bishop likely. Bishop g2 check, mm -hmm. and I think. King h2 is the only move. Yes. And uh, now it must be, ah, okay, it must be something like bishop c6 check now, for instance. Mm -hmm. And when you play king uh, g3, I play rook g2 check. And when king goes here? Well, I thought I could do something like <laughs> knight f3 check, but then, no, okay. It's not so easy. It's getting a bit out of hand. <laughs> it, it is, it is, it is. Actually, those two pawns on c7 and d7, they are, yeah. they are there. <laughs> so, wow. Now, king h1 is a losing move, but, well, we are desperately trying to find, <laughs> find out why. why. Okay. It seems that it is knight f3 check. Okay, then, so then I... Say rook f8 check. <gasps> queen, uh -huh. and after... How do you get out of checks here? Well, that is good. <laughs> no, I think you don't. I don't think you can do this. Okay, so... Mm. Uh -huh, it's maybe no, the it's concept is that you play king e6 ah, here, king e6 <laughs> and you come closer to the pawns. And then when you take here, you're gonna give a check. Yes. And when the king goes away, you king take this d6. pawn. Even this line. Yeah. Is it so easy to find? They will manage. Uh, they will I think, manage this. I also uh, think so. But no. But I think they are gonna get there by elimination or by by chance to some extent. And also it's it's difficult, but it's they. I mean, they this are is the best good. players in yes. the world. I mean, they are they are actually not just commentating but playing. I think they are. <laughs> but okay, he's not looking like someone who is. Uh, Calculated till made and no, I think well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not yet. No, no. Let's see. Okay, Kayakan is still having haven't moved. But no, uh, but uh, it's getting increasingly difficult for him to do something in this very position. Very much so. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, it seems like Aronian has almost made it, and of but course, Mamedarov. Yeah. Kayakan will drop to shared last place. Actually well, why share it last? Because place? Andrakin won. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think he will share it. He will be last. On minus two? Yes. But you're thinking tie breaks? No, I'm thinking that Andrakin is on minus one only. No, he was minus three, wasn't he? No, I don't think so. He didn't lose against ah, Aronian. He, he drew against yes. Aronian. So Kayakin will simply be on minus two on points. Yeah. And then we have Andrakin and Tupalov on minus one. Exactly. And we could even have Kramnik on minus one. Depending on depending today's on today's result, result. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, we are seeing a lot of movement in the stand. Well, it's true. It's not like what, there are. What is this? Uh, nothing, nothing. I thought he was saying something. No. No, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think he was yawning, maybe. Okay. But uh, but yeah. uh, well, it's true that players. Well, it's not like we have a clear uh, well, uh, clear underdogs. Well, no. it seemed like Andrekin was uh, was an underdog based on his rating and mm -hmm. well based on his performance in the first rounds. But let's say today's win was very nice and yeah, uh, he's, he's not that far o away from from the main group of players minus two it's sort of minus one after the first seven games that's not a disaster for no. it's even i would think could it even be moderately above his expected score i wouldn't rule that out at all i uh, think actually that, that, that could be, yeah. be the case so mm -hmm. well you know. he was number 42 in life ratings before yeah. this tournament began uh, he's just above two seven right i think the average yeah. is uh, this the is actually is quite high. I, yeah, I yeah. think he has won a few couple of ratings. I understand that uh, this is a tournament well, I don't think he's where you qualify for a yes, world championship yes. match, but uh, yes. but just sort of to have a some kind of measurement for evaluating his performance here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No, no. So we could, well, today again could could uh, be quite important and, uh, well, change the standings yeah. quite a bit. But no, Mohamed Yarov could actually suddenly be, be in it in a way. But also, let's say this game actually ends in a draw. Then we could have Aronian and Anand in sole lead by plus two, right? And having a, a full point uh, clear of the field. Mm -hmm. Actually, then their game tomorrow becomes incredibly important. Well, it's going to be incredibly important anyhow. <laughs> uh, generally speaking, yes. But of course, let's say they have a point clear of everybody else. I mean, mm -hmm. the winner of that game could take an enormous lead in the tournament. That's true. That's true. The winner of that game will, will be... Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be far away from no, everyone it's else. It's going to be a bit interesting to see how they will approach it. Will, well, I think Anand is black, so normally speaking, he shouldn't. Well, he should just play normal chess. But yes. if Aronian wanna, is he gonna gamble or is he gonna think that, okay, six rounds, half a point more than Anand, that's not impossible at all. Let's not do something stupid. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, that's gonna be very interesting. I think to see well, how, how that will go. Uh, it it's, is. It's hot. I think it's hard to predict, but of course, with the white pieces and such. Well, another thing could be that, well, Anand is maybe relaxing now or preparing. Aronian is sitting at the board calculating very hard. That's true. This, well, those uh, very long games, yeah, they, they, uh, they take a lot of energy. He did have just a free day, but still. Yeah. So, no, let, let's see. Kramnik is walking around rather confidently. Oh, maybe not confidently, but... Well, uh, there's not that much for him no, to do. No, there's not so much. He just no. have to, you just have to wait, simply, right? Exactly. And, uh, well, objectively speaking, he is lost. You feel completely sure about that. Let, let's go I, I over the line. Mm -hmm. So, rook c3, d7, we think. Mm -hmm. Check. Rook c2. King g3, right? Yes. Now, rook g2, check. And if king f4, then it's... Knight e6, takes c7. No. Yes, yes, that is the line, but actually, <laughs> let's, let's that, go a bit is further. Is that so simple? <laughs> yes, let's say knight e6, king e3. Mm -hmm. Knight takes c7. Isn't and rook I f8 think that kind of a move? Yeah, but I think rook f8 check, king f8, d7. And now we get one of these situations where the knight is uh, an excellent Amazing, defender. Amazing, yes. This is completely winning. Yeah. But also, that, that well, in a pretty miraculous way, <laughs> sure. you could say n none of the pieces. If none of the pieces fall, then... No, then but it that, is that could be winning. Mm -hmm. So, let's say we were debating another king line. H4. King h4. Mm -hmm. and bishop e6. As bishop e6, would that be the only way? Oh, that's a very good question. Let's say, um, well, he needs to threaten mate here. But bishop f5 would threaten mate, but then rook f8 takes f5 could be a problem, I would uh, presume. Well, it's a huge problem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so bishop no, e6. That you cannot do. Bishop e6, you have to And now we set... Rook f8 check. check. Here. King g6. Okay, we have a move, which has been rook c3. Yeah, so, okay, we will continue with the changes, analysis. Yes. So, rook g8 check, and now... And now king h6 You don't take it move. for some reason. Well, for, for a very clearly reason. That was um, d8 queen. d8 yes. queen, and here the queen uh, mm -hmm. is, is a bit better, because c, c8 is also and a threat. In this threat. position, there is a threat of mate in one. Yes. And rook f8, you can, for a start, take on d7. So you're going to take on d5, right? Yes. And now the key move was this check. Yes. King g3. Here, this check. And now we discuss queen d5. Ki no. Oh, sorry, did you take on d7 in this position? No, no, I think, well, I did, but I think rook h3 check is mm -hmm. better. Okay. Now they're actually making some moves. Yeah. So let's let's, let's, just let's jump, go to, back jump to that. To that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they have yes. this position. Let's see if. Yeah, they are Still, actually yeah, going. They are going this very straightforward way, and um, hmm. Hmm. it's left Kramnik with something to think about. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this. King H four. Yeah, they are. They are good. <laughs> well, this was stage one, which we thought he would manage. Right now. The next stage is finding bishop e6 in this position. Yeah, that's true. Um, how straightforward that is, is, uh, is another question. But, well, normally it is helpful when you don't have uh, that many good things to choose from. No, no. <laughs> it is quite amazing. Well, I still I think, think Rook D8 was a good practical chance for him. 
Yeah, I think the other position was also quite horrible and not not much to do. But yeah. Uh, still, let's see if Mamadi. Yeah. Bishop e6 is maybe the most difficult of the moves. So you think even this is not uh, uh, sort of? Well, I think it's quite difficult. But on the other hand, <laughs> should you threaten mate? It's very natural to threaten mate here. Yeah, you say. And if you play Bishop f5, then Rook f8, check, and Rook takes. F5 well, exists. your argument is making a draw in this position is not so easy either. But yeah, again, that would be. How about let's say check here and knight e6. That, as far as I can see, Fred is made in two. He's about He's to make about a bishop move, which is going to be bishop okay, e6. Well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mommy Jarv. Yeah, manages to find all the good moves so far. Mm -hmm. and bishop e6 well, that's is a brilliant. Made in so Kramnik has basically zero choice here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's been some rough days for Kramnik. Well, uh, actually quite unexpectedly. So yeah. he really seemed to play very well. Well, it depends on what you mean by play, right? You're meaning the opening phase and strategical phase, but the well, conversion phase is sort of... I mean that he's done... Uh, he's won a... Okay, Rook F8, yeah, just as expected. Sure. I think he's done very well against um, Karyakin. <gasps> King Whoa, he took Whoa, it. He took on F8. Wow. <laughs> what happens he then? He didn't play... Well, King F... Really, he took on F8. But, wow, it's... Uh, Without thinking. It's Christmas for Kramnik. He's also... <laughs> I mean... But now he's winning. Can it really be... What, what just happened <laughs> What, uh, what is this? This is... Okay, let's see. King F7. <laughs> but uh, King G7, is that... What is the point here? Is he thinking... But then there is... I would he probably queen thinks B7. that there is some sort of mate, simply. But he's missed Queen B7 with the threat of D8 Queen. Oh my god. Yes, he has missed Queen B7. <gasps> wow. That's... That's, uh, yeah, that's... That um, is a dramatic thing. This is a full point. Just exchanging hands. Yeah, that's just... And Mamadi, yeah. he hasn't seen it. I he think. hasn't seen... Oh, my Queen God. Queen Seven. Yes. Y you can see... Uh, this is the biggest drama so far, I think. Look, Kramnik is looking at Mamadi Jarv. Well, I think Kramnik can't believe it either. Probably neither can Aronian. This is going to be... Well, it's too late for Mamadi Jarv anyway. There's nothing yeah, more to spoil. Wow. Queen B7 is just a completely, completely well, winning. We just, it's uh, yeah. It's simply... In less than a minute we've seen... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We thought he was making a study like win. And instead wow. he came up with the wrong solution. And he's gonna be... Well, he can... There's no mate. There's no mate and... Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, well... <laughs> oy, oy, oy. When we were talking about luck... Yeah. <laughs> playing some role. Okay, it is. How is it even in this position? I let me say check here. If I go knight f7, I'm actually threatening perpetual. I think. No, I don't think you are. I think I am, but I'm not. D8. <laughs> You're saying D8? Oh, you can I have too many queens. Oh, and you will take on G5. But it wow, is. Wow, oh, wow. it is. Well, it Oof, will be such a blow for my major. Well, of course. Yeah, and Kramnik is suddenly back on plus one. But it's just a whole point. Yeah. Mm, it can't be described <laughs> more <laughs> precise, I agree. <laughs> wow, this is... Uh, yeah, this is... Yeah, well, well I... Well, Kramnik has yeah. also had a roller coaster now. I mean, for, he... For sure. Okay, this is, this is his chance, right? And Mamadiarov made a spectacular comeback from yeah. minus two to basically plus one. And today he one. was... Yeah. And this is what he does so well. Mm -hmm. But he He's hasn't even... You see, he hasn't even given it a thought. He no. has so much time. He well, he was. I think he thought this was made. Yeah, he he did. But, he did. But oof. This is gonna. Yeah, king takes a fate. But this is has. He simply thought knight f3 check. He couldn't protect, but this yeah. makes no sense. No, it does. It's the fifth hour. Uh, or yeah, sixth yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't last so long. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I understand. Well, it's impossible to judge the place. Yeah. It's just. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I, yeah, I feel very much pity for Mamadiyar. Yeah, um, yeah, he's played a great game. Yeah, well, he was in trouble early on, but he, he took risks. No, he and took he, he risks, did, he, he did defended. Very well. yeah. 
now okay now you see the evaluation yeah. it's yeah, yeah. uh yep yeah, it's well plus four plus yes but majorov will spend some time now in this game but, but it there won't is matter nothing left okay that was okay. that well, that was very dramatic almost too cruel to look at him should we actually go yeah. to the other game let's go bit, to the I other game say. because it's, see yeah, against it's, Aronia. it's tough yeah there's well chess is a sport these things happen right and, uh, <sighs> for sure and such well, probably Aronian is, yeah, also. Queen c8. Following this game in a way. After Queen c8. Yeah. But. It's actually not obvious. It's not well, that it matters so much to yeah, Aronian. I mean, someone would have won that game. Well, I think maybe. If Aronian had a mild preference, it would be that it's a draw, I guess. But yeah, yeah, but it was not that really possible no, no, in that position. No, no, I think also. I mean, Aronian has enough problems on his own, right? But I think mainly he feels very much pity for a colleague in, in some sense. I think that, so. Uh, I think it's simply, well, when you see yeah. something like that, uh, yeah. a, a good position going wrong in one move, well, well this is the nightmare for a Of course, you want to do well for yourself and you want to win the tournament. But yeah. also, I mean, people dropping a full point in just uh, you know a, a few seconds, it is tough. And well, it's also the toughest there is yeah. in, in chess, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, to change the subject, mm -hmm. there is a threat of Queen F5 check. I check, think, check uh, yes, uh, that, that is his point. That must be his point, right? Yeah. So after G4, Queen C4? He played the move he Queen played C8. He played Queen C8. Yeah, and uh, well, Queen F5 check shouldn't be allowed. That's, that's a given, <laughs> I think. So black should do something, well, like either queen d5 or queen f4 or, well, I don't know, queen d3 looks a bit more weak to me as, as it, it doesn't have any... But queen f4 is more forcing because, if I'm correct, there's a threat of something here, right? Well, uh, it's on h2 mate it's mate, to put it yes. Simply, yes. So, so let's see this endgame, queen f5 check. There is no choice, Oh, there right? is no choice even, yes. That's well, right. I'm just trying to figure that one out, but it seems to yeah, know he's well, playing. Yeah, queen f4, okay. yes. I think so we you think we're going to get this ending? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we have spoken of endings being hopeless before. I think Kayakin's point is now that he has at least boxed uh, the king here. and that, mm -hmm. that's, He thinks that's going to be his hope. Aronian's hope is that uh, the pawns some will of pass. these will, will, will get there in, in, in time. But I simply think, well, uh, do you see he can just play b5 if he wants that? b5 and b4 and then he can prote protect his uh, c5 pawn with knight d3 i think that this looks, is just looks very well strong. this is extremely uh, solid at least yeah and uh, well i wouldn't be surprised if these things are just gonna basically queen. go down he, uh, okay, he seems to seem to be <laughs> under that impression at least he played oh. i think his point is that he wants to put his knight on c5 no he, i think he wants to play mm. c5 now after rook e7 oh, of c5 course. and then That's how do you stop the c-pawn? No, no. No, that's, that's going to be finished very that's soon, gonna I think. Be, I really think so. Yeah, well... Well, actually, this, game could, hmm. this round could be over in a few minutes, because... And we're three decided games. Yeah, and... Well, I was about to say two black wins, but no, one no. black win and two and white wins. Two white wins. But, uh, yeah, their things have really turned around. Yeah. Well, Aronian is about to win a good game today. Generally, I think he's been extremely professional today. He's, yeah. Well, he played the Berlin, and that means that you're not necessarily trying to force a win. But yeah. as strange as it sounds, I think the opening that's given Black by far the best winning chances this tournament is the Berlin, simply due to the fact that White is quite desperately trying to, to press. Mm -hmm. And uh, Okay, rook e7, c5. And rook takes f7. Rook takes f7. I think he's assuming f6 here. But I guess even king g6, fg7, king back should be enough. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see if he's going to do that or not. But well, Aronian played c3 in like almost a split second. But yeah, maybe but here, I think maybe yeah, that's that's simply too easy. Although, well, now <laughs> I really think <laughs> yeah. people should give it some thought <laughs> yeah, before yeah, before true. making. So f6 has happened. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's well, going to go king g6 or is he just going to go c2? King g6 is enough. Just going to go king g6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't uh, understand why you didn't take the rook on f7. <laughs> Come again? Well, after king g6, f takes g7. Ah, you think, <laughs> you think, you think king h7 <laughs> is a bit too sophisticated here? 
Yes, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> it doesn't spoil anything. I no, think. not at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this game he has is decided. Resigned. Okay. And um, well, 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 we have Ronin the last. Is, is on on equal points with Anand, and they're mm -hmm. gonna have face off against each other tomorrow in well, a very crucial uh, game. It couldn't game. be more dramatic than that. No, but suddenly Kramnik will actually be there in a bit in the background, only half a point behind. Only half a point behind. Very yes. surprising. So well, uh, you need to be. Uh, Lucky sometimes in a tournament very, for it to go well very and uh, very much so. And over here, Kramnik um, had yeah. his share of luck. This is There's nothing to yeah, say. Yeah, and of course, well, there will be some focus on that luck, but uh, things are going to happen. And yeah, we but are well also, it's well, gonna he be can history. argue that he he was also unlucky at times. So yeah, <laughs> you can always remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what that when that was, but uh, yes. I mean that doesn't matter really. Uh, so. No, no, no. Of course. Well, what will ca count is well. The points in the so end. So we will have a tournament situation where it's going to be Anand Aronian plus two after the first half of the tournament. They actually play again tomorrow. Then mm -hmm. Kramnik in Anshia third place with plus one. Just and on 50% mm -hmm. we're going to have Peter Switler. And that's and it. That's it. Could it that? Yeah, I think so. We had four players before today. So Kramnik mm -hmm. went up and Topalov and Mamajarov ah, then on go down. Minus one, to we're going to have. Topalov, Mamedyarov, Andraikin, yeah. and Kayakin on minus that's, two. That's correct, yes. That should be minus five and plus five. Yeah. So that you're right. That's going to be the tournament situation. Yeah. And um, Do you think that it's getting down to basically a three-person race? Or you think, let's say, who is on 50%? That's actually only Switler. Switler. Switler is still oh, there. I think he, he Switler is still I mean, there. He's having completely wild games, even today. Even today, Maybe yes. today looked like a sort of... Kind of, not too much happening. I think no, it was not true. It was, it was very no, wild. Swidler no, actually has a, a, I mean could, a could lot of games. And well, he's still within striking distance. Yeah. I really don't think that he's out of it I in any way. I think Mamedyarov is actually not thinking about this position. He's trying to figure out how he could have won. Yeah. Well, it's that would be very human. Yeah. I, I think it's it's yeah. it's yeah. As as a fellow <laughs> as as fellow colleagues, we can also well we, yeah. we can only feel pity for that. Sure. But it's yeah. Uh, well, it's. I think we are off for a press conference, and it um, can't be ruled out this will be also finished. But, um, if not, we will we'll be here. Mm -hmm. See you then. To get a playable position in, in Berlin, and that's why I played line which is m maybe not very ambitious, but but playable and okay I mean there are many plans and I mean maybe I didn't play badly until this moment and this is I think critical moment of of, of all the game because af after the right knight takes e5 takes takes queen e5 e4 then okay maybe queen e6 is the most logical f5 and th this end game is, is probably balanced and uh, okay wh white is white is not worse for sure and i mean it it, it could be another game yes. mm -hmm. А я хотел получить игровую позицию в Берлине. Uh, может быть сыграл не слишком амбициозно. А uh, в в данном варианте у белых много планов, но а, до позиции 16 ход ДЕ а, я играл вполне неплохо. Здесь я считаю критический момент партии. Возможно, следовало побить на Е5 конем. И в конечной позиции этого варианта у белых явно не хуже. И, скорее всего, это была бы просто другая партия. Yes, and after bishop e6 it, it, is, it is already unpleasant. После слон Е6 уже неприятно у белых. I mean, pro probably with some precise moves, it, 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 why, why, why it is not worse, but... Maybe with the right moves, the red could not be able to get the best position. I actually thought that bishop f4 is perhaps uh, a mistake, that the move that you fight. I, I thought that you need to stabilize here with the bishop on f2, perhaps. Yes, but... I uh, Leon thinks that the move is on f4, maybe a mistake. Может быть, лучше было пойти слон f2. I didn't like some bishop d6, I don't know. Yeah, of course. Сергею не нравилось слон d6. It's pleasant for black, but I thought that, if, I mean, with some precise play, it should neutralize. Okay. Здесь приятнее у черных, но точной игрой белые могли бы нейтрализовать все угрозы. 
I'm actually seeing that in this position, I, I mean, of course, it is slightly better for, for black, but with some precise move, I think it should be a draw, but maybe if F is mistake, I don't know. Здесь уже, скорее всего, немного лучше у черных, но точной игрой белые могли бы добиться ничьей. А вот, может быть, G4. Может быть, G5 не самый точный ход. Just to put the bishop on G3. Ну, ход G4 возможен, чтобы перевести слова на G3. Maybe some other moves. На G3, простите. Или другие ходы. And after E5, I didn't expect that knight will come back to C4 and... Yeah, I thought you were opting for knight C4, queen C4, queen E4, but that's some unpleasant thing and yeah. Yes. Возможно, здесь Сергей мог рассматривать взятие на c4 и ферзь e4. Но и не очень приятная позиция у белых. Yeah, you play c4, yeah. Может быть, c5 здесь. Ой, c4 здесь. Okay, I didn't like it. I don't know. Maybe it should be checked. Uh, no, actually, I was very proud that I found, I found rook c1. Uh, the, the idea is after knight b2, white has c4. And I thought I'm... I'm я был очень горд тем, что нашел ход ладья c1, и после конь b2, c4, и белые держатся. Да, это очень сильно было. Да, и я очень много времени. У меня было очень мало времени. Я не нашел пути. Окей, просто один один нашел пути играть. Не нашел вариантов игры. Я думаю, может быть, король h2 или что-то. Да, но у меня есть... Может быть, король h2 сыграет. Есть сильная идея конь d3. Ферзь бьет b5. Ферзь e6. Ферзь e6, ферзь e8. Окей. Окей, может быть, здесь... It should be analyzed more deeply, and and okay, I thought it is this moves are logical, but somehow. Я думал, что следующие ходы логичны. But somehow the tactic didn't work in my favor, and. Ну тактика сложилась не в мою пользу. Yeah, I think the more or less here is everything forced up to the point. Ну здесь все форсировано. With with G3. До хода G3. Yeah, but okay, this is very unpleasant for white. Yes, yes. Здесь очень неприятная позиция у белых. Okay, maybe here it was last chance to play no check. Последний шанс был пойти так. Queen six, yeah, queen six is very important. Очень важный ход. Yes, and I thought this is. Здесь c4. Knight c5. Yes. Queen c5. Okay. But this is. I thought this is losing. I mean, I will. I will eat the pawn. Yes. I thought about it. Queen h7. Take. Here, white gave the pawn to the pawn. And then queen b queen h1 and queen b1. I thought. Yeah. It's a chance. H1. Here's b1. Queen d5. Yes. Don't don't queens. We queens too. Yes, too. Here, for example, first two. Okay, black has very big chance to win, but maybe I mean it was. And black has very big chance to win. There was just one. I think it's a beautiful line. So I'll. Now, if Levon shows one beautiful variant, I'll just show it. That this actually loses nicely. Very beautifully played. Rook d8, and this is very very exact. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not so easy to win. Это вот точный порядок ходов, иначе выиграть. And for example, выиграть. after this things, then I just play knight d3. Невозможно. And if, uh, yeah, and if the king goes to h2, uh, then, I can, then I can simply take the king is never in time. Просто могу съесть на e4, и король не войдет в игру, не успеет. And the same problem was here, also. Самое в этом варианте. Takes, takes. Here and the same check. И такой же шаг. No, this one I showed. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Нет, не так. Long game. Очень долгая партия. But anyway, this was very, very interesting. Very interesting. My rookie. It was a very. Все это очень интересно. Because you know, this looks to be winning for black. Кажется, что здесь все черные выигрывают. But then there is this. Oh, sorry. Queen c6 only move. Единственный ход ферзь c6. Queen g7, rook e7, and c4. 
But I wasn't sure about this. После c4 я не был уверен в позиции перед уладят c7. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I finished somewhere here because. Yes, I, I kind of was looking into this, but then I thought <laughs> I should just simply take the pawn. No, but maybe. Или он досчитал до этого и понял, что лучше просто сесть пешку. Ah, yes, yes, this, yes, maybe this is a good idea. Anyway, not a very. Not a very safe way to play for a win. Не самый надежный способ играть на победу. So this was correct. G4 pin C4 was also correct. Actually, it's the only move even computer shows it. Yes. Единственный ход, который показывает компьютер. Yeah, and and this doesn't work unfortunately. This looked at one moment for me that White has some chances here, but then. Какой-то момент казалось, что здесь у белых есть шанс. I think it's extremely. Extremely important that I have queen e5 check after queen e8. No, очень важно, что после хода ферзь e8 у черных есть ферзь e5 шах. So that's why white loses this one. Поэтому белые проигрывают. Есть ли вопросы? Вот Сергей сказал, что он сегодня выходил на борьбу, просто хотел игровую позицию получить. А у вас какие были планы перед партией? Алевон Сергей said that he had planned to play uh, for, a, for a big fight. He wanted to get a playable position, but what were your plans? Планы всегда обычные, если получится получить игровую позицию, то, конечно, хочется поиграть, интересно. Если не получится, надо успеть на футбол. То есть <laughs> лучше обычно заканчивать до, до, до 8 часов. Mm -hmm. My plans were as usual. If I manage to get a playable position, so I play. But if I don't, uh, it's better to, uh, finish. to, be, to, finish, to finish before, before football, just to watch fo football. No, so no, to play. To play. To play. Uh, to play football, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but it's better to finish before 8 o'clock. Вы сейчас в разных частях турнирной таблицы находитесь. Вот интересно, когда вы вот сейчас уже вы готовитесь к партии, вы думаете о своем турнирном положении? Это влияет как-то на вашу стратегию, на партию, на вашу игру? Tournament standing. So, does your position and it influence your game before your play? Yeah, maybe a little bit because because I started to think before this game that okay, I mean I should try to go to the big fight. Yes, as I said, and and maybe if I would have plus one, then I would play maybe maybe some other lines. I mean it could have been another story. I don't know. Да, это, конечно, немного влияет, потому что, как я сказал, перед этой партией я пытался выйти на большую игру. Возможно, будь у меня плюс один, я выбрал бы иную стратегию, играл бы иначе. What is there to learn from my opponent? And it's 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 always very interesting playing against the best in the world. And I really enjoy it. Я обычно стараюсь играть не думая о результате. Я скорее концентрируюсь на качестве моей игры, на том, чему я могу научиться от моих соперников. Всегда очень интересно играть против сильнейших шахматистов мира. У меня вопрос к Леву, но можно сделать предположение, поскольку завтра вы играете с Ананда, белыми, насколько, ну, на, понятно, что каждая партия здесь важна, но партия с прямым конкурентом, белым цветом, не считаете ли вы, что она в некотором образом может быть решающей для этого турнира? И есть ли у вас какие-то соображения о том, как лучше к ней подготовиться? And uh, taking into consideration your tomorrow's game against the, the Vishwanathan Anand, who is leading uh, like you, um, um, are you going to have some special preparation and thought about this game? Honestly speaking, uh, I mean, it's just the middle of the tournament, and I consider all other players, seven players, to be my 
main competitors. I don't really like uh, counting, you know, uh, points before the last round, so to say. Честно говоря, это всего лишь середина турнира, и все участники это мои оппоненты, поэтому не считаю, что нужно считать очки перед партией. Это нужно делать в конце турнира уже. Как вы можете сравнить свои ощущения после этих семи туров? С теми, что были в Лондоне на прошлом турнире претендентов? Uh, I think in both tournaments I was playing well up to some point. <laughs> Мне кажется, что в обоих турнирах до некоторой степени я играл хорошо. No, not, uh, but uh, I have a hope uh, that here I'll play even better. Здесь у меня есть надежда, есть надежда, что здесь я буду играть лучше. We've just seen uh, Mamejaro for Zan against Vladimir Kravnik in what was one of the most dramatic games of this tournament. So, well, today was uh, as fighting as we could have only dreamed of. What do you think, Peter? Very much so. I mean, no, I think we saw some fascinating games and then we also saw a sort of huge reversation of a, a position in the final game and that meant suddenly Kravnik is very much back into it. So it looked like it would be Aronian and uh, Anand, and then quite surprisingly Mamed Yarov, who will be in the lead. But now the former world champion Kramnik is back to plus one, and uh, he's only half a point behind Aronian and um, Anand. So I think, well, Aronian and Anand is playing tomorrow, and that's going to be an extremely important match for the tournament and something very much to look forward to. So we hope to see you back then. We will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the press conferences. Bye. Levin Oronian started to play chess when he was nine, and already by the age of 12, he was a world junior champion. He achieved numerous victories in junior tournaments, and the most significant was success at the Goa 2002 tournament, when Levon became world under-20 champion. By this time, his family had moved from Armenia to Germany, and to this day, Oronian shares his time between these two countries. The title of chess prince gave the grandmaster confidence in his career and convinced him in the choice of his profession. By the mid-2000s, Aronian had begun harvesting his first big successes in the international arena. The first phase of this part of his... <laughs> Партия, конечно, безумная была. То есть, с одной стороны, мне кажется, очень повезло, что я выиграл. С другой стороны, конечно, у меня просто технически выигранная позиция. Я начал все зевать, конечно, тоже. То есть, я даже не знаю, как, как это все оценить, в общем-то, но... Uh, well, the game was crazy. Of course, uh, I was lucky that I won. But uh, on the other hand, uh, before I had a technically winning position, and I cannot even uh, give any assessment to what happened. Ну, по дебюту, да, мне кажется, b 5 очень неудачный ход шаха. Я уже так играл, на самом деле. Мне кажется, после b5 вот все эти операции конь b1 у черных просто тяжелая позиция. I think that b5 and this operation with knight b1, black just has difficult position strategically. Ну потом там, не знаю, может быть черные могли. Но я как-то усиливал, да, позицию. То есть, ну, мне кажется, технически она в общем-то выигранная по-разному. I was strengthening, strengthening my position, and uh, I think that technically it should be won in different ways. Я просто не знаю, что-то расслабился. Я даже не могу объяснить, как я умудрился 
тут вообще любой ход, не знаю, даже ладья b5, мне кажется, выиграл. Опять очень сильно с угрозой за ладья b6 на короле всем черных пад просто полный. Well, I just got relaxed. I cannot even uh, explain uh, what happened because here uh, rook b5 uh, probably win a5 uh, should, ну, should be есть, winning. Я не знаю, да, даже ладья b5 я думал, не знаю, слон b5, ладья even b5. И, ну, начинаю собирать там все пешки. And here I start to collect ну, all the pawns. Ну, то есть я, я просто боялся немножко продешевить, мне кажется, что ну как угодно совершенно выиграно, и я просто в этом момент решил, что ну, настало время, в общем-то, выигрывать форсированно пойти e4. On this moment I thought that it is time to win uh, in force. Win on force, yes, and uh, played e4. Потому что, в общем-то, ну, можно было даже взять на g7, но она просто стратегически выигранная позиция. Because I could even take on g7, it's just technically winning даже position. Даже примитивно потом ладья b8, там, ну, по-моему, вообще все выиграли. Even something конечно. primitive uh, like rook b8 after. Ну, тогда уж, правда, это было проще без g4 делать, конечно, чтобы совсем не было никакой контр-игры. Но, в общем... But, of course, uh, this uh, could be also done without g4, then there would be no counterplay at all. В общем, нет слов, конечно, тут so, of позиции. course, no words. Here. Потому что я просто посчитал, что e4 сразу выигрывает, в общем-то, там, и поэтому решил пойти. I just calculated that e4 just wins uh, on spot, so ну, that's why I decided to go for it. Ну, конечно, я не знаю, что тут уже надо, наверное, ферзь e3 просто пойти. And тоже, after knight e6, uh, probably I should have played queen e3. Думаю, что выиграно у белых здесь. And maybe it's also winning. Ну, слон f4, например, просто. Шахриар suggests knight c7, but then bishop f4. Мне кажется, что это вообще не ясно, то есть. Шахрера говорит, что эта позиция не совсем ясна. Я думал, просто даже взял d5, d5 даже просто. Well, I thought that I just take and then d5, and everything comes, says Vladimir. Here something like queen d7. Какая-то игра есть. Но, но вот, не, ну конечно я. I think it's absolutely unclear position, says Шахрера. Ну так, просто не знаю. Ну белых лучше, но вопрос как бы что, конечно, очевидно, что было намного более лучше. Well, why it is better, says Vladimir. Of course, before it was much better than now. Well, it was much more winning. 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 И здесь я не знаю, надо считать, я, я растерялся, конечно, я, тут столько возможностей тоже у белых, но все уже нет какой-то ясности, я то есть, не мог понять, как играть. Here, of course, calculation needed. There are so many possibilities for white, and I couldn't understand how to play. Ну, h5 не хотелось играть, хотя, в принципе, можно, конечно, пойти h5, но не хотелось. H5 I didn't want to play, even though actually it's possible to do so. Не хотелось. Ну, здесь я не знаю, что тут компьютер показывает, но... Я тут как-то начал теряться. Я не знаю, тут надо было это, конечно, считать. Я не мог досчитать. То есть Here шаг... I started to lose the path. Взял uh, так, если он же сел. Я не знаю, какой-то... Мне поначалу казалось, что этот хорошо, но потом какой-то конь едва шаг я увидел. At first I thought that it's good, but then I saw knight to check. И как-то я думал, ладья d7 как-то. Here I thought maybe rook d7, something like this. Да, и c3 я зря издалека зянул. Шахриар says that c3 here. Ну правда здесь может быть сейчас я думаю d5. Владимир says he blundered this move from the. А нет, тогда взял. From far ahead. А, может. C2 слом b2, да. After c2 bishop b2. Может быть. Но тут надо было считать, но я как бы не не смог. Я вообще не понял, я на выигрыш, может быть, слон e5 просто надо пойти. Потому что на c3 шаг не в 4, а не в 4, там же мата нет, да, там же мата нет, да. Не, ну в общем, я не мог понять уже на выигрыш, на что мне играть c7. Я не мог понять, на что мне играть c7. Я сделал такой какой-то нервный ход. Честно, я думал, я бы d4 здесь. Честно говоря. Here I frankly thought that rook d4. Я не знаю, что я собирался играть. Тут какой-то король h2 может быть. Очень острая позиция. Идея, что на король h6 я ладья b6 хочу всегда дать шаг. And the idea that rook b6 comes after king g6. Но на король h2 есть ходы типа ладья d3, например. Я что-то не мог дочитать слон b2. But there are moves like queen b6. На король h2 есть ходы типа ладья d3, например. Я что-то не мог дочитать слон b5. Может быть, я могу взять. Может быть, я могу взять. Rook d3, for instance, maybe I can take on g5. I couldn't calculate it till the end. Ну потому что ладья d6, мне кажется, здесь так, так d5, мне кажется, что Честно, мне казалось, что черным тут надо как-то играть. Мне кажется, с послом c8 у белого должно быть опять выиграно. А вот, мне кажется, я какую-то ничью здесь видел. Actually, after bishop c8, white should be win again, but I saw some kind of draw here. Ну, я не уверен, что насчет ничего. Ладья d7, f4, конь e4, какой-то вариант. Конь e4, ладья e4, ладья b7. 
такой Room трюк, seven, как бы, в, этом, в этом вся идея. Но point, я не был уверен, взял-взял, и, uh, скажем, где Е8 sure. можно пойти. Instance, here, okay, uh, там как-то так, так, And так. И, и как-то, может быть, как-нибудь, что я имею d6 и на c3 ладья c7, может быть, я по-прежнему здесь имею шансы на Потому что после слон c8, я не знаю, мне кажется, что должно быть просто выиграно здесь. And after bishop c8, I think should be just winning. Шахриар says that he actually thought that everything is fine. Ладья b8, ладья f6, но здесь, мне кажется, любой ход лучше, лучше пас было сказать, чем пойти ладья f8. And here, I think, any move is better than rook a8. Ну, и какой-то It was easier to skip the move than to play this, what I did. Я вообще здесь уже был уверен, что же... Да? Шахриар says that here he was already certain that everything is fine for black. Ну, только на темпах, то есть... Как минимум уже не хуже. At least it's not worse. Да, мне кажется, почти что любой ход был лучше, чем тот, который... Я не знаю, как оценку yeah, 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 позиции, yeah, yeah, yeah. но, конечно, ход я сделал well, ужасающий. Владимир says that he doesn't know about the assessment of this position, but he just made a horrible ну, move here. Потому что, в принципе, черные особенно ничего не хотят, но мне надо полезный ход сделать, но я не мог понять, какой полезный ход, потому что самый полезный... Я издалека думал так, честно говоря, вы, выигрывает. Uh, from far ahead I thought maybe rookie one is winning. Но тут в последний момент что-то обнаружил какой-то такой трюк. But here at the last трюк. moment I realized that there is such a trick, knight of three. Да, какие-то маты начинаются, я не there знаю, как считать, может, не два, но Maybe я не успел досчитать. Потом ладья d1 думал, to тоже сильно вы просто идеи d6. Но тут по слону d4 у меня под темп попадает ладья. Хотя, good, может быть, все равно просто d6, я не знаю. Still, может, six. это все равно выиграно. Я не Maybe знаю, может, winning. просто пешки не проходят. Ну, конечно, но в любом... Мне кажется, что у белых должно быть выиграно. Честно говоря, у меня ощущение такое. Я не знаю, что вот компьютер... Я не знаю, что компьютер говорит, но у меня ощущение, что должно быть выиграно для белых. Да, ничья, да? Может быть, да, да, да. Но я, может, переоценил, да, но я, я тоже видел какой-то ладья, я даже ладья h1 думал какой-то ход сделать, тут ладью. Well, maybe I overestimated it, says Vladimir. Я уже думал, что никак не мог поиграть, я не знаю. Да? Я бы оценил, конечно, что тут черно все хорошо, как вот. Не, ну, смотрите, тут пешки, я просто считал, что... Не, ну тут фасерно, я, я что зевнул, что, конечно... После ладья f4, но тут что-то платы начинаются. Ну, как бы d6 же, например, можно пойти, но тут же как-то, да, тут то, что тут все эти маты, конь h3 там, да. Там конь e2, но это очень маты. Конь f3 тоже, конь e2, я не мог засчитать. Он уже d2 шаг будет. Да, там как минимум шахи, но... Не, ну я на самом деле-то, я, честно говоря, зевнул что, что я просто... Я думал, что я так просто играю, и так. I thought I would play like this, simply. И я как-то в расчетах брал на g4, но там, видимо, проигрывается. My calculations I was taking on g4, but probably this should be losing. Я просто в расчетах взял, король e6, ладья b8, король d7, ладья c8 и конь d5, да? То есть я так посчитал и решил, что выигрываю. Я совершенно выпустил из виду, что король e6 и ладья f8. And I completely missed that the rook comes back to f8. Otherwise, should be winning, in my opinion. And king e6, I just blundered. Maybe some knight d5 or something. Maybe some knight d5, but I'm not sure about it. Maybe I don't lose here. Ну как ладья d1, конь b1, я просто хочу пешки где-то собирать. Ладья e1 шах может грозить где-то. Maybe rook e1 is a threat. Ну понятно, что это уже. Король b7 просто. Король b7. Шахаяр says that just king d7 here, and then rook f8. Ну да, но у меня все-таки много пешек здесь, я не знаю. Well, I still still have a lot of pawns here, says Vladimir. Я не проиграю, я взял ладья c1, но я не проиграю. And I won't lose. Ну, то есть я, ну, просто я не мог досчитать, я не мог понять на выигрыш, не играть в ничью, я все еще, и после F3, ладья F3, я, конечно же, еще что зевнул, опять, что слон бьет G4, да, я, честно говоря, только ладья бьет C3 считал, и после ладья C8, ну, я, по крайней мере, проигрываю точно, не знаю, есть ли у черных вечный шаг здесь, может быть, есть, но, по крайней мере, да, но слон G4 очень сильный, но бишоп G4 очень сильный, не, ну как, тут, тут на самом деле просто чудом еще, я не знаю, на правом ладья бы 7 уже есть, вот, да? Ну, в смысле, с ножей 4 я имею в виду, что я уже да, точно да. Не, не, не 
могу поиграть. Я I mean that Почему? after Bishop ну, 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 four, I never lose. Или, или черно проиграть, или белый. Одно из двух, по-моему. Владимир says, okay, there are two options. Either win, either win, or white win. Нет, к сожалению, проблема в том, что одного шаха не найдено. Например, на короче, не найди шаха, там одного, то все, черные сдались. Но, к сожалению, все шахи находятся так. И на короля h4, король g6. Вот такой вариант. Ну, это же... Такой же примирительный партия был. Не, не, ну я понял. Да, 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 я понял. Но в смысле, что позиция острейшая. Все-таки, может быть, белые... Ну, очень трудно было в цветноте оценить. Белые могли не найти там того же король g6. Это было difficult to assess. Ну да, но я говорю, что я в цель, когда шел на эту позицию, я не мог понять. Мне казалось, что фонд g4 страшно опасно. И... Ну и тут тоже, very, после взятия, взятия, например, strong. ну вот конь b5, тут безумный совершенно вариант на конь b5. Ну, b5 в принципе, конь b5 было бы более-менее нормально. Но тут совершенно невероятный, ты видел здесь? Вот совершенно невероятный вариант, красивейший просто, слон h3 шар. Very beautiful and crazy line. Не-не, да. извиняюсь, ладья, сейчас, конь b5, ладья d3, по-моему. Рук d3, не, не, сейчас, I think. Тут, тут мат очень красивый просто мат. Very beautiful mate here. I'm tired already. I remember that I saw a mate here. Some very beautiful one, but. В общем, устал я. But I'm tired. Не важно, но мат, по-моему. Doesn't matter. I think there's a mate here. Ah? Comb five, six, seven. Не, ну а что это? Comb five, six, seven. Simply. Ну да, то есть, ну или конь до четыре даже мог пойти. Но тут какой-то красивейший совершенно был мат. Так, так, где-то ладья f1, что какой-то совершенно безумный. Maybe rook f1 or something. Что-то очень совершенно безумное. Something completely insane. Сейчас. А? Я понял, не, он получает, и он не выходит, он в смысле матуется, матуется как-то как как в углу в этом матуется, как какой-то типа слон как-то переходит, да, или как-то как был переходил, просто мат, мат ставился. А, да, да, вот, вспомнил, да, правильно, вспомнил один, по-моему, да, 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 и что-то такое, да, король h2, и, и по-моему, так, да, и вот я два шах, мат просто. Бишоп f1, and then the rook f2 just made something incredible. Не, 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 не сюда, а туда, туда, на, на, на f5, на f5, вот так, вот вспомнил, да, вот так, совершенно невероятно, абсолютно, вот, вспомнил, и ладья f2 просто матуя. Это абсолютно невероятный бишоп f5, и рук f2 is mating. Я не нашел здесь защиты, по-моему, получается. Я не нашел здесь защиты, по-моему, получается. Поэтому как бы я потом конь d1 я думал о ходе. So then I thought knight d1. А? Король g2. Король g2, по-моему, king g2 is suggested by Shahri Armamidyarov. Владимир says that there is still mate. Может быть просто ладья отходит там мат. Maybe just a rook from somewhere. Да, да. Может, может быть, и я что-то путаю, да. Ну, Maybe I'm confusing Не, something. ну еще конь d1 был ход интересный. Тут тоже какие-то красоты. Что мне казалось, конь на f2 подходит. Мне кажется, что вообще это не должны проиграть дело по логике. С этой пешкой. Но тут совершенно какая-то на, находится вот такая вот. Вот такая невероятная like this, uh, И здесь, к сожалению, по-моему, проигрывают. Потому что thing. на, на ладья d8, ладья d1, на d7, ладья d7 находится. В этом вся разница, что на c8 ферзь, ладья d2 шах. И у меня не, не висит конь. У меня приколенная 4 конь висит на g5. А здесь он не висит. Поэтому, ну, я тут поэтому как-то напрягся и посчитал э, ход ладья d8, но, как ни странно, я не видел выигрыша. Хотя мне кажется, что... Uh, вот я, я здесь for, уже for видел этот ферб 7 ресурс, но, может быть, был, я не знаю, был выигрыш. Uh, был, да, наверное? Ну да, не It's только, что должен быть. Да, то есть так, так, win, так, win так, я же правильно играл. Не, ну мы же слон f5 пойти, но то же самое. Я же король g6, я же мог выиграть. Ладья f8, просто не король f8. Да король g6 выиграет сразу же партию. King g6 just wins the game, says Shafriar. Ну я не был уверен, что выиграет. Instead of taking on a fate. Мне кажется, за... Владимир says he was not sure if this wins for black. А, я думал, типа ладья f4, а тут слон d7. I thought something like rook f4, but here is just bishop d7. А ладья g8? Шхияр says that I thought it was winning either way. А, ну правильно, ладья b5. Ладья h2. А, и ладья h3, да, да, да. And then rook h3. Нет, он как? Не, ну, слон d7. Ну, just bishop d7 suggested by Medyarov. 
и, и гоняюсь, может быть. Вот. А, так. Ну там солнце 8 же, на Франции, солнце 8, лазить 8, лазить 5, лазить 7, 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 And uh, Shahayar says that Rook H5, Rook C5 wins here. Yes, this is winning. Well, I thought that somehow the king should be made. No, but I didn't see the exact way. I also thought Bishop F5 is strong, but then again the same. And then Queen B7. No, yeah. I thought that Kali F8, Kali F7, but here. And here maybe King F7 gives a draw actually. And here is very important that there is this King F7 move and at least I didn't see how the material is lost. То есть, поэтому, видимо, король всем ничья. Здесь я был, я считал, что ну как-то вроде спасаюсь, но тут, когда уже поближе начал прикидывать, когда мы эти ходы начали, вдруг неожиданно понял, что ты даже выиграл. Here I calculated that I somehow hold the position and survive, but when I looked more closer, I realized that I could be even winning. Ну, в общем, такая вот странная партия. So such a strange game. Yeah, okay. Do we have questions to players? Есть ли вопросы? Был вопрос, но я понял, что вы уже ответили. И у меня был вопрос, вот в какой момент вы играли на ничью, в какой на выигрыш. Но я так понял, что до конца точно точно оценку... Не, ну после контроля понятно, что я уже искал ничью, но до контроля очень трудно было разобраться, потому что, опять же, все же от одного хода зависит. Я не мог понять, то есть, конечно, мне ситуация уже перестала нравиться после F3, конечно. Ну, в смысле, я ладья 8 ужасный ход сделал. Я считал, что до ладья 8, что я не, абсолютно не рискую. Ну, то есть, что у меня точно не хуже, возможно, лучше, я так считал. А вот после ладья 8 я растерялся просто. Там очень сложно посчитать, надо варианты, и времени мало. И, в общем, там, конечно, уже ничего хорошего, в принципе. После контроля я искал ничью, но я говорю, что это, конечно, вот то, что я сыграл. Может проиграть, но я не нашел ничего. Я не знаю, что компьютер пишет после контроля. Well, the question was uh, when Vladimir actually uh, was was playing for a win, when for a draw, and uh, Vladimir answered that uh, actually before the time control, of course, uh, he was uh, he was considering himself uh, to have a better position, uh, but it was very complex and. Uh, difficult to assess. Uh, rook 8 was just a very bad move uh, and of course uh, after that and after the time control uh, Vladimir uh, said that he was only uh, fighting for a draw. Да, после контроля компьютер пишет, что первым же ходом ладья d8 можно сделать ничего, а потом уже... Ладья d8, потом мне что-то казалось, что там как-то ладья e3. Там сложный вариант. Очень сложно, да, да, да. Компьютер suggests that the first move after the control rook d8 can probably hold for a draw. It's a very complex line. У меня вопрос, может, к обоим участникам. У вас есть вообще объяснение, вот почему после выходного ну, вот получилась такая партия, в которой ну, столько было ошибок, и ну, долго никто не мог понять, что происходит? Question to both players. Uh, do you have an explanation why after the free day uh, you played such a game full of uh, mistakes and where nobody could actually assess uh, what was going on? Нет, ну я не думаю, что какое-то имеет значение. Был выходной, не был выходной. Ну просто партия. Ну так, бывают ровные какие-то партии. А бывает вот такая, как это. Ну, с другой стороны, как бы когда началась вот это все, когда я зевнул G5, ну скажем, если то дальше позиция действительно очень сложная, и времени не так много, и так резко поменялось все, вдруг совершенно уже у меня какой-то риск появился вдруг, хотя, ну, как бы довольно сложно было психологически после этого играть, потому что, с одной стороны, я понимал, что вроде бы уже все не так ясно, с другой стороны, как-то хотел все равно выиграть, потому что, ну, я как-то уже себе очко записал, может быть, конечно, ну, не может быть, а точно зря, я расслабился слишком рано, и... 
Просто очень тяжело было психологически, честно говоря, после этого. Я думаю, что выходной тут ни при чем совершенно. Well, I don't think uh, that uh, the free day makes any difference. Just it was such a game. And actually, when I plundered uh, G5, after that it was very difficult to play psychologically because uh, before I uh, was winning and then uh, there was already a risk for me. Uh, maybe I put a point uh, in a table in my head, you know, too early in this game. Uh, And uh, of course, after G, after I blundered G5, uh, well, I still uh, wanted to win, but um, the position was already completely. Di the situation was already completely different, so it was difficult psychologically. And uh, I don't think that the free day somehow uh, has anything to do with it. Можно тогда Шахриар другой вопрос задам. Наверное, это не имеет отношения как бы, к результату партии, тому, что было в конце. Почему вы так долго думали после H4, после конь B1? Были какие-то конкретные проблемы, которые решали, либо просто вспоминали анализ? Шахриар, why did you think for so long after H4 and uh, Knight B1 uh, were you just remembering your preparation or there were some certain problems that you solved during this uh, thought? Yeah. <coughs> H4 я забыл, конечно. Ну и подумал, думал, что играет после, после комби один. Я понимал, что у него плохая позиция. Ну, хотел найти план. Вроде бы, и, вроде бы, конечно, там после то, что я играл плохая позиция, но я думаю, что потом играл как-то нормально, как, ну, до, до контролов. Вроде бы потом вообще играл очень хорошо, не знаю. Но если, конечно, не. Well, after H4, I just uh, forgot and I tried to uh, recollect. Uh, and after Knight B1, I actually had a uh, bad position and I thought about uh, my plan. Uh, well, then I think I managed to play uh, good, and especially after time control. And of course, if not King G6, this move, then the game would go differently. Можно ли сказать, что до хода короля f8, f8 ты уже думал, что, в принципе, позиция выиграна у тебя или в твою пользу? Мне когда, если честно, соперник играл в один d8, я понял, что если я захочу ничего сделать, я сразу, ну, думал, не знал, есть выигрыш или нет выигрыш. Подумал, что, окей, ну, это как будто надо решать и туда. И тебе дает задача, если можешь найти выигрыш, выигрыш. Типа, Подумал, что, наверное, есть выигрыш. Я думаю, что я очень хорошо нашел выигрыш. И когда все находишь, как вроде бы все играл, играл хорошо, играл хорошо. И в конце просто же думал, что, наверное, в смысле последний ход белый играет, чтобы сдаться. Я тоже, я ее просто так сразу взял. Как это сразу взял, понял, что надо было взять, взять. Это, это ужас просто, что такой звук, это не знаю. Well, the question was, uh, have you uh, thought that your position was won at a certain moment? After, uh, before King F8. Uh, before King F8. So uh, the answer of Shahriar was that after Rook D8, uh, he was actually thinking that the position is uh, winning. And uh, it was like a study. So you're given a position and you have to calculate. So I thought that I'm either winning or, or not. Uh, and I played all the good moves, uh, but this... Uh, King G8, uh, well, uh, King G6 I didn't play. When I took on F8, actually, I thought that uh, my opponent just makes the last moves before resigning. And so I played this very quickly, and uh, this was a big mistake. Okay. Other question? Okay. Thank you very much for your comments. Спасибо большое.